Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and it's cocktail time yet again. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful Saturday evening, about 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I felt like making some cocktails, specifically because there was talk somewhere in a uh, Discord server of ours. We've got a little cocktail channel over there, and somebody had popped in with a little uh, TikTok video. And at the very, very end of the video, there was a little book that popped up and they said, like, this is the, it was a little cocktail from that book. Uh, it was featured in that video and it was a very cool, like, red health potion type thing. And it came from this book. This book called uh, The Geeky Bartender, Real Life Recipes for Fantasy Cocktails, Drinks by Cassandra Reader, AKA The Geeky Chef Herself. And I actually found, while I was down south, this book in a store called Box Lunch, which is kind of like a very, like, it's um, like, like think of Hot Topic. If you're familiar with the store Hot Topic, it's like Hot Topic, but for weebs, geeks, nerds, and people like myself who happen to fall under at least one, two, three, or all of those categories at a time. And so in that video that I was talking about before, it featured a drink called Red Potion, and there's also Green Potion, and I believe there was a blue potion in there too. And the cool thing about that particular cocktail, which I'm gonna turn to, is the fact that it's got this really cool glistening effect to it. And that's accomplished by using something that I had to order specially online because they don't carry it in my Whole Foods, called Luster Dust. I was doing a little bit of a experimentation with this. And according to at least one website, you put like less than a quarter of a teaspoon into whatever drink you're making and it makes it look all sparkly warkly. Um, yeah, I put an eighth of a teaspoon and there was so much of it that collected at the bottom of this glass that it was just too much. So this stuff is, it's potent. This one is specifically Pearl Dust, Super Pearl, which I guess is the color, by O oh, Sweet Art, made in the USA, www.o oh, sweet heart, sweet art, sweet art, not sweet heart, sweet as in sweet, and then art as in creative expression in the form of, that influences culture. That's, uh, that's what we got there. It's non-toxic. There's four grams of this stuff in there, and it, it's cool. And it's a, it's like it's a powder. It's a tiny little powder, and I can't wait to actually use that. Um, I'm actually gonna save that for a little bit. I want to start off with something a little bit different. Actually, I say start off with something different as if I actually had a plan going into this. I have multiple different pages in my little bit book over here that are all marked off, and I should be able to make all the drinks that are marked here. I went to the store the other day and picked up a couple of missing ingredients. The one ingredient that I couldn't find. And it's the same thing that I've seen a lot of recently in, in cocktail recipes is something called Ancho Reyes chili liqueur. And it's like, think of a, like a jalapeno pepper. Speaking of which, I have jalapeno peppers for this. I just remembered that. But um, not jalapeno peppers. That's not a chili pepper. Chili peppers, really, really spicy. And they made a uh, liqueur based off of it, which I suppose like, I, I don't know. I've never had it before. It seems pretty cool. Technically, I could use as a substitute actual chili oil which we have some for cooking over there. It's very, very spicy. It's a little yellow. It's got a big old pepper inside of it and it's spicy as all hell. If you make, make that and use that as your oil for like potato chips or kale chips or anything that you fry in your oven, it's just gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt a lot. But it's, it hurts in an, an enjoyable way, if I, if I may say so myself. Because I like, I like spicy, spicy things, which is why I eat spicy, spicy things. I'm the kind of guy who when he goes to IHOP and he gets, there's definitely at least one pan, there's one entree, and I think it's the Poblano's, the Poblano omelet, which comes with jalapeno peppers, and my buddy Glenn and I, we would just, just eat those entire peppers all at once. It's great. Ah, Jake says to show him my Jackie Weaver. No idea what that is. What's a Jackie Weaver? I say as I ask Google, so that Google can enlighten me. It's a song by Five Wazy. Uh, uh, how Jackie Weaver became a star. What is that? What is a Jackie Weaver? I'm unsure. I don't understand your British vernacular. Jackie Weaver. What is? What is a Jackie Weaver? Hey, welcome to the party, Mr. Lewis R. Uh, I hope you're in for some fun. If you drink, that's good. If not, that's okay. There are a couple mocktails that we cover in this one, too. And as we welcome you to the party, it's party hat time. I'm so happy we got that out of the way early, because now I get to look like like a party host the whole time. Weaver. Oh, Anna just got for me my jalapeno peppers. This is a jalapeno pepper. It is green. Um, and it's spicy. How spicy? I don't know. Let's take a bite and find out. I didn't wash them. That's okay. Well, that's fucking... Whoa, spicy. 
Why is it spicy? Anyway, it's a jalapeno pepper. That's not that bad. What is a Jackie Weaver? I don't know that. Nobody's defining it for me. From what I can tell, um, what are you famous for? Mm. Television actress, Jacqueline Weaver. Pretty actress, oh my God. Oh, it's so hot. That was a fun way to start the adventure. Taking a bite into a jalapeno pepper. <clears throat> this is what I like to do. I enjoy this. Jackie is Weaver is a person. That's what I figured. I don't know what they're what they're famous for. Wow, it's a good thing we had water on standby. Anyway, that's how we're gonna start things up. What's up, beautiful? My mouth is on fire. I ate into a jalapeno pepper because why not? Anyway, I think that's the perfect time to uh, jump right in. That was cool. My fiance just cracked a, a, a coke or something over there. Crazy. There's a lot of different types of geeky cocktails in this book, all coming from various different forms of media. We're talking video games, we're talking books, we're talking movies, all sort of things like that. If it's if it's geeky, if it's if it's a little nerdy, it's probably in this book somewhere, um, and it features various different things. Among uh, some randoms that I'm just gonna pick out. Um, let's see, we've got stuff from Doctor Who. Um, from the book, The Wheel of Time, um, The Legend of Zelda, we got Futurama, there's Fallout, there's a book called Dragon Riders of Pern, which at least one person I spoke to knew who that, knew what that series was. I know nothing about it. There's a ton of things in here. And it also gives recipes for, um, oh, we're doing some exercise. We're doing side leg lists as I explain this. You can't really see the side leg lists from here, unfortunately. But uh, here's here's a leg, and here's it goes up to the side. I have a couch next to me, so uh, this is just how we're, how it's gonna be. All right, so I'm doing that in the background. Um, let's see. They also have recipes for like herbal syrups in here. Um, how to do up fruits. How to do special cocktail effects. Um, included in these are smoke examples. Smoke is in like you put dry ice into your cocktail. It makes it very very cold, very very cloudy, and very very cool looking. Cool both in the physical sense and in the uh, the aesthetic sense. I don't have any dry ice. They don't sell any that at any of the stores near me, unfortunately. Um, although I did at least on one occasion find dry ice at the store because I was I took some cocktail classes uh, while I was still in college. I think my sophomore or pre junior year, pre junior being the third year because we had a five year program. And one time I was asked as a favor to go to the store and pick up dry ice uh, with a buddy of mine, and we did that. And um, apparently there was at least one store that uh, that did that. Ooh, try to. I cannot select that. There we go. Completed. There we go. I did that. Did you do both sides? I did both sides. You're right. I did. I did both sides. Anna's always checking on me for that stuff. It's a it's a good thing. I want to get right into it. So I'm going to turn to one of these cocktails in this book. I don't know which one I'm going to do. I'm going to take one of the pink tabs. The color on the tab has absolutely nothing to do with what the drink is. I have turned to... Yo, welcome to the party, Purified Productions, as well. And for that, we put another party hat before we jump into another drink here. We've got uh, a drink called Koozie. Uh, Koozie being, um, ooh, what am I doing? It's gonna go on my head. Koozie, uh, inspired by uh, something called Demon Cycle, which may be a book, perhaps? I don't know what section we're in. This is a book. This is a literary masterpiece. The literary libations from the book, The Demon Cycle. I have no idea what The Demon Cycle is. So, you know, huh, consumption. I'm gonna consume water. Because my mouth is still on fire. Do you have Great. cups over huh. there? Do I have cups? Yeah, I have plenty of uh, glass cups over here. Okay. You know what, let's start this off with, you know, uh, you know, you know. No, I thought I had a thing there. I thought I had a thing there. I can consume some more, but first I'm gonna pour it in my, I'm gonna pour it in my special glass over here. This will be my water cup until I figure myself out. Mmm, fun. Water, water, water. It's cool, because I can pour it up from above, and it uh, looks fancy. Ah, consumption! It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Consumption, indeed. But so this is from a book called Demon Cycle. Uh, I'm just going to show you the page, because everything's on full screen, so it's going to look absolutely wonderful. This is Koozie. I have no idea what that uh, skull in the bottom corner is supposed to be, but we're going to figure it out. Consumption! Consumption always happens! It's a cocktail show! But there's no cocktails right now. So if you use all your consumptions now, there'll be no fun later. Huh, drink! I will. I always do. So actually, I'm curious about what the demon cycle is. One of the reasons I like to go through my cocktail books is we get to learn some new things. I like to learn new things. I have no idea what demon cycle is. Let's figure it out. Demon cycle. Fix myself. You know, I was meaning to fix something. And this is what I'm going to fix this time. 
in preparations for everything that comes later. I'm actually going to fix my angle over here to put drinks on display. It's beautiful. I actually have a little display over here for my drinks now. So uh, I can put things and make things look pretty, pretty, pretty. Uh, that's probably okay. Let's uh, do that. Yeah. I'd say we've fixed ourselves quite well. We've fixed ourselves incredibly well. Anyway, back into it. Oh, what did I... My computer's going a little crazy. Uh, the control S button on this computer is not happy right now. <laughs> Excuse me. So Demon Cycle is a literary series uh, described by uh, the, the Google page as being The Demon Cycle is a series of books written by author Peter V. Brett. Also, as of May 3rd, 2016, it is a four-book Kindle bundle. The first four books, the series according to the... That doesn't tell me anything about the book. Come on, Google. I want to know exactly what it is. I need to know. Recommendation, turn the music down by like 10%. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Thanks for giving me the, the information there. I can't really tell. So that's what we try to do. Headphones out. Let's see. Let's turn it down a little bit more. There we go. That should be all right. Thank you so much for the uh, recommendation there. And we also had some more consumption requests. So <laughs> that's one. Hasn't even gotten here. And that's two. I like it when things get a little crazy early on. It's wonderful. Uh, Demon Cycle is a trilogy or uh, five books. There's five books in there. Where the hell is the summary? I want to know what the book's about. Come on, Google. I want to know what the book is about. That's what I want to know. The painted man. Yeah, this is this is not giving me anything. About. Give me the about. I need to know. Perfect adjustment. Yes. First try. We love to see that happen. That's great. Anyway, so this is a good old good old thing. Demon cycle. Google, please. Anything? Well, now I feel like I'm put on the spot. I need to explain something I know nothing about. Let's get an uh, idea what The Painted Man, a part of the Demon Cycle series, is about. Uh, looks like... Uh, come on, dude. Wikipedia... Summary! Gotcha! The novel follows three point-of-view characters and their passage from childhood to maturity. I think that's really all we need to know about there. It's a coming-of-age story. A coming-of-age story coupled by alcohol, so I guess they make it to year 21, or 18, or whatever the age of majority is in your country of choice. Uh, I don't really know. Also, I think I can hear my Discord notifications, so let me turn that off for a hot second. I don't mean to do that. Where's my... Where's Discord on this page? Oh, there you are. Hello! I'm gonna turn that off, because it's a little loud, and I didn't realize I wasn't in streamer mode, so I'm gonna fix that. Here we go! No, don't worry, don't apologize. Don't ever apologize for things like that. We love to have people, uh, chatting around. I just see the notifications coming up on my screen over there, and I'm just like, Oh, look, people are talking over there! Like, oh my god, they can hear that. I feel so bad that I didn't turn that off. It's okay. I was in a bit of a time scramble today. I actually literally just got myself together about a couple minutes ago, so I'm glad. Um, so Kuzi, spelled C-O-U-Z-I. Demon Cycle, oh, I could have just read the book here. It tells me a summary of it in this cocktail book. Wow, Cassandra, you really outdid yourself. This is wonderful. Demon Cycle, a fantasy horror series by Peter V. Breck takes place in a world where demons come every night to terrorize and kill humans. In this world, koozie is an extremely potent drink made with fermented grains and cinnamon. Because of its potency, it is served in small cups, and its strong cinnamon smell burns the nostril. Koozie and other grain alcohols are forbidden by the Evija, a religious text in the world of the Demon Cycle. I don't know what's the scarier, the Evija or the Demon Attacks, but seriously, how else are you supposed to cope with Demon Attacks? Like, you gotta drink, right? Ah, oh, it's wonderful. Ah, oh, we'll fix ourselves again. That lonely fire boy says to fix myself. How should I fix myself this time? Do, should I... Do my party hats look like horns yet? Do I want to look like a demon? I mean, wait, demon cycle. That's perfect. No, I'm going to keep the horns like that. Um, let's see. Let me take this off the table. We don't need that. Consumption. Just kidding. We do need that. We'll take these jalapenos out of the way. Ah, oh, this is lovely. To make koozie... Uh, I don't know why. It's supposed to be served in a very, very tiny glass, but this is clearly calling for a lot larger than a single glass's worth of stuff. How's my mouth right now? It's just fine, thank you very much. It's not that on fire anymore, which is great. I thank you for asking me on that. We're gonna add three fluid ounces of strong white rye whiskey, because the weak stuff should have stayed home, so because they can't fight demons, they're not strong. Demon Slayer. Cinnamon liqueur, three or four teaspoons of cinnamon syrup. I have that in the fridge, I'm gonna have to go get that. Five to six dashes of ground cinnamon or Pichot's bitters. I could use either. I got bitters, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, two to three squeezes of fresh lemon juice. Oh, you know what I need? There is, uh, you know what, it's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go grab that because no, I don't think you know. Okie dokie, I'm gonna stay over here. My fiance wants to help me out. Okay, so I need my lemon squeezer. I also need some glass. 
Uh, glass. I meant ice. Uh, let me do ice in my. Is this stirred or shaken? Let's see about that. All oh, to a mixing glass. I need a mixing glass. So let me grab my mixing glass from back here. Got a couple of those. I want. Um, it says specifically three ice cubes. So I'm gonna get three ice cubes in my mixing glass. I've got my squeeze in the jigger over here. That's pretty wonderful. Um, my bitters I have. Let's see. I've got my bitters over here. Uh, I can get my lemon juice. Uh, cinnamon liqueur I have on the cinnamon syrup in the back of the fridge. Top shelf, it should have cinnamon sticks in it. It's lovely. What did I do to make my mouth on fire? Uh, <laughs> this. This is a jalapeno Don't pepper. Eat it. Are you kidding me? Top shelf, what are you Okay, doing? she said not to, so I'm not gonna do it yet. There is a cocktail in here that calls for a jalapeno garnish. Um, this is not that drink, so wait, uh, we're gonna have to wait for a little bit. Shelf. Top shelf in the back, top shelf in the actual fridge itself. Oh, wait, this side. Do it! Do it, they say! Hold oh, your crazy. horses! I've done it once already. We're gonna make the drink first, then we're gonna get a little drunk, and then we're gonna uh, have it. That's how we do wait, things I'm around lost. here. You said top. top shelf in the back of the fridge. There is a bunch of shelves in the fridge, are there not? <laughs> Indeed. Oh, it's behind the, it's next to the pickles. pickles. It should be next to the pickles. We have pickles? We have pickles! Of course we have pickles! Of course we have pickles! I like to eat pickles! There's something wrong. In the back, next to the big raisin container. Raisin container pickles. Raisin container, there's a small thing that they- You oh, got it! That's the cinnamon syrup! Yes! Awesome. Celebration. Thank you. Patootie. Thank you. That's my cinnamon syrup. That's probably not bad, right? Yeah, it looks just fine. Okie dokie. Um, I also need a lemon for this. I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna take my fruit off the table, because I don't really need that right now. Board. I'm gonna need- I have a cutting board. Yes, indeed, I got my cutting board. Let's do that. I'm gonna put my book to the side. Only use the back of that. Only use the back of that. I would never cut into the beautiful big tree. At Disney's Animal Kingdom. It's a twenty-five. Year, it's a twenty-year-old. Um, it's the twentieth anniversary. Well, and there's a knife next to it too. And I'm gonna cut into that. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take three fluid ounces of strong white rye whiskey. Why whiskey? I almost I almost went all ooh on that. Why whiskey? This one is called Old Forester. It is a strong rye whiskey because it says 100 proof on it. So I guess if it had to, had to prove itself 100 times, then it must be a pretty cool guy. You can tell it's rye whiskey because it says rye on the top. Um, and it does all around the bottle anyway, so that's what we're gonna go with. And I need three ounces of that. That's a lot of ounces of whiskey. I'm not making a whole shot of this. This is crazy. This is like a whole drink. My god. Anyway, I'm gonna take some of my Old Forester whiskey. I'm gonna put it inside of my thing. I, uh, recently updated my setup over here. It looks beautiful this time, in my opinion. I think I really outdid myself. But I need three whole fluid ounces. So I'm gonna take two ounces from one side, I'm gonna pour that inside, then we're gonna go to the other side and pour the remaining ounce in there. On the other side of my cocktail straw. I'm the kind of guy who doesn't like to measure things by eye, I like to do it by the book, because you gotta do the cooking by the book. It's the way that's tasty. You gotta, you gotta, something about the pretty cake. You know you can't be lazy. You know you can't be lazy when you're trying to do the cooking by the book. Now we need one fluid ounce of cinnamon liqueur. I actually picked this up the other day. This cinnamon liqueur is called Goldschlager. Real gold flakes inside of my alcohol. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to eat that, but there's actual shakes. Here, let me shake this up a little bit. There's gold in there. There's literally gold in there. You might be able to see that kind of shaking around a little bit. I don't know why they put gold in there. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what the hell are you watching? We're making cocktails. With, with a dude who likes to wear party hats. It's a, it's a thing around here. I need one fluid ounce of, of that in my glass. Uh, geeky cocktail specifically. I mean, that's what the title says, right? I mean, that's what I, that's what I did. One fluid ounce of that. It smells like love. It smells like yearning. It smells like the days back in middle school when I didn't quite know what love meant. I didn't quite know what it meant to hold hands. Holding hands felt like such a sexual thing at the time. It was crazy. It smells like cinnamon. <laughs> I was a young boy at the time! Is that why it took two weeks? How would I know? I was a young boy. Why the fuck am I so hyper? Why the fuck aren't you so hyper? Get with the program, Live Duck. Come on. Don't be rude to your guests. Anyway, anyway, so I got on the, a full fluid ounce of that. I need 34 teaspoons of cinnamon syrup. Oh, I don't have a teaspoon. Anna, can I have a teaspoon? teaspoon Thank you. It? Thank you so much. You uh, that's not a teaspoon. That's my coffee scoop. It's great. Smells like the gold rush. Does, does, doesn't smell like the gold rush. Does the gold rush smell like cinnamon? Was there cinnamon back then? I thought cinnamon was invented by 1955 by Mr. Cinnamon himself. Oh, I washed it. Or perhaps it was his, was his wife at the time. Did he have a wife? Did Mr. Cinnamon, was he into women? Was he into men? We're not really sure. I need yeah, three to four teaspoons of this. I'm gonna maybe he was into scoop dogs. it out. Maybe. 
Ugh, oh, Jake shit himself. Well, you know, I guess you better clean it up now. That's one teaspoon of cinnamon syrup, which, as I described before, smells like love. Or love at a time where I really didn't know what love was. I wanna know what love is. I'm gonna go, cinnamon's cool, so I'm gonna do four whole teaspoons in there. Why not? Woot, woot, woot. There's 10 people watching right now? I can't tell, honestly. I have that stuff like, I can't even see what's going on. It says hyphen viewers, hyphen views, hyphen followers. Live Duck just followed us. That must be one more follower than it was before. Hyphen subscribers and hyphen, 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 hyphen. You turned off subscribers too. I don't want to see any of that stuff. It's just distracting. So thank you, Live Duck, for coming along and joining the party. I'm going to put a thing off my head. I'm going to put a party head on my head. Pog sub, nice! Get drunk, says Cole. Oh, we're getting there, my friend. Oh, we're getting there. It'll be a repeat of last night. Reminds you of Alice in the... Ooh, Alice in Potion thing. What's going on here? Live Duck subscribe. I didn't say that I subscribed. Did it really? Oh my god. Do you have the golden box? No, it doesn't say subscribe. I didn't see a subscribe on there. Shh. I see that you just used your channel points to get that emote down there. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Reminds... Jake of Alice in Wonderland scene when the White Queen makes the potion for Alice. We're gonna get to a really cool looking potion. It's awesome, awesome. He did sub? Did he really? I can't tell. Well, you know what? It's not like it matters much anyway, so why not? Let's put on a fancy party hat for the sub. Let's do it. Yeah! It's a big old party hat. Thank you for that. He's got the badge! He's got the badge! He's got the badge! So, you know what? I'm down with it. I like that. My notif- I don't trust notifications anyway, so like, even if it didn't pop up, it's great. The badge! The badge! Scream about the badge! You know, this is, this is getting a little unwieldy up here, so we'll put it up there. Hell yeah! Consumption time! Let's consume my water! He also got bits. And we've got some cheers going on. You know what happens when you cheer bits? This shit. <laughs> okay, so next we're gonna need five to six dashes of Kishaud Ritters. In my opinion, Pichaud's bitter smells like a wet dog, but that's what the recipe calls for, so we're going for it. I hope I'm not stepping on any toes there, and if I am, well, consumption it is then. Consumption once more. Oh. I need five dashes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five to six dashes. We'll just go with that. It's great. It's wonderful. I need to fill up on my water. So I'm gonna do that. Oh, give me back. Give me that. I don't need to do that. I got that. I'm a god. Oh. Before I finish it, drink it before I finish it. What? Drink what before I finish it? Drink what? Drink water? I gotta drink water. But drink, oh, the drink the cocktail before I finish it. No, we don't do that around here. We don't half ass things like that. Woo! I need two to three teaspoons of fresh lemon juice. They want to teaspoon that out. Do they? Are they really that particular about it? They gotta be so particular about it. I'm gonna cut a lemon, as one does when you need lemon juice. I cut a lemon. Wow, this is a really shaky table. This could end in disaster. That's okay. If disaster happens, it'll get on cam. It'll be on camera, and that's perfect. Uh, so like, I need to measure out teaspoons of this stuff. So like, I don't know. I'm gonna put it on my squeeze. I'm gonna very, very carefully like squeeze into a tea. Spoon. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. I'm trying to squeeze this thing. It's really not helping me out. That's a teaspoon of lemon juice. Oh, almost there. Teaspoon of lemon juice. Okay, cool. That's one. And I need more. My hands are very shaky today. It's because I was drinking last night, too. Don't tell my parents. That's two teaspoons. And let's just put the whole rest of the lemon in there. Yeah, that feels like a teaspoon. Nice. Push handles on the table. It's easier. Oh, you know what? That's a really good idea. But then I can't... Nobody, then nobody can see me squeezing it. I'd rather suffer on camera if it means to entertain. So, let's go with that. I ought to put that into my little box there. On the side! On the side! Oh, that's a really good idea. See, that's why you're the smart one and I'm the guy making a fool of himself on camera. We appreciate things like that. Uh, that's it. We have in the glass... Three fluid ounces. You know what? I'll, I'll recite the recipe after it's finished. I need to shake a shake a shake shake a not shake a. I need to stir it. So I need my stirring glass. I bought this little number at a store the other day. It's beautiful, and I can flip it around my fingers so wonderfully. Did you? Could you guess that I majored in gymnastics? Because <laughs> that's a lie. I majored in engineering. I am smart. You're absolutely right. 
because of that fact alone. My diplomas actually came in the mail today. It's not here. It's at my parents' house. But let's stir this thing up. Stir this. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. What does it smell like? It smells like cinnamon and lemons. I like cinnamon and lemons. Cinnamon and lemons are good. Beautiful. Ugh. It tastes like something, I guess. All right. And now pour it into four shot glasses. Looks like I need four shot glasses. Consumption! Wait till I pour the thing. Jeez, we don't incentivize the, the consumption of alcohol on this show. It's either water or whatever else I want. I'm gonna go grab four shot glasses for my uh, shot glass chest chef. What do, you, what do you guys think? Circles? Circles or squares? Jake asked I'm gonna for do extra half and half. alcohol and some. Extra alcohol and some of them? We can do that? I can do that? I'm allowed to do that? Of course I am, it's my show. Squares! Where is it is then? Square shot glasses. Awesome. That's gonna screw it up. It's not gonna screw anything up. It'll be just fine. That'll increase it. I have four shot glasses that I will now pour my koozie. Koozie? Koozie. Or pronounce perhaps it's pronounced like queasy or quozy. I don't really know, honestly. I didn't read the book. It's not like the book would tell me anyway. The book doesn't speak to me. The inner narrator in my head tells me what the book says. Apparently some people don't have like that that narrator in their head. I, for one, have a little narrator, a little dude in my head, who when I read books to myself, um, I, I hear his voice, and I know it's a he because it sounds like me, and that's how I identify, so it's kind of easy like that. Alright, I need a little bit more space over here. I'm gonna put my old Forrester back in the ground, so I have more space. Space. I don't need this syrup. Let me put that space. Space, 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 space. Put that over there. Do it like this. I, I wonder if I can get them all equal parts, too. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, let's do that. Oh, you know what? Well, it's actually, it's, there's at least four fluid ounces of alcohol in there. So like, that's just how we're going to do it. All the way up to the top. There we go. Almost there. Oh, this could be nice. This could be very satisfying. All right. Well, there's going to be a small one over here. Um, and that's just because the, these square shot glasses actually hold a bit more than like a fluid ounce. So like, you know, let's see. Ah, uh, just clarifying, did I buy sake I, the sake that you suggested? I didn't buy the sake that you suggested, but I got this shit. It's been sitting on my counter. It's good. It says Junmai. Johto means highest quality in Japanese. Since 2005, we have aimed for the highest quality in everything that we do. And your highest quality is as high as we need it. What is that one? It's it's my it's Junmai sake. I'm gonna try to, you know I'm what? I'm pretty sure that's the one we were gifted. Was I gifted that? Did we buy that? Hmm. Yeah. For Anna to taste test. Oh, Anna. Anna. Ah! I request your assistance. Ah! You can get the tiny one. Would you like to would you like to try? Would you would you like to try? I have to avoid all your wires. Yeah, watch out for all the wires. This is my fiance. She is very pretty, in my opinion. Who's Anna? You're new? Oh, cool. Well, glad that you popped in. Let me tell you who Anna is. This is my fiance. She's nice, she's pretty, and she's wearing a romper today because she doesn't play by the rules. Koozie. Uh -huh. Koozie? What is Koozie? this? Uh, Koozie is rye whiskey and cinnamon and lemon. It's all your worst nightmares come true. You don't have to drink the whole thing. You just gotta just try it with me. I'll, I'll drink it. Hey. I'm Smell. not okay with this so far. It smells, it honestly smells like cinnamon and lemon just a little bit. It makes Anna's face pungently coarse. It's not the worst it's whiskey the I've worst, had. Oh, it's not just whiskey. It's a whole lot of other things. Oh my goodness. Do I have to drink the rest of this? Honestly, that's not that bad. Honestly, not too bad at all. Oh, look, she drank the whole shot. Incredible. It's honestly not that bad. If I had to describe it, it's a lot more forward on the cinnamon and the lemon juice that's in there more so than anything else. I have very particular taste. How would you describe it? How would you describe it? I'm gonna hear what your tasting notes are for a change. Okay, okay. What do you, what do you think? We, we, you might need to try another one to really get it. Well, there's a slight burning on my tongue. It's just a little bit? Yeah, like an underneath. Now, I'd like you to bite into the jalapeno and make a comparison, because I would say that this is less of a burn than the jalapeno, I'm but- You're not an idiot. It's, you're not an idiot. Okay, okay. I'm the idiot then. That's fine. Oh my god. No, um... Yeah, I like berry stuff. I like um, I like vodka mixes. <laughs> you like berries? You I like, like berries sake, drinking. sake, but like beyond that, you gotta make it fruity and well, it, you gotta do, make it sugary. How about we do the the potion next? That's cranberry juice. Oh, I like cranberry. You like, we'll, we'll do cranberry juice. Oh, All wait, right. I didn't finish giving notes. Oh yeah, no, please, please go ahead. It try literally again. tastes please, like. Go ahead, try again. If you'd like to, you don't need to. Just because I put it in front of you doesn't mean you need to drink it. I mean, it really just tastes like the whiskey, and then there's like a little bit of pop, a little kinda, bit of pop? probably from the lemon. Cool. No, I get that. Yeah. Again. 
Can you give a cocktail? Give me a cocktail? Absolutely. Yeah, go for it. If it's geeky, it fits within the theme. That's awesome. But if not, I'll at least write it down and we can do it next time too. And then the first time I do th things like this. Oh. My tongue is like salivating in rebellion. I'm Salivation gonna... in rebellion. Thank you so much for coming on camera and subjecting yourself to this type of torture because the people asked you to. You're truly know. one for the people. Oh it's God. lovely. What do I have for bases? Uh, I've pretty much got every base, that, every like, normal conventional base that I can think of. We've got rums, we've got whiskey, we've got bourbon, I've got, got sake. absinthe, I've got sake, I've got tequila, I've got Everclear apparently, vodka, what else is up there? Uh, I've got gin as well. I got two different types of gins over there yes, and various other things course. as well. You know, come to think of it, I just noticed I actually have a a little picture of my collection it's outdated. as of a little bit ago. And I want to see if I can find it on OBS. Excuse me a moment while I pop that on screen. Where's my cocktail pictures? Where's my cocktail pictures? I cannot find my cocktail pictures. It should be on there. I'm not so sure. Why can't I find it? Okay, well, I can't seem to find the picture that I had prepared for this. It was okay that time. Oh shit, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got all that stuff. Connoisseurs always taste multiple times with a water wash in between. Yeah, but like, I don't need a water wash right now, at least. I mean, so I don't plan on drinking all of these things. I, I am not, uh, this is not the show where Cameron decides to get shit-faced upon his own accord. This is the show where I attempt to taste things, refine my own palate, and maybe we can all learn something together while we all try to have a good time. Uh, but I will try it again, because I want a little bit, something different. Ah, see, there's the consumption. I predetermined that that consumption was going to come out. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's very heavy on the cinnamon, which kind of makes sense because this gold this gold schlager here is like really really cinnamony. I honestly don't think I can taste my own cinnamon syrup in there. I really don't think that I can taste the Peugeot's like bitters cinnamon. very much. Um, it didn't taste like cinnamon. You didn't? Uh -uh. Oh, Anna doesn't think it tastes like cinnamon, but everybody's taste is subjective, so. Consumption. <laughs> I gotta stop doing that. I don't like that. Not very much. It's okay. On my honestly, on my scale, I would say it's okay. It's some not something that I would like sip willingly while I'm watching anime, uh, specifically the anime monster. That shit fucks you up. Let me tell you, that is a really messed up show. Ah, looks good, but we need the recipes after. Yeah, of course. I post the recipes all the time after this. Every single time I do a stream. Excuse me, a stream like this, I wind up posting the recipes that I use on Twitter and give credit where credit is due. Uh, I throw it on the YouTube video that comes out after that, the archive, I'll pop it in the description uh, as well. And then on the Discord channel as well, um, in, in case, I would put things on there too, just so that everybody's got a proper reference where it is. But to go over these, this drinks again, um, let's put it on display. Let's put this on display. Now presenting, now presenting, I don't want to scream into the microphone. Hello, everybody. Now presenting Koozie, or Koozie, Koozie, Quasi 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 Lazy 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 Let me take this martini glass out of there. We don't need that. We'll put that over here. It's unnecessary. Koozie from the book, de uh, from the book series Demon Cycle. Koozie is made with three fluid ounces of strong rye, rye whiskey. I used Old Forester. One fluid ounce of cinnamon liqueur. I used Goldschläger. Uh, three to four teaspoons of cinnamon syrup. I made my own like three months ago and it's still sitting there. So, you know what, you know what we're gonna do? Put this on top of each other. There we go. That is, that is awesome. I like that. That is so cool. Uh, including five to six dashes of Pichon's bitters, two to three teaspoons of fresh lemon juice, and it says three ice cubes for some reason. So, three ice cubes for some reason. And that's our koozie. That's our koozie koozie cocktail. Cocktail number one, finished for the night. What type of fruits do I have lying around? I'm working on in terms of juices? Oh, Anna's working on it. Okay, she'll oh, answer the juices? question. Oh, fruits in general. Uh, I know I've got blueberries prepared. I've got blackberries prepared. I've got strawberries prepared. There's passion fruit in there somewhere. Consumption. I want to say there's passion fruit in the fridge. Uh, I've yes, got <clears throat> guava juice. Um, All that stuff. Wrong camera. Yeah, it happens. Uh, anyway, we're back here. I got to... Not. I think that's all. Oh, we also have mangoes. We got mango. Oh, we got mangoes? We got mangoes in there? It's frozen. Oh, we got frozen mangoes in there. We also got cherries. Yes, peach and all that other stuff. It's all fruity. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to keep this lemon over here to be juiced later or maybe used as a garnish. Frozen magos. Frozen magos. Shut up. Indeed. That's weird. Frozen froggo, froggo, froggo. Nice. Let me... Um... I'll put this back here. These are my used things, so I'm gonna put those on the ground to be used later. This is also to be cleaned later, not used again. Why would I? Sloppy seconds is just kind of—it's kind of disgusting. Sounds as bad as it is. 
sounds exactly as bad as it is. I'm gonna throw my the party horn goes over there. I'll use another one. The jigger will stay around. My cutting board will come back if necessary. Uh, yes. Perfect! Purified's gonna create something really quick and send it on over. Wonderful! We like to see creativity around here. My goodness. Excuse me. I don't know why I kept on doing that. Jeez. Maybe that was the jalapeno kicking back. All right. Lovely. Um, uh, let me go... Let me check something real quick. I got a text from my father. I may need to do something real quick. I'm gonna set up a thing. Let me on page dream. That. Be able to email. That could happen this week. Whenever. Okie dokie. Awesome. I got something that I gotta do tomorrow or the day after or the day after that so that was koozie i know nothing about the demon cycle series uh it was, it was okay very cinnamony i like cinnamon types of things it's nice though um another reason that i wound up doing these cocktail streams is because like i just kind of every once in a while just as a hobby just open up one of my many many cocktail books they're all over there i'll pull them out the next time i have to get out from behind the bar um but i, I have this little i got this like recipe app on my phone that allows me to look up by ingredient what kind of cocktail that I can make. And we've got plenty of ingredients over here, but what I've found from like, it's really difficult, in my opinion, to search the internet for what ingredients you have right now and then what drinks you can make with them. It would be really, really convenient if there was something out there where you say, I've got X, Y, Z, and A, and I wanna know what I can make with them. Or I've got, let's say, an entire cocktail collection figure with dotted with different types of liqueurs and aperitifs and digestives and spirits, and I just wanna know what to make with them. And half the time I got no idea. So I found an app and I paid for it and it works. And I wound up putting the notes in there. Now I know another recipe that uses Peshod's bitter bitters specifically, which is wonderful because I had no idea that I could use it and stuff like that. There was at least one cocktail that I made in my cocktail class um, that uses Peshod's Bitter, and I honestly don't remember which one it is. We had a site that was posted in chat, cocktailbuilder.com, which seems cool. I know there is also a, uh, a database called The Cocktail DB, and you can search by, it's got like, it's like a, an API type thing. So you program something and you ask the website, what can I do with this? And you can ask for ingredients, but you have to pay to ask for multiple ingredients. And I'm like, well, that seems silly that you have to pay for stuff like that anna's checking out the link right now she's my eyes behind the scene while uh, the show's going on up here i'm gonna try a uh, different cocktail here we're gonna move on to something a little bit different i'm not exactly sure what kind of different uh to be honest i just kind of have all these things over here um and you know uh, i might have missed a consumption here or there so i'll take a uh, sip of my water um, there's a ton of different types of- if anybody has like a favorite game out there- Oh wait, I said I was gonna do the red potion next. The red potion. That's what we're doing next. But if anybody has like a favorite game or whatnot, game or book or literary production, then we'll try to see if there's something like that in this book. And if I can make it, I will. It might, might not be, uh, it could be fun. could be fun. So this next cocktail that I'm making utilizes something that I have finally gotten for myself called- It's- I've heard it called luster dust. I've heard it called pearl powder. Uh, in some cases, it uses a, a mineral known as mica, and so it would be mica powder. Um, but I, I was talking about it before. It's my luster dust. It's my luster dust. <laughs> luster, but I hardly know her. LOL. Uh, but so the red potion is the drink that we're going to go with next. Anna's like my hacker in a cock show. Yeah, you get him, hacker girl. I'm doing work. Wink. In this particular cocktail book, there's red potion, there is blue potion, and there is green potion. From the page that you can see here, it is pictured all those potions. I'm, I apologize for the glare. Uh, it's, uh, there we, ooh, there we go. No glare there. Perfect. Red potion. Red potion. And so it's going to look really funny. It's going to look very lustery. It's going to look kind of like cloudy on the inside there. It looks cool, at least from my opinion. I at least wanted to get through that one, so I'm going to do that. So, Red Potion is a drink that's inspired by your favorite video game, because could you really just pick one game that a Red Potion or a Blue Potion or a Green Potion is from? There's just literally tons of them. So this is from that game. Whatever your favorite video game is that features a Red Potion, either for healing purposes or for your mana or for your stamina, this is where it's from. Red Potions have been a staple in video games for decades, appearing in popular titles like The Legend of Zelda, World of Warcraft, Terraria, and many, many, many more. Oh, what are we doing? Random shorts and TikTok. Yeah, I got a TikTok too. I'm eventually going to post cocktail stuff on there too, but I haven't done so yet, so I haven't been advertising it yet. Uh, red colored potions, more ubiquitously, ubiquitously called health potions or healing potions, usually restore a character's health or vitality, making them some of the most used and most common potions in many games. This recipe has some health benefits from the cranberry juice and ginger syrup. It seems counterintuitive to add alcohol to a health drink, but hey, sometimes a little liquid, liquid courage doesn't hurt. Does this call for 
Ginger? This doesn't call for ginger. What are you talking about? Oh, maybe one of the other colors call for ginger. Ginger, 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 ginger. No, I don't... there's another book in there that ha another one that has fresh ginger. Yeah, I know another one has fresh ginger in there, and that's why I have uh, ginger. Uh, but it's not this drink. I'm not sure what it says. It says cranberry juice and ginger syrup, but this does not use ginger syrup. Hmm, weird. Not my fault. So let's get with it. Uh, I need all ingredients except soda water. I need chilled soda water, which should be on the bottom shelf over there. I have my Campari. I've got my tequila. Uh, sweet vermouth as well, which is the farthest left on the bottom shelf on the door. Farthest right, sorry. If you're, if you're going to grab that, which would be lovely. That's the one. You got your hand. That's sweet vermouth. And then the chilled soda water should be behind the chicken stock. Not sure why I placed it back there, but that's where it is. I don't have chicken stock. I don't know what you're There's about. vegetable broth. Sorry, not chicken stock. It's uh, it's the tall. Yep, you got it. That's the one. Cranberry juice as well. Oh. Ah, Purified is ready to create something. What would I like? What would I like to be the base? Oh, you know what? I, for one, I really like gin because in my opinion, gin is a wonderfully botanical spirit that just doesn't get the light of day that it deserves, except in some, Anna says it's gross, which is case in point, and the cranberry juice. Thank you so much for that. I would love to have gin as my base. I love gin. I really, really like gin. To me, like, in my, in, in my opinion, I think you can switch out any drink that calls for vodka with gin and it just, it brings some, something completely different to it. Because vodka is supposed to be neutral, but if you want to add something else to it, I think like gin is like, if you want to preserve your color, then that would be a good stand and that will add something a little bit more to it. Um, I need a shaker in this one. So I'm actually going to use my shaker on this one. And just because it's a fancy thing, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't like a plastic shaker. Plastic shaker's dumb. Um, I'm going to need a couple ice cubes in my shaker over here. So I'm going to throw these up here and throw some ingredients in there as well. Oh, let's go with like three to four ice cubes. Let's go three to four ice cubes on that one. Let's get her done. Would Anna like a recommendation? Anna, would you like a recommendation? The answer is yes, we always like recommendations because even if she won't drink it, I will. Sure. It's lovely. And I also like, oh, actually, now that I recall, uh, on the, one of the reasons I actually started doing cocktails was because uh, Anna's not a really a big alcohol drinker. She's not really a fan of that kind of stu type of My stuff. So I took the classes. It does have two ends. But it's okay. That's why you spell Anna. Okay, Anna corrected you, not me. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't, don't worry about it. It's okay. Um, but so I started making the cocktails because I was like, I want to find something that she would like to drink because I I'm not very picky when it comes to my cocktails or my foods, my I drinks like and whatever. Sake -based. Anna likes sake. Anna would really like sake-based cocktails. That was kind of been like the buzzword around here. And I've got at least one person who's hanging in chat right now, the meatball girl, Christina, who recently came about uh, uh, told me about a sake recommendation. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it was sake and lime juice is, I think, a it's a it's a recipe over there. Something like, it's got samurai in the word, I think. Yeah, her pen pal would agree that she, uh, she has gin with her screwdrivers often. Really? Ew. That's so cool. Awesome. I've never tried that with uh, gin in my screwdriver. And then again, I don't know why I'd be submerging my screwdrivers in liquid, let alone alcohol. But haha, -ha, that's the joke. It's a pun. Anyway, let's continue with the red potion. I need in my shaker uh, one and a half fluid ounces of silver tequila. My silver tequila today of choice is going to be, um, what do they call this? Bribon tequila blanco, hecho en Mexico. Uh, it's 100% agave tequila blanco. Uh, and I just picked this up the other day, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna crack this open now. Um, I, for one, enjoy the sound of like, perforated material breaking, so here you go. Yeah. There we go. That's my contribution to the ASMR community today. I want one and a half ounces of that. In my shaker. So I'm gonna turn over to the big side, fill it up to the first line. Do I got triple sec? Oh, I got triple sec. Got a big old, actually got that behind the bar with me right now because I think one of my cocktails requires it. One and a half ounces of... Silver tequila. Tequila. Da, 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 da. And actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ice and put it in the smaller glass. I just, I like, I, in particular, just like it in there the most. I don't know why. Just my personal preference. I got triple like Hell yeah! Oh, it purified's got me. It's me Meatball's gonna see if the sake tasting book has any cocktails that you can work with. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you got anything like that? Just throw it all in there. Uh, in case it gets lost in chat, I sincerely apologize. I am not super observant when it comes to things. I've got chat right there, and I've got chat right there. And, you know, sometimes I miss things. And if I do, if I, legitimately, if I miss a comment of yours, uh, and it's it's important enough, by all means, say it again, and perhaps I'll catch it the next time. So let's go with that. My next ingredient will be one fluid ounce of Campari. Where's my Campari? I know that's under here. Campari! There you are! It's the one that says Campari on the top, you can tell. 
Jake wants to see Cameron make a cocktail as fast as an actual bar person could make one. Yeah, yeah, go. Well, if I knew the recipe by heart, it'd probably be easier. If I had all the ingredients in a accessible location, I had my glass on the ready, I had my shaker on the ready, and I knew exactly what I was doing, I could probably make it pretty fast. Not as fast as a bartender. I don't have that type of experience yet, but it's great. Cocktails take a little bit of time, especially the nice ones. I completely agree with that more than awesome. More than awesome. I completely agree with that. I, for one, take my time in such things because I was never in the work. I, I suppose if I was ever in the workplace, then that would be the one. Incorrect. Go to Weatherspoons. Oh, I respect your opinion, but I decided to disagree. One fluid ounce of Campari in my glass. We got one glass. It's very, very red, which kind of allows us to make that red potion, well, the color that we desire. I just put it in the wrong one. Sorry about that. I was not meaning for that to go on that one. I should switch that around. There we go. The sake drink that your pen pal recommends is called Sam Samurai Rock. That's the one. Samurai Rock, which uses lime juice and sake, I'm pretty sure. Just sake and lime. Most likely unflavored, but it could work. I'm not sure if this stuff is unflavored. And because of the sake of conversation, for the sake of conversation right now, I'm going to give it a crack open. And because um, it's already open. And give it a smell. If you open it, we have to put it in the fridge. This one was already open for some reason. Why did you open it? I don't think I opened it. You totally opened it. I may have opened it. I might have made a boo-boo. Well, this one's gonna go in the fridge after the stream is over. Exact proportions, uh, I don't know what the, we can take a look. Hey, welcome to the party, more than awesome. For that, we put a party hat on. Why? Because because there's probably something wrong with us, maybe. But we're all having a good time, so it's Why all good. Why you saying that? You guys are amazing. Whatever, there's nothing wrong with us. I'm gonna put it on my head. Why? It's, that's where I've got the most real estate right now. Ah, it's kind of falling. Oh, and you subscribed as well. Absolutely. I appreciate that. My party hats are falling off my head, so this is going to require a little bit of effort. Oh, actually, you know what? They're all they're all hanging in the back. And now we get another one, because that's what subscriptions are for. I'm going to put this one as a shoulder guard. I like shoulder guards. Let's do with that. And I'm going to put it around my head. Oh, de -do -de -do -de -do -do. there we go. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. I've got shoulder guard. I've got shoulder guard party hat. Nice. My next ingredient in the classic, totally nondescript red potion is a half an ounce of sweet vermouth. I have Martini and Rossi. Whoa, my knife just fell. That was pretty don't hurt cool. Yourself. Good thing I don't need that anytime soon. Whoops. Oh. Anna, do you like whiskey? No. Mm, well, there's your answer. The answer was no, unfortunately. I'd say, like a lot of things, it's just like. Like, maybe there's not the right, yeah, 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 yeah. I, for one, am okay with whiskey. I used to think that whiskey was my jam, and then I discovered gin, and I was soft, I was sorely mistaken, but swiftly corrected. Half an ounce in my tiny, in my tiny one. Yeah. What does she like? And what do you like? She really, really likes uh, cordials and I things like that are kind of sweet. fruity and sugary. Anna's particular favorite is a liqueur called Evangeline's Praline Liqueur. Praline being a, um, it, it's a type of sweet down, I'm not sure where you all are from, but down south in America, uh, kind of Georgia area, South Carolina, they make this treat down there called pralines, and I believe it's a pecan-based uh, dessert. And down there, only down there, below, like, I, I don't know, below, like, Virginia, below Virginia, we have to go at least below Virginia in order for us to actually find that bottle. And we've got some friends who live down there, so every single time we see each other, they kind of bring us up a little bit of praline so that Anna can have her fix, which is wonderful. Ah, once I get bigger, I'll need a party hat armor. I will need party hat armor, you're absolutely right. If the day ever, with bigness ever cosplay. comes. That's my next cosplay? Party Hat Man, the warrior of your cocktail party, I guess. My next ingredient is a one fluid ounce of cran raspberry juice. I don't have cran raspberry. I've got cran cran. Cranberry. Cranberry juice. So I'm going to put, what is it, a full ounce in there? One fluid ounce in there. See, the, the, the thing with the party hats is it's actually pretty hilarious because I never know going into it how crazy it is going to get. And so this is kind of like a reward for people popping in and a reward for me, of course, because it's just, it's fun. I get really cool pictures after this. And in my opinion, premium quality content. Uh, but aside from that too, I think it's funny. And if I think it's funny, then well, I haven't been told otherwise so far. I need an ounce of that. This is a really big container. So I'm going to pour it on my table, not in the air, but then I'll put it in like that. There we go. Ah, there we go. That's my cranberry juice. I'm going to put that back on the floor. I got a lot of bottles on the floor. Um, later on, Maybe after things are kind of done, I'll, maybe I'll take the camera off and see what behind the scenes looks like. Maybe. I, wouldn't be the first time. My next ingredient is two to three ice cubes. Well, I love how this book actually tells you how many ice cubes it recommends. Lovely. Uh, from what I've been told, 
from YouTube videos that I watch. If you make cocktails in a shaker, supposedly what you want to do is you want to take two big ice cubes, you want to put one in whole to be able to help like shake a shake of things around, and then you want to crack the other one completely. I don't know who did the study, but somebody did, and that's what they say. So red potion, and then I'd fill it up with, uh, with chilled soda water, which I, I don't know if this, this is sparkling water. It's the closest I could get to soda water at my Whole Foods. Uh, add all ingredients, except the soda water to the cocktail shaker with ice cubes, shake until chilled, about 20 seconds. Then pour the contents of the cocktail shaker into a serving vessel on top with chilled soda water. Stupid bug in my face. Consumption. What's my opinion on drinking warm beer? Warm beer is also beer. I think, in my opinion, some types of beers like porters, uh, pilsners, things that have a lot, like a deeper flavor, kind of like, like on the chocolate side, the mocha side, um, the, the, uh, coffee side. I prefer those warm because it feels to me more like a warm, honestly, I would, if I had the opportunity to take like, like a chocolate pilsner or something, like a chocolate porter or something like that and put it in like a mug, I'd, I'd drink it warm at that point. I don't know if drinking cold, I mean, I guess it's to each your own, but I got no problem with drinking, uh, beer warm depending on the type of beer. I would not be the one to drink uh warm like uh was it warm lagers because i'm not a big lager fan to begin with just not really my cup of tea that's what i grew up with in fraternity land and uh, in fraternity land well it's not like i had much of choice uh in terms of, in terms of the beers that i was drinking they, they wouldn't buy the porters and stuff because that was expensive we'd buy the cheap stuff because like we want beer so that was what was available and then i became 21 and started buying all my own and i have been happier ever since Let's shake this thing up. Uh, I'm gonna try to shake away from the microphone so it doesn't sound like somebody's trying to... <laughs> your eardrum. All right, let's go. It said 20 seconds. So I'm gonna go with 20 seconds. Feels good to me. Purified made a recommendation and it's pretty good. What was my recommendation again? I'm a little dense. You'll have to remind me if you don't mind. I don't even know what my recommendation was. Ah, oh, it's time to do some squats. All right, well, I'm gonna do my squats as I pour this into a, a, an appropriate container. Hold on. Oh, base of gin. Ah, yes. I like that idea. It is a good recommendation. Glad I thought of it. I'm gonna do squats now as I find a suitable container for uh, my next drink. Uh, this is the red potion. I think the red potion deserves something a little, um, a little mystical. And I really only have, I have two mystical cups in this house. I have, uh, one that looks like, uh, a crystal, which I'm gonna use. Um, and I also have one that looks like somebody decided to combine a, a martini glass and a frog's face together. That's pretty mystical. Mystical in the sense like transmogrification and turning yourself into somebody different or some other animal completely. It's over there. Uh, I can put that on camera in a little bit if, if it's so necessary. But I'm gonna use my little crystal glass over here. Um, I need a couple more swat, a slot, <laughs> swats before I do that. Um, that's what it says. And then they're saying specifically to use a particular, oh, Anna, may I have the smallest teaspoon that you can find? The absolute smallest. All right, those are my squats. We did it. We did it, everybody. I'm gonna pour it into this little glass over here. It looks a little mystical looking, in my humble opinion. And my opinion is just that. Humble, because I got nothing else. Let's go for it. My heart's re my heart's racing. 86 beats per minute. That's a lot higher than my normal like 50 something. I'm a very chill person from what I've been told. So let's strain that out in our glass over here. Let's do it. And the base of gin, light rum, triple sec, and lemon juice. That sounds lovely. Especially with a little bit of the lemon juice. Let's go for that. This is gonna be interesting to pour, but let's go for it. This, and it's not done yet. This is not the rest of, um, this is not the entirety of Red Potion. It's not there yet. We've got the color, but we need the rest of it. So that's just the base. And we'll put that, we'll put something extra in there in just a little bit. Little, De little Devil is a, is a cocktail recipe we've got going on here. Uh, it says two ounces of gin, one and a half ounces of light rum, one ounce of triple sec, one ounce of lemon juice, combine all together, crack dice in a cocktail shaker, shake well, strain into a chilled cocktail glass. That sounds lovely. And actually what I'm going to do is I take pictures of stuff like this in chat so that I remember for later. So your recommendation, or uh, I guess twist on a recommendation, has been duly noted and will be added to the cocktail collection later. So thank you so much for that, Purified. I very much appreciate that. And if anybody else gets recommendations for the two, perfect. That's exactly what we're here to do. I'm going to take my used things, put them down here to continue with the rest of the experiments. Now for this one, 
potions got to look cool. It's got to look mystical. And, and you know, the glass can only do so much with any sort of, like, mysticness that you can get there. But you got to add something a little bit more. So what do you do? Well, the first thing that you do is you fill it up with chilled soda water because that's what the instructions tell you to do and you forgot it the first time. So you're going to do that as high up as you want. I don't really need a lot of it. That should be just fine. That is... No, don't fizz out of the cup. You're going to fizz out of the cup. Are you going to fizz out of the cup? Don't fizz out of the cup. Ooh, it almost fizzed out of the cup. It wasn't going to happen. Not this time. I'm careful with my cocktails. It actually made it a much clearer color. It's really cool. I'm trying to close this bottle. There we go. Bottle has been closed. And now, included in that, I'm going to now add a little bit of my luster dust, pearl powder, mica powder, whatever, into this drink here. They say pretty much... Whoa, that is a big wall of text there. I don't know if I can... That's probably another recipe. I'll look at that again later, because that is going way off screen for me. <laughs> That's for Anna. Oh, Anna, you can copy and paste that if you'd like to. I'm putting them in the drinks chat. She's putting them in the drinks chat. Yes, perfect. This is exactly... This is exactly why we created that channel. It's working. We've done it. So now I'm going to add luster dust to it. You're not supposed to use a lot. And it's not like it's going to hurt you if you use a lot. It's just, if you use a lot, it's going to be wasted because all the extra stuff is going to collect on the bottom of your glass. And it's a really, really cool thing. Why would you not want to, why not, why would you want to waste it? You want to save some for the rest of your cocktails. Um, I am going to use basically as little of this as I possibly can. I'm going to put about a 16th of a teaspoon in here and see if that works. And after I put it inside, I'm going to swirl it around a little bit. If I can even swirl it around. I'm going to give it a little swirl as best as I possibly can. Oh, you know, that's kind of spilling. Let me get a bigger glass for this. I think I need a bigger glass. And then I'll transfer it back into here after I'm done swirling. Let's go with this guy. Let's go with this guy. Put you in here. That's also not big enough, really. Uh, well, like, I guess if I if I push it back and forth a little bit, oscillations, then it'll get all whirly-durly. Where's my whirly disc? I haven't actually read it. I just Where's the it? whirly disc? I think I need a little bit more in there. A little bit more. A little bit more of my thingy. My luster dust. And let's squish it again. Oscillate back and forth a little bit to get the luster. Oh, yeah, it's working. Oh, yeah, it's working. Alrighty then. Maybe a couple more. One more oscillation. And I think we will be just. I might be able to drink that if we have 7 up, not Sprite. Okay. 7 up might be a good substitute for that Sprite in that recipe. Well, I have issues. Oh, because Anna doesn't like Sprite. Well, that's the... No, because issues, issues, the issues with Sprite. Sorry, not doesn't like Sprite. It just doesn't agree with her tummy. Oh, did a party hat fall? I think a party hat fell. Oh, I got party hats all over me. Jeez. Ah! They're going all over the place. So it's edible glitter? It is. This is my luster dust. It doesn't look very good from this angle because I don't have a proper lighting for it, but after I put it over there, it should look just fine. But if you can see from here, I'm going to try to put that up against the camera. Yeah, let's see. Does that look okay? I think that actually looks mighty nice in the, in the camera light. I really hope I don't drop this thing. That would be disastrous. But that's our little red potion there, and it's got a swirly-durly effect. You know what I'm going to do? Actually, I'm going to pour it back in here, then pour it into its original glass, and as it's still settling, I'm going to put it up to the camera so we can watch it, like, kind of swirl around as it settles. All right, you know what actually I'm going to do, too? I'm going to turn my light on on my camera and then do that. So does that work a little bit? Mm. Let's slide it from the side. Maybe. I'm trying my best. Oh, it's cool when they set cocktails on fires and stuff. Yeah, I do that. There's at least one thing in this book that gets to be set on fire. Okay, now I want to see what it tastes like. It's okay so far. Let me close my... I want to close my luster dust up a little bit. Because I don't want to... wouldn't want to waste it. This stuff is so fine that all I have to do is breathe on it, and then it just goes all over the place. It's crazy. Let's see about that. It's very pretty to look at from the top. It smells... Kind of like pepper. Interestingly. Um, it smells it smells a little like like uh, like peppery to be honest and that might be coming across from the Campari um, oh my goodness that's actually really pleasant wow okay so so I would say that the red potion gets exactly what's coming to it with that Campari there is a bit of sweetness there that is definitely uh um, facilitated by the ras uh, cranberry juice that's in there. Consumption. Yeah. But, like, the pepperiness that's coming in there is kind of mixed with the bitterness. And that's definitely because of the Campari. I'll be honest. I don't have a palate that's enough to really get 
the um like uh the vermouth in there uh but there is a bit of sweetness and i honestly can't tear apart the sweetness from the sweet vermouth or the sweetness from the uh the raspberry ju uh, cranberry juice it's not raspberry it's cranberry it says raspberry in here cran raspberry so i get a little, little a little crazy it seems a bit that that little devil was a way too boozy you might make a sidecar instead but add a little i mean you could always add like a little bit of simple syrup to that probably gonna make it a little bit a little bit sugary a little sweeter for those who are not as into short drinks as opposed to them being long which i think is the term i think a short drink is for the stuff that's really really boozy uh it's great it's a bit of a hard hitter that uh, that little devil i mean it's called the little devil if it oops, there it goes oh i just dropped five party heads i will take care of those in a little bit they will go back on my body somewhere i promise after i take these tasting notes again but it's nice i actually i think i really really like this it's really not that bad at all i'm gonna keep that around that's gonna be that's gonna be my booze drink of choice as i said every year. actually you know what it looks so pretty i'd feel bad if i didn't put it over on display but it's nice this was the red potion uh, everybody the red potion as i will now put on display over there the red potion is made with if i can just kind of scooch my way around my i don't i don't have a very big apartment so i have to like scoot my way around everything did you stack those things did i stack what i did stack them don't they look pretty i'm gonna put the this is the red potion which i will put in i'm gonna scooch these guys behind in a careful and considerate manner careful and considerate there you go right back there you know also too uh you gotta you gotta admire the fact that i am very confident in my stacking skills uh, you might not notice, but that's an extruder to a 3D printer. All these cocktails are on top of a 3D printer. And so all I need to do is whack this surface just a little too hard. It all comes crashing down, all over the wires, all over the mechanics. I'm confident. Scary? Don't be scared. Let's put that in the light of day. Honestly, I, oh yes! I can get that I can get that effect. It looks beautiful from here. As you can see, it's kind of glittery a little bit. That looks beautiful, actually. Let me get like a... Um, I don't know. I'm gonna take something to swirl around a little bit so it looks cool. Here, That's here. a pen. That's disgusting. Okay, fine. Anna says pens are disgusting. Just stick your finger take, in it or something. I'm gonna stick my finger in it, which is somehow less disgusting, so... There we go. Luster, luster, luster. There we go. Luster, luster. Luster, I hardly know her. It's really cool looking. I remember when I saw... Excuse me, I'm gonna get past my microphone again. When I saw this particular cocktail um, posted in the drink channel, I was like, wow, this is so... This is so cool looking. Like, I love this. This is so cool looking. I, I really, it, it, I was like, I really got to try this at some point because it was the one time I had ever been told about a recipe that uses uh, luster dust. And I, I've known about it for a while, but like, I just never had a recipe that called for it specifically because it's more of a garnish than anything else. It doesn't add any flavor. So technically you can make anything pretty like that but this one just felt like it had a good reason and um there are also there's blue potion in here and there's green potion as well i don't think i have all the actually do i have let's see the blue potion calls for oh i didn't recite the red potion again red potion called for one and a half fluid ounces of silver tequila i used uh a ribon 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 tequila uh one fluid ounce of campari i used campari campari one and a, uh, just one half fluid ounce of sweet vermouth i used martini and rossi um, one fluid ounce of cran raspberry juice. Uh, I have cranberry. Belchiba has joined the party as well, so I will add an additional party head to my collection over here. Uh, got a lot of consumption. As I place them upon my head, there's a lot of consumptions on there. How many consumptions? Oh, I, I did most of those. I just never clicked the button. What's luster dust? It's that edible glitter stuff. Yeah. Um, I I have the luster dust that I use is by O. That's O-H with an exclamation point. Sweet, that's S-W-E-E-T. Art, as in A-R-T. Oh, sweet art. Pearl dust, super pearl, made in the USA. It's beautiful. And I got, like, I've made two drinks with this. This must, you only use a very little amount of this. And it really packs a punch. I used, I think, a 16th of a teaspoon in that glass over there for the red, for the, um, for the red potion. And it came out looking absolutely beautiful. The red potion finishes itself off by being stirred in a cock or a shaken in a cocktail shaker until cool. Pour that into a serving vessel of your choice. They've got pictured a little heart container here because that makes sense, right? And heart containers like Legend of Zelda and stuff like that. It's a healing potion. Why didn't I do that? Because the, the heart container never got here on time, but the luster dust did, so. Uh, and then you top that off with silver, uh, um, soda water, and you can add the shimmer effect. The shimmer effect being you add a little bit of luster dust to that. In my case, I used about 1 16th of a teaspoon, and that filled up about the equivalent of one, like, uh, rocks glass. That was great. And so you can also use, 
uh, the mist effect on this, which is where you, where you take a small, not too small that you'd swallow it, but a small amount of dry ice and you put that in the bottom of your glass and start the bubble and it fizzes and it makes this really ominous mist rise out of your cocktail glass. And I don't have dry ice on me, otherwise I totally would have done that. I also have no way of keeping that fresh, but um, Anna didn't have a reaction to this one. Anna, would you like to try it? Oh, I mean, you did kind of request something fruity, so I think we do. We we are owed a taste test if you're so inclined to. I don't know what you're working on right now. Um, I'm just going through notes and re reassessing them again. Here, if you wanna, uh, it's it's over there. She's gonna have to walk in front of the camera for a moment there. I apologize for uh, full do, frontal Anna. Do, do. That was her shoulder. Let's try that. Let's see Anna's reaction. Oh, do I have to be on camera for my reaction? Uh, if you want to, yeah, come on back here if you'd like to. I'm gonna put party hats on my head, so uh, we'll kind of fill the space with a. You helping me out for a little bit. I apologize. There's a lot of gunk on the floor. That's why I'm not supposed to come out from back here. Let me put some party heads on my head in the meantime. I'm gonna put. I've made it to the back of the bar. Give us your tasting notes. I think oh, it shiny. is. I think it's bitter. I think it's shiny. I think it smells it alcoholic. Smells very alcoholic. That's right. Yeah, I agree with that. I like the luster dust. Luster dust is cool. I'm gonna put this party head around my as my other shoulder pad. Luster dust looks really cool, doesn't it? I like it. It doesn't taste fruity. It's not fruity? Yeah, I don't get a lot of the fruit in there, to be perfectly honest. What is this? It's uh, ras uh, cranberry juice, and we've got uh, Campari in there, which is bitter. Uh, tequila, which is probably why you're not liking That's it so why! Much. And then I the like tequila. tequila. Is that working? That's kind of working. It's like tart. I got one over there, and I got one over here. I don't, I don't know. Imagine. I can tell there's cranberry juice to it, but like beyond that, it's like kind of... Mm -hmm. Nice. Please watch out. Thank you. You got it. You got it. Yeah. It's a very, that's a very scary glass because like, it looks like it's going to come out. It's, it looks like it's going to fall over at literally every single point in time. It's very, very scary. Turns it's cool. Yeah. It's really interesting that you can turn like the Negroni into a tequila drink and then add the cran or the raspberry to it. It's basically a Negroni. The Negroni using uh, the gin and Campari and your vermouth, sweet vermouth or whatever type of vermouth. If you want it dry, I guess you can do it dry. And you kind of, you switch out the spirit, you add a little juice to it and make it sparkle. So actually, I um, I thought I thought when I read this the first time that it mentioned the Negroni. I, I know the Negroni is mentioned elsewhere in this book, but um, yeah, go for it. Thank you so much for sharing your reaction to this. I think at least one of us appreciates it. I'm at least one. I'm the one guy who definitely does appreciate it, and I, I think Jake might be the other, but Jake, we'll see. So, so I guess I'm we could all night. we could also do oh, uh, blue potion and green potion. Um, I'm not sure if I actually have all those ingredients, but let's recite the menu to see what we got. The blue potion, like red potions, blue potions are an RPG staple. Blue potions generally restore the player's magic points or mana, although occasionally it improves stamina or other stats. Since most of us don't have mana points to restore, I thought electrolytes and potassium might work. Really. This cocktail has a nice tropical citrus flavor with a bit of coconut water. It will definitely refresh you, if not your mana. And it uses one fluid ounce of white rum, one fluid ounce of coconut rum, three-fourths of a fluid ounce of uh, blue curse. Oh, by the way, if anybody out there, like, doesn't understand like ounces like you're in another country who uses like milliliters i have all those things here as well it's just it's just easier for me but if you'd like me to recite them for your own reference when i post them they'll be posted in uh with with the different conversions as well but so yeah just just as a reference in addition to that blue curacao you add spark sparkling coconut water fresh lime juice simple syrup add some cubes and top off with lemon lime soda and that's how you do the blue potion most gin cocktails can be replaced with mezcal and they'll work perfect with the same specs. Really? I actually, I don't have any mezcal. Uh, that was something like, I watched the video on mezcal like a while ago and I was like, this sounds super awesome. Like the way that I understand, it feels like mezcal would be like the, like the whiskey equivalent, but like for tequila in the sense that there are tons of different types of styles to it. You never know exactly what you're going to get. It depends on your barrel, depends on your aging, depends on your place and yada yada. Mezcal sounds awesome. And I wish I had more space in my collection for it. I just haven't had the time. To, I don't have any mezcal specific recipes, but I guess I could change it all out. But I've always wanted to try mezcal. That's actually one base spirit that I don't have. So you found it. <laughs> more than awesome, can't really drink tequila or mezcal due to the mista mistakes made in college. Oof. But we'll drink the crap out of some gin. And unfortunately, some of the best gin in America is made right here in North Carolina. Awesome. Awesome. North Carolina. I'm up here in Pennsylvania. Not because I want to be, just because I happen to be. I'm going to take a little. Are you trying to say you don't want to be here? Well, I mean, I don't want to be here forever in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is a wonderful state, but like, you know. Cool. I want to be uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Personally, Virginia, or Florida. I would love to be in the Carolinas uh, as where my forever home will be, or at least my next home, uh, my penultimate forever home. Uh, let's see. I also need to put the rest of these party hats. I, I owed it. I owe, I owe party hats. So I will follow through on that. That's what we do. 
that we, I would be a good rapper. I've always wanted to try rapping, but I feel like if I tried, I would insult somebody. So I've saved away from it for a little bit, though I can speak very, very fast if I know what I'm talking about. If I uh, knew of any things on the top of my head that I could just say very, very fast. Um, I mean, technically I could just read the book in front of me. I, 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 I said it pretty fast. You know, actually on that note, after I put my party hats on, let's just speed through the green potion and see what the hell is in that. I'm curious. I'm curious nonetheless. I'll put more party hats on my head. Oh my god. Tiny party hats. Tiny party hats on my head. Raleigh area of North Carolina represent what what? Uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania represent what what? Born and raised in the great state of New Jersey, Hunterdon County. It's a wonderful place. I miss Flemington. They have a wonderful Chick-fil-A over there. Mother, father, I hope you're resting well in your house because you're still alive. And you're awesome. And my father just texted me before with some work-related stuff, and I will have to follow through on that. It's wonderful. Can Anna take one sip of every drink? Lamau. Sure, if she wants to. Do I have to? You don't have to. She wants to know if she has to. My answer is, no, nah, dog, do whatever you want. Are you going to have any that are tequila? Are you going to have any that are, like... Am I gonna have any that vodka aren't tequila-based? Uh, vodka-based? Uh, I don't know exactly which ones are or are not vodka in here. So. Don't have vodka down, so therefore. I don't have vodka down, so well, I don't have any vodka down. I mean, I can always grab vodka. Uh, just because, just because I'm attempting to stick to, stick to the book doesn't mean that I have to. I can always, we can always go elsewhere. Here, I got all my party hats on my head. Now let's speed through what the hell is in the green potion. Green Potion, inspired by your favorite video game, in most games where they appear, the green potions restore stamina, although there are some outliers. The magic ingredients in this delicious potion is matcha green tea powder, which will restore all your stamina, all of it, and give you a healthy dose of nutri nutrients to boat. To boot? To boat. Ingredients. We got matcha powder, warm water, vodka, Midori. I did bring Midori down. That's a melon liqueur. Ice cubes, lime sherbet, and chilled lemon lime soda. I don't have any lime sherbet, so I that can't make that delicious. one. That sounds delicious. It does sound delicious, doesn't it? And it uses, um... Yeah, that's a vodka drink. Look at that. I'll have to do the green potion next time. That sounds awesome. Okie dokie. I guess we'll uh, move on to another cocktail, I suppose. Actually, before I do so, I, I really did not have enough time to eat dinner. So, it's sitting over here on the couch. So, you want me to it up? if you'll excuse me, I'm going to take a couple of bites of this burrito that's been eyeballing me for a little bit. Thank you. Should I warm it up again? No, no, it's good, it's good. I'm gonna finish that. <laughs> I'm trying not to speak with my mouth full, but that's why we have the music to listen to, right? Let's let's listen to the music. What does the music sound like? vibe sesh while I'm chewing and turning to another cocktail. Wait, Meatball, don't go! Be back real soon. This is a Star Trek jig. It's for you. Sorry, I, it took a really long time for me to chew that. I try not to choke on things. I'm I'm a choker, so. Cameron, I eat way too fast. It sounds concerning. What's so concerning about a man who chokes on his food? Not or anything else put in his mouth. Oh, I have a drinking problem. I got water in my chest. That's okay. What am I doing here? W wiping my face off like a savage. That's why you have towels. Bartenders always got. Why is this wet? Why is this wet? Well, it smells like dishes, so I guess that's not too bad. I probably used it when I washed dishes. Anyway, I hope Meatball's not going away for too long, because I have an additional... Meat, uh, Meatball Girl and I, uh, my, my, my pal Christina and I, uh, about a year ago, started hanging out a little bit again, like, um, and I started sharing some of my uh, mixological, mixological passions with her. Um, that was around the time where my collection was about, let's say, like, three-fourths of the size it is now, or maybe even half the size that it is now. Um, she and I decided to do a little bartering deal. She was working, and I was doing schooling, and while I was at home, 
uh, I would drive her back and forth from school uh, to, to work because she needed a ride. And so I was like, how about this? She's like, can I pay you for that? I was like, you know, how about this? Instead, let's go back to the bartering system. I am going to drive you to work. And when I drive you to work, let's say you get like two to three rides, let's say about 10 bucks a ride. And then after we do those rides a certain number of times, we're gonna go to the store together at the liquor store. You're gonna buy, you're gonna buy a liquor of your choice. And then we're gonna try to make it in a cocktail. We're gonna try to use it in a cocktail later. And so my collection grew. I think that's how I added a uh, Godiva liqueur to my collection, which is all chocolate based. I think I added, what other stuff? I have Fernet Branca up there. Mr. Black. Mr. Black was not something from that. Or no, that was something I bought with my mother the first time, I think. Or maybe I did. Well, let's just say Mr. Black is a uh, coffee liqueur, which I personally love. I can only find it in New Jersey. Um, but so that was also a, a thing from that. Fernet, honestly, I wish I had more cocktails for Fernet. And actually, I do have more cocktails for, uh, for Fernet. I, one of my cocktail, I bought two cocktail books while I was on vacation. I bought this little number and I also bought another one called Nightcap. And the reason why I bought the book Nightcap, which I'll go grab in a little bit probably, um, is because I opened up the one of the pages and it gave me a cocktail recipe that used, that used Fernet Branca. And I was like, yes, more cocktail recipes for this wonderful, wonderful spirit that I have. Like, I don't give much love to, I'll admit. I have only ever had um, Fernet Branca with Coca-Cola. And there was one other drink I did with it. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, and it wasn't really that good. But like the Amaro's is a whole world of spirits that I hope to be able to explore with that particular book over there because it's all those bitter Amaro. Um, and I want to say di they're the, the digestives. I think the digestives are the ones that are usually, um, that are usually the bitter ones. So one shot, please consume. I'll do a shot of water because I don't have alcohol in front of me. Well, you have all of your drinks over there. I mean, all of my alcohol, all of my stuff is over there. The, the 3D printer is over there. I, I can't, I can't, I can't reach it. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I can't, as you can see, I can't get my arm into frame. I can't do it. It's okay. Consumption is only 100 points. Um, let's see, Mr. Black, you got on one of those outings. Oh, I did. Okay, well, thank you for reminding me. Um, anyway, so that was the exposition of that particular drink. And so, this next one, uh, we, we, um, oh, well, what else did we do? Uh... And we made a couple of different types of Star Trek inspired cocktails. I got the recipes from an individual by the May of, oh, consumption. And consumption. Oh my God, chat's going crazy. No ideas on the ratios. Anna, why are you doing that? Now I can't see what people are saying. It's just funny. It's not funny anymore. It's funny to me. Now I can't, well, I'm just gonna drink water then, I guess. And I completely missed everything that uh, uh, More Than Awesome said up there. And that's all your fault. You can blame yourself for that. I had a drink the other day with gin, oh. Fernet, Coruscant, and Carpo, Carpa, Antiquely, Antiquia. Something Antica, perhaps? Uh, Carpano. Carpano ten to Antica? Yeah. Maybe. And before that was one shot, please. One shot, please. Well, I'm not gonna take the shot, but I, I do. I'll do all these. I will do all of these consumptions. Apparently, now that my chat is completely plagued with them, I may have to. Uh... Finally, there are important people talking in conversation. Oh, consumption again, I guess. I'm waiting until you get the alcohol out. Is that is that what you're doing? Yes. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. Not just because you told me to. I'm not gonna do that. That's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. What kind of, what do I want to do? Uh, what, what kind of shot can I take? What kind of shot? I'll do a shot of water. See, I got a shot. I'll put it in this container here. <laughs> here we go. I'll put it inside of my jigger and then take a shot from that. There's remnants of alcohol in there. That's two fluid ounces of water. Hmm. That was pretty good. Yeah. Now, if you'll hold on a little moment, this next drink requires a shot in the glass. All drank together. So just hold your horses there for a little bit, if you wouldn't mind. Meatball is a hardcore Trekkie. This particular drink that we're going to get to next is called the Sumerian Sunset. This is the book page on it. It may look reminiscent of what some of you may know as a sake bomb. A sake bomb being there is a cup, usually with sake in it, or a little shot glass. This is not sake in that shot glass. It's something different. And you put it into um, a beer, usually like a like a Japanese lager or something like that. And you put the two, you put the shot glass on top of your glass that has your beer in it, and you put it on top of two chopsticks. And then you count down, three, two, one, 
and then you slam the table, and then the shot glass with the sake falls right into the glass, mixing with everything else. So that's exactly what we're going to try to do here. Supposedly, uh, for that I actually need chopsticks, so I need to grab those as well. The Sumerian Sunset is an intriguing beverage. The most interesting feature is that it starts out as a clear liquid and then explodes with iridescent color when subjected to vibration, aka flicking the glass. Its two most notable appearances are in The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, Star Trek. Data makes one for Deanna Troy after losing their game of chess. As per their agreement, in Deep Space Nine, Quark prepares the drink for his old flame, Natima Lang. The special effects of this drink are impossible to replicate exactly in the 21st century, but using the sake bomb technique comes pretty damn close. So we're gonna try that. Uh, it it kind of reminds Jake of how British Airways give you a Bloody Mary. How do they do that? Do they do the same thing? Uh, Delta, Delta Airlines, it makes you makes you make your own drinks like a cave person. Ugh. I fly Frontier in spirit because I'm cheap. So I have chopsticks prepared for this. Frontier. We fly only Frontier, to be honest. Uh, only Frontier. We also fly American Airlines. I've spied. They're like higher class and they're spicy. American Airlines also doesn't make my cocktails for me either. It's so sad. More than awesome has to fly for work, so like 80 billion miles, my god. I have like, I have enough miles to support my honeymoon eventually, when that sometime happens, after I get married. It doesn't go up there. But I'm, it doesn't go up to Alaska? No, it does not. Shit, Frontier, get your act together. No, they'll go to California, we'll go to Disneyland. Then. We'll go to Disneyland, we're gonna go to Disneyland. Yeah, we'll go to Anaheim. Disneyland, we'll go to Disneyland, Hollywood. Disneyland. I'm gonna grab a, sh a glass, I need glass, uh, mixing glass, mixing, mixing, mixing. I have a lot of straws back here. I was using my mixing glass as a means to hold some of my utensils. And, well, there goes that sound. That rang, my, that rang in my ear for a little bit. Oh my goodness. The Sumerian sunset requires filling a cocktail shaker with ice, adding some coconut water. Oh, I need coconut water if you don't mind, dear. Shimmery white rum. That's what I had the luster dust for. Pine pineapple juice and the grenadine. It should be in a location on that. Wow, everything is in the fridge pineapple except for the, the rum. So pineapple juice, coconut. Uh, coconut water, and then the grenadine should be in that red container next to the Godiva liqueur. No, 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 not that tiny. Small container. Nope, it's next to the Godiva, all the way on the left, side one. Godiva? Yep, there you go. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. It looks red to me from this distance. Actually, it looks kind of black from here. Looks like you took cola and like... What's up, dude? What's up, Eric? We're drinking! It's a wonderful thing to do on a Saturday night. What is... Oh, this is coconut water. It said butternut squash soup on the back, and I was like, did I buy the wrong thing? Like, that's crazy. Yo, welcome to the party, Bet TD. Bruh. Like, how's it going, dude? I better put on another Oh my god, I've run out of tiny party hats. Oh my god. I need some of the bigger ones. Ah! We've got spark juice. Is spark juice is uh it's a funny joke that I'm not gonna repeat because my boss is in here. <laughs> what was that Tumblr post? Oh my god. That's a lot of here, just just drop them. Drop all those party hats. Ah! There we go. You told me to drop them. No, it's good, it's good. That's exactly what I wanted you to do. Now I can take from one of these, and there, Sumerian Sunset, it's on uh, Tumblr. Oh, I could take, oh, there's a tiny, but I don't want to take it off of Anna. Anna's looking so hot up there. Oh, they can't even see Anna, so. It's okay. Know. Ah, yes, all that stuff. What was that, what would you do if you kept all the sparks in the fridge? Get it? Like the pineapples. I mean, not pineapples, I mean sparks like spark plugs. What do I do with the, uh, the party head now? I'm gonna put it on my face. I'm gonna put it on the side of my head. Now I can't hear anything. That kind of worked. Yeah. And well, now I got a party head sticking out the side of my head. Everything sounds like the ocean. Spark plus tastes awesome. Yeah, have you ever crunched up the little, like the little, the glass in your mouth? Like that's, I think is probably the best part. So for the Sumerian sunset, I'm gonna fill a cocktail shaker with ice. Oh, I need ice too. Anna, you were getting a workout today. Well, I was paying attention. You always were paying attention. Huh. My work. Why did you put the things in there? Never mind. Yeah. Uh, ice, ice in there. Uh, I, maybe I need to, and a separate double shot glass. Double shot glass? Double shot glass? I only got one shot glass. I'm gonna do that one. I'm gonna do, this is probably clean. Probably. Ah, uh, actually changed the spark plug yesterday, like the old ones, like ceramic, broken in your mouth. Mmm. It doesn't sound enjoyable, but it does sound tasty, if you're into that type of stuff. If you're a fan of, like, the way iron tastes, and I mean the iron from your blood, then, you know, you can be into it. Give me an if you want to be into it. The sound of the ocean is getting on my nerves. I'm gonna take it off of my ear. It's like, it's like, I have tinnitus anyway, and so the sound of even more stuff in my ear is just like, ugh, not fun, not fun. Uh, in any case, so I got a big old mess over here, so let's go for it. In my cocktail shaker, I'm going to combine ingredients. But that's not what you came for, or is it what you came for? I need coconut water and the one fluid ounce of white rum. I need two fluid ounces of coconut water. I'm using 
So delicious, dairy-free, organic coconut, unsweetened from Whole Foods. Fun fact, if you take porcelain from a smart plug, it can be used to shatter a window. <laughs> nice. I've heard that you can do the same thing with uh, rocks, but uh, I've never, I've, I, you know, I've only heard stories. I've only heard stories of that particular activity. So let's go two ounces. Of, oh, should I have shaken this first? Is it shaken? It's coming out all weird and white. Hmm, that looks disgusting. That looks really disgusting. I need to shake that more. That looks disgusting. Oh my god. Wow. That is disgusting looking in there. Hmm. Let me put this cap back on. Let me pack this up and I'm gonna shake it. Sh shake well. I'm real. Real, real well. Let's shake it, shake it. I don't like shaking this container because as I shake the container, the container shifts its size so it feels like it's gonna break at any moment. Oh my god. More than awesome was really hoping that it was butternut squash. I would have been very confused. Apparently, if you want to make butternut squash, a butternut squash soup, all you need is butternut squash, olive oil, garlic powder, onion powder, maple syrup, so delicious unsweetened coconut milk, veggie broth, sea salt, and ground black pepper. Is your mouth watering yet? The, the, the box is asking, not me. I, I don't know. Ugh. What if we use spark plug on spark toast? Hashtag branding. Ugh. This is not unfortunate. It's not going to break, I don't think. Anyway, it's all shaken up now. Hopefully the coconut water and the coconut oil, which is what I assume all the white shit in there was, have now begun to intermingle with each other in a way oh so proper. For I spilled coconut water on my setup. It's okay. It was a very full container. There we go. Oh, it's coming out very, very well. Oh, and because of the shifting size of the container, it literally just splurged <laughs> all over my counter. Jeez. I hate cardboard containers. They all sweet. They all taste good though. Intermingle. Spark toast branded spark plugs. Yum. What does it taste like? Coconut, I guess. And water, I guess. I don't know. Well, this belongs on um this belongs on Chatterbait now. This is definitely not safe for work content anymore. I'm covered in white stuff. And so is my bar setup. Yeah. Clip that, why don't you? Anyway, I put two ounces of uh, coconut water in there. I also need one fluid ounce of rum. Specifically white rum, so it doesn't change everything anymore. Uh, here we go. I got a big old bottle of Bacardi. I've had the same bottle of Bacardi for a very long time because, well, I always keep getting mileage out of it, you know? And I put that in my shaker. Mmm. Here we go. One ounce of rum in this big container as my hand kind of shakes because it is a big container and I'm not very strong. Have you seen my size? Maybe I look tall on camera because I'm, I can, I can touch the ceiling of the screen. <laughs> look at me how tall I am. <laughs> Touching the ceiling. Uh, but I'm I'm standing five foot six. I'm a, I'm a very small man, and I'm very proud of it though too. So it's it's okay. <sighs> You're supposed to pour from those containers the other way around. How <laughs> silly me! Like 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 this. Uh, but it's it's not open, so I guess it's not gonna do anything. You just pour the whole coconut. You pour all the coconut juice in there. Coconut juice, coconut milk, 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 coconut, milk for the coconut. One ounce for camera, one ounce for the queen. No, Tar. That's so mean. Such a mean word. Anyway, I have that on my shaker now. And I'm going to shake a shake a shake a. Oh my god, there's white stuff all over my pineapple juice. Disgusting. All right, I'm going to shake that up. And it's going to be strained into a highball glass. I don't really have a highball glass, but I'm actually going to use my mixing glass. I'm going to use my mixing glass. because. I bet your highball glass is the loved one. What's that? No, it is technically, but I don't think the shot glass is going to fit in there to be honest. So I'm gonna throw, I'm actually gonna put it in my mixing glass over here because I want that special effect to happen. This one's in a shot glass. Nah, 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 I don't want it. No, I don't want it. It's, I don't want to break that. That looks a lot too, I trust in this particular glass. I don't trust in the other one. Anyway, that's my thing. That is a very, hey, you know what? Yeah, you know what? Give me, give me the glass. I think I might actually need that. Oh, out of context, it is very concerning. Oh, very concerning, right? You never know what kind of stuff is getting lost on this show. Oh, can't wait for someone to come to my house and see the white semen stain all over the tame and tablecloth. I mean, we've... Oh, is that a... Oh. It's a plastic one. That'll yeah, work. actually, that'll work. I, I'm not as worried about that as, uh, as the other one, so let's get that out of here. Oh. <laughs> Guess, no, I promise, it's coconut milk. I promise, I promise it's coconut milk. Actually, you know, I wonder if coconut milk appears under a black light. I do have a black light. I don't know where it is, though, but we could test that hypothesis. I don't want to know what happened in this apartment before us. I Actually, I really don't want to know what's in that either. All right, so let's pour the coconut milk in there. I really, honestly, that is incredibly, that is an incredibly disappointing display, to be honest. So I'm gonna put double in there. I'm gonna double things up because it's, I'm all about presentation. So we're gonna add more coconut water and more rum. 
or mostly just coconut water. It looks like, I'll eyeball this one. Let's go up to like, go up to there. And let's add a little bit more rum. Nice. Check that image. I cannot right now. But perhaps somebody else will later. And if it's a bad one, if it's a bad image, mods go get them. The, the message I mean. <laughs> no, it's just how you're supposed to do it here. How I'm supposed to pour from the thing? Oh, the image. oh wait, 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 wait. I think I understand now. I think I, I think I get it now. I'll send it to you. How about that? Well, I'm still not gonna see it because I'm not I'm not at that point right now. Here we go. More rum. Mmm, tasty rum. Ah, nobody's ever done this. I I don't know what it looks like. Is it like Anna? Can you come over here and check me? Does that mean I'm supposed to turn like this? I think I just got it. Am I supposed to turn like pour like this instead? Or or I guess I was pouring like this and I'm supposed to do it like this. I think that's what it is, right? I think Maybe. So. Nobody in the human existence has ever done it like that. Well, clearly, if I'm supposed to pour it in a certain direction, it should tell me. I've never poured it. Or maybe I'm supposed to do it like this. Or perhaps like that. It's the right way to do it, to avoid splashes. Well, to totally. I've never done it that direction. But if there are no splashes, there'd be no fun. <laughs> pour it like that's some kind of pretentious fountain. <laughs> oh, no, look at that. Well, I hope, uh, I hope that doesn't overflow when I throw the sake thing in it. Yeah, we'll see. It this is gonna be a little interesting one. Anyway, I need additional ingredients in a tiny little shot glass. So I'm gonna use that shot glass. In a separate double shot glass, not a double shot glass, three quarter, three quarters of an ounce of shimmery white rum, pineapple juice, and grenadine. Nice. So I'm just gonna kind of put it all together. Three quarters of an ounce, the half a fluid ounce, and all that stuff. Get out of there. Get out of there, stupid fly. It's getting sweet over here. The fly's trying to come get me. I need... Shimmery white rum. So I think what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna add a little bit of that white rum in there. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add me that rum. Some of that rum in a glass. Then I need the grenadine and the pineapple juice. And then I'm gonna add some luster dust to it. I don't know how much though. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Three quarters of an ounce in my shot glass. Let's go with it. Three quarters of an ounce. That is a big thing of rum. Yo ho ho, an entire and an entire handle of rum. There we go, that's three quarters of an ounce in there. Uh, oh, you do it sideways. Is that what I was doing? It's fun until I gotta clean. Yeah, I gotta clean all this at some point. Probably tomorrow. Definitely tomorrow. If I wake up tomorrow, which I probably will. I've woken up every other day. But you can't you can't just take for granted the fact that you wake up in the next day. You, you really never know. I need half an ounce of pineapple juice, and I'm going to very unfortunately oh my god it's congealed on top of the pineapple juice container oh that's nasty do you want a different one that's the old one no this is fine this will be just fine half an ounce going in the glass there we go that's that's about half an ounce and then uh, we'll fill the rest of it up with grenadine so it looks all red scary red scary 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 disgusting what else we got where are you Where's my grenadine? Oh, it's right here. I'm silly. I actually made this grenadine just the other day. It's fresh, and I made way too much of it. Pour that in my shot glass. And let's see how that goes. All the way up to the top. That's got a pretty cool layering effect going on there, but that's not exactly what we want. Um, it's a, like According to the picture, it really should be shaken up a little bit. after. Uh, it, it shouldn't be separated like that, but it is. Uh, but let's take some more luster dust and put that inside. Gotta clean off this luster dust anyway. Get all over the place. All right, luster dust, which is now all sticky. I cannot open it because of how sticky it is. Let's just try that again. There we go. Luster dust. I'm gonna put a little bit in there and try not to speak so fervently, lest the luster dust gets everywhere. All right, luster dust in the container. Gonna close that up so that it doesn't splash absolutely everywhere. There we go. Um, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna take my chopsticks and I'm just gonna kind of stir it uh, in the equivalent of, in the interest of attempting to not make an, another mess. I'll stir that around until it looks all shimmery. Oh, that is a very shimmery shot glass. Very, very shimmery. Okie dokie. This is my shimmery shot glass. We saw the shimmery effect before, but I think it bears repeating that it looks really, really cool. Uh, maybe you can see that from here. That's shimmery. Shimmer, shimmer, shimmer. I don't think the lighting is super good at this particular angle, but alas, alas. So now what we're gonna do, if I don't completely screw things up, wow, that tastes amazing. Pineapple and grenadine. 
That's a combo. I'm going to very carefully place my chopsticks up on top of my glass right here. Uh, and I need to put my shot glass on top of it. I really feel... I, I don't know. I don't I don't trust that highball glass, so I'm gonna go back to my uh, mixing... I'm gonna go back to my mixing glass, because it's it's scaring the hell out of me. I feel like I'm just gonna make a mess. So, I'm gonna move it back to the other one. No fun! No fun! No fun! No fun at all. Yeah, no fun. Let's go for it. It's double what it was before. Yeah, that'll be fine. And this now looks like... Porn in a cup. Cameron! It looks disgusting. It looks like somebody just in a cup. I'm gonna be honest. All right. We've got our chopsticks, which will now be placed precariously on top. And we've got this shop glass, which hopefully won't make a mess when I slam the table. Do it like that. Don't fall just yet. Allow me to clean up first. Just a little bit. So we can get all the presentation. This is all presentation now. I, I, I'm sure it tastes wonderful. These are all used things. This is my water glass that has a little bit of coconut juice in it. Coconut yum. Coconut yum, coconut rum. Porn in a cup. Drink it or don't. I wouldn't, unless you're into it, in which case, be into it. Okie dokie. This I is. Not his mother. This is my Sumerian sunset made with two fluid ounces, uh, four fluid ounces of coconut water, two fluid ounces of white rum in this container, and then three, floor, uh, three quarters of an ounce of shivery white rum, which is just rum with the luster dust in it. Uh, half an ounce of pineapple juice and half an ounce of grenadine. And now I'm going to very precariously transfer the contents of the top glass into the bottom glass by use of percussive maintenance. Um, I remember the way that they, the way that I did the sake bomb back at good old Theta Kai was to say one, two, three, sake, sake, sake in Japanese and then slam the table. So in all in good faith, let's try it. Three, or um, ichi, Ni, san, sake, sake, sake. Oh, come on, go in there. It's in the glass. And now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna swirl it around a bit so that the color intermingles with each other. And it now turns, I don't really know, a really, really odd color that we really can't see because the coconut milk is so incredibly, uh, it's so incredibly, it's, it's, it's thick, boy. It's thick. As a thick boy, thick boy grenadine thing in the cup. That's my Sumerian sunset. And it worked wonderfully. And it smells like coconut juice. Maybe. Should I have put like two shots in there? Or whatever? Or two equivalent shot glasses in there because of the doubled amount? I think it'll be just fine. Cameron! Jake! It's, 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 time, it's time to drink! And then, at least in fraternity manner, the way that I recall it, uh, not fraternity manner, it's, not, I'm not trying to shit talk fraternity guys. I'm trying to talk about my fraternity in my house. Then you would drink it. And you'd drink the whole thing. But I don't want to drink the whole thing. Like, it's just a lot. I mean, it might taste really, really good. So, let's see. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna transfer the contents of that back into the highball glass so I can actually drink it properly. Uh, this seems tastier than dropping Baileys and whiskey into a Guinness. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's a little bit better than the Irish car bomb. Uh, oh, don't touch the Irish car bomb. Diana says don't touch the Irish car bomb. Isn't okay. it just the cheap liquor at whatever bar? No, 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 you're thinking of a citywide. Mm. Anna's thinking of what's called a citywide where you take the cheapest whiskey and the cheapest beer and you throw them into each other. Oh. Ah, seems tasty, yeah, right? Introducing Spunk in a Cup. Special thanks to Joe in the back. <laughs> bye, bye today. That's her, that's her father's name, by the way, Joe. So uh, think about that for a little moment. That's a little bit of context clues for you. Disgusting. It's supposed to be orange. I mean, the the, the thing before was orange. I mean, we're, we're trying the best that we can. I feel like if there was less coloring in the coconut water or in the coconut oil or whatever was congealed in there, it'd probably be a little bit better. Ah. Uh, Oh man, you throw cheap whiskey into a PBR and I'm here for it. Oh jeez, oh, I don't like that stuff. I've had Citywides before. That's the kind of drink that you would get at a bar if you were attempting to get as drunk as possible without cleaning out your wallet. And you'll clean out your wallet anyway. It's great. Anna's dad spunk in a cup. My God, what is this chat? It's whatever you guys make it to be. I'm not chatting, I'm just facilitating. Technically, I'm the enabler. Anyway, this is the Sumerian sunset. It looks white. A little bit of it's got a little bit of shimmeriness in into it. In it, it's like, it's like it's. I feel like it should be shimmery, or but it's not. So let's let's give it a shot. Yeah, that tastes a little. That tastes a little odd. It's okay though. Like 
So it tastes mostly like uh, consumption. Yeah, I, I consumed it. It tastes like coconut and pineapple for the most part. It tastes kind of like you took uh, coconut juice or coconut rum or whatever it is and you add a little bit of pineapple juice to it, which is not too bad. Consumption. I like it. It's okay. Do it again. It's all right. I'll, I'll chase with some water that time. But it's like, because of all the coconut, like, substance in there, it's really, really thick to go down. I need to fill up on my water cup. There we go. Get some of that. Okay, do I have to Get try some this one of too? That. Yeah, you, you can try it if you'd like to. Do I have to make faces on camera too? Uh, if you'd like to make faces on camera, you're more than welcome to. There you go. Okay, let's get my... Okay, okay. Yeah, come on over here. Come on over. Uh, I have the seltzer water on the way, so let me move that out of the way so I you can join like me behind the bar. Let's consume together! Well, I mean, I got my water, which I'm going to take a little bit of. But it tastes like pineapple and coconut a little bit. It's a little thick. Not a really big fan of that. I think the grenadine is kind of lost. But then again, it is kind of diluted because there was twice as much in the big glass as there was in the other glass for the proportions that they suggested in the middle. It's not too bad, though. I don't think. Thoughts? Concerns? Tastes like pineapple. Suggestions? And like a thicker water. Yeah. yeah. That's All right. right. All right. I, I think wouldn't like it with the actual amount. Of the grenadine kind of gets lost. Uh, I personally don't taste the rum very much, but it's Bacardi White, and does it really have a flavor to it? I don't really think it does. Oh, that stuff. Yum, yum, yum. That's probably not that bad. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So we've at least made something that isn't totally terrible. I Honestly, I think I think that Red Potion probably would have been a little bit better if not for the Campari in it. So I feel like it probably would have been more to your taste if it didn't have all that well, I just, to it. Okay, so the Amaro. This probably would be bad if you had like the full shot in there. The like full, double it. Oh, like the, the additional shot that I would have Because I don't like the taste of alcohol. I like it when it's like fruity, dulled. Apparently it's supposed to be orange, so I feel like if I add a bit more grenadine to it, it might be a little closer to what it's supposed to be. How about you just add I'm going to add a little grenadine to it and you'll probably taste it a bit well too. Uh, can you grab one of the, um, well, I guess... The, the chopsticks? I don't know where you put them. Well, they fell to the ground. Oh, there's one down there, and there's one. Yeah, we, maybe we shouldn't use the dirty socket glass. Let me try to open this up. What if we just stuff it? Oh, yeah, no, we can do that. Yeah, that, that works. Go ahead. Go ahead, stir. Cutlets. Sir, go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Now pour a little bit of grenadine in there. Or a little bit more than a little bit. It's turning like a pink ish. Here, keep going. Keep going? Uh, she says keep going. Why not? You made a lot of grenadine. I did make a lot of grenadine. I better use all this grenadine. Great. It's kind of yeah. yeah pink looks... is the new orange. <laughs> it is pink. It's, it's, it's all right. It's getting a little bit better. It still looks a little disgusting. It congealy, looks but, like. Yeah. You want more? You know what? It's probably tastes like pure grenadine now. Maybe a little bit of coconut and stuff. I'd be Let's okay try. with that. Oh yeah, it's grenadine now. It tastes like grenadine and coconut water, or coconut whatever oil. Like it? It's better. Better? Would you drink <laughs> it? Would you continue? No, because it tastes only like grenadine. <laughs> ah, okay. So no, she would not continue. Not a, not a ball. Uh, not a good. I mean, it's just sense. not my taste of like. That's okay. I mean, are are you particularly into pomegranate? I don't think I've ever asked this question to you before. I don't think I've really gone out of my way for pomegranate. <laughs> it does look like a strawberry smoothie. I totally thought that. I was trying to figure out what it looked like. Oh, you know what? Want to grab a strawberry? Grab some strawberries. We'll garnish it with a strawberry. Why the hell not? It doesn't have anything strawberry in it. We'll garnish it with a strawberry anyway. Because we make the rules. There are no rules. That's rule number one. Uh, well, I mean, there are there are rules. We'll try to remain like like couth with each other and nice and respectful as much as we possibly can. But I mean, there's there's drinks. It's cocktail hour. It's gonna get a little rowdy sometimes, you know. She's washing off the strawberries as we speak, so to speak. She has washed off the strawberries as we spoke, so to speak. I'm gonna take a strawberry. Uh, I'm gonna take the closest knife to me, which I just remembered fell to the floor. So excuse me while I go- What? Excuse me while I go searching. Eh, where's my knife at? It's knife. not in the front. It's not in the front? No. Where's the knife? Oh my god. You have a lot of findings. Here. Where's my knife? I could have sworn I dropped my knife. Okay, well that's concerning Can't for a multitude my knife. of reasons. Where's my cutting board too? It's right here. Oh, okay. Well, but where's my knife? Do you want me to just- Would you mind dropping me another knife? I have no idea where it went. Please don't leave my things. Oh, why was that? I just touched something sticky on the couch and it tasted sugary, so I guess we're good. Oh, it actually tasted like cinnamon. That was the cinnamon syrup. Mmm, it tastes good. I'm gonna take this strawberry and I'm just gonna kind of cut into it. You didn't even take off the top. Yeah, why would I? Eee, it's so pretty. 
I would put the silver in the display cabinet, but I'm gonna I'm gonna drink this one. I I, I think this is a good one to continue with for the rest of the night. This will be my reference drink. Hmm. Now it just looks like it's a candle because of that glass. It looks like a candle. It does kind of look like a candle. I'll take it. And that's our Sumerian sunset. Samari Samarian? Not Sumerian. It's not Samaria. It's Samaria. Samarian sunset. I guess that kind of works. The Samarian sunset was made with two fluid ounces of coconut water and one fluid ounce of... Excuse you, ma'am. Oh, you know what? Actually, it's dark outside now. That means I can open my window. Because the light won't from the sun won't destroy everything. Now witness the glory, the beauty of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's, uh, it's really no different than it was before. Now the aesthetic's just a little bit different. I mean, you can't really tell. You can feel like there's a little... You can kind of see a little tower in the distance. You see the light of the tower? You see the big tower? No, you really can't. That little white light? Let's see. That white light right there. That's the Comcast tower back there. I used to work there. And then they ghosted me for employment. So, whatever. I got unemployment, bitch. So thanks for that. I'll take it. It's been lovely so far. Uh, we've made three cocktails so far. We have covered how to make a uh, red potion, kuzi, and the Samarian sunset. There's plenty of more things to be doing now. I'd like to take this moment to stop and thank um, Cassandra Reed. C Cassandra Reader for putting this book together. I'd also like to thank Astro if he's out there somewhere for posting that TikTok in our channel over there, or else I would have never been able to find this drink to begin with. So I'd like to thank you for that. We all get to benefit it as a community from a, um, to, as a result of it. So this is my humble thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I also want to th ask as well, like I want to continue making more cocktails from the book, but if anybody has any requests for drinks to make, see if we can. Just weird combinations together. We've had some pretty cursed cocktails on this stream before. I once mixed iris cream and lime juice together. It was disgusting. It congealed. I put it in my mouth. I didn't drink the whole thing because that's disgusting. But that's what I subject myself to because I think it's fun and I get to learn new things. So with that in mind, um, I don't know. I guess I'll clean up. I'll do a little clean up a little bit just to make things a little more uh, manageable around here. Um, actually, it's not really that bad. I just kind of need to pull my tablecloth back a little bit. I gotta fix myself. I've requested myself to fix myself this time. And things are a little... My tablecloth has kind of fallen off. And I can't have y'all re realize that this is not actually a bar. It's actually just a milk crate with a piece of wood on top of it. With a tray table on top of it. That could fall over at any moment because of how precariously placed it is. Irish cream, whiskey, grenadine, and gin with a bit of coconut milk. Yikes. I have Irish cream. Uh, do I have whiskey back here? I have rye whiskey. I don't want to use the rye whiskey. I'll use the Irish shitty stuff. Cream? I have Irish cream. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Brady's. It's next to the uh, uh, the horchata one. one. Yeah, it's the chila. We have like 20 other creamers. What you want? That's cream. 20 other creamers? I got like, I I'm just going to use the regular Irish cream because I hate this stuff and I want to get rid of it. We've also got, it's not an option. Oh, not option. Two ounces coffee liqueur, half an ounce of whiskey, two dashes of orange bitter. Sounds wonderfully. Actually, wow, it sounds wonderful, actually. Orange bitters? Do we uh, have I have orange bitters. bitters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine first, bish. Okay, bish. Fine, bish. Irish cream, whiskey, grenadine, and gin. La, 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 la. I don't know. I need my... The end is grabbing the whiskey. I've got my grenadine. Wait, where's the whiskey? Whiskey is way in the back behind the absinthe. That's the orange bitters that you just grabbed. And any of that stuff back there, you can get the big bottle. That's bourbon whiskey. Um, the one that says black velvet on it is Canadian whiskey. It'll work just the same. It's all whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. Whiskey, 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 whiskey. I'm gonna build these guys in the glass just so I can do it faster. I'll put, I don't know, I'll put this guy in here because I feel like it'll be annoying to uh, mix a little bit later. I just came whiskey, grenadine, and gin. Was that what it was? Whiskey. I have a very bad memory. Orange bitters. Yikes. What was it again? <laughs> I missed it. Oh, should I go grab Yeah, would you mind reciting that to me again? I forgot what it was. My mind was running faster than my brain could think. My brain could realize. There's no proportions there either. So like, how am I supposed to put it together? I guess I just gotta use my imagination. Ice cream, whiskey, grenadine, and gin. With okay. A bit of coconut milk. Oh, and I need the gin as well. I don't think I have gin down here. Can you grab some gin as well? It's either blue coat or brokers. I'd go with the blue coat because uh, I mean I, I don't know. It just feels I'm right. I'm sure I'm almost out of blue coat. You gotta use my ma imagination. Yeah, we'll use it anyway. Um, it's a lot of just spirits in there. I'm just gonna do like half an ounce of each of them and see how that goes. It's a, I don't know if there's an actual recipe there that that goes with this. But usually what I wind up doing if I'm trying to figure out what a recipe is, is I'll just kind of like mix things in equal parts and adjust accordingly, unless there's like a clear base spirit, in which case I'd probably start with like an ounce and a half or like two ounces. But there's plenty of different spirits here, so I feel like the all the fun is putting it together. Uh, 
let's see half an ounce of Brady's in there that's my Irish cream it is coming out looking creamy that might be the rest of it oh my god that's the rest of it nice that's the rest of the Irish cream we did it everybody it's all gone now I can buy better stuff because I run out you have like 20 other kind of creamer things yeah but none of them are Irish cream thank god that's over with this stuff sucked in my opinion this you have Godiva? Sucked. You got Godiva uh, liqueur in there? That's the, yeah, cinnamon cream. That's the Chile's Brady's one's really good. Cream. I don't want them now. I got plenty of things. Got plenty of cream things. Let's do Minced half an ounce of whiskey as well. Minced spiced. I'm gonna do tasting notes on them because that's what we do around here. Why do you have multiple simples in here? I have plenty of different types of simples. You never know what kind of simple you may need. Simple and clean, simple and crazy, simple and simple and simple and simple. What is Simpletons. The extra dry thing in here? Eps uh, that's a uh, dry vermouth. Why do you have because there's sweet vermouth and then there's dry vermouth. They're both vermouthy. Vermouth is a lovely word. Somebody mentioned that before. You're right. It is a lovely word. I enjoy the word vermouth. I also enjoy the word moist, much to the world's uh, despair. I'm gonna add some gin in there, as per the request. Half an ounce, you're gonna go with it. Um, there was also, I know I need coconut milk in there, uh, which I still have down here. And there was one other ingredient. I need grenadine. Grenadine was the other ingredient that I need to put in there as the main fun. I'm just gonna kind of swirl it around in here. My grenadine in particular is rather uh, not very syrupy. It's very uh, liquid, so I can actually pour it out and not have problems. So that's the way I like my grenadine. And it's also more pomegranate than it is cherry. -y. I found that a lot of grenadines are like very cherry based, like like that confectionery cherry. And personally, I like pomegranate. I like pomegranate stuff instead. Although, you know, cherry cherry Coke, a little bit of cherry syrup and stuff in there, makes it beautiful. It's a beautiful combination. And then uh, coconut milk. And uh, I'm gonna pour it the weirdest way that I possibly can because we don't play by the rules around here. So let's like, I don't know. You're not gonna do it proper? I'm not gonna do the proper. I don't know what the proper way is, honestly. No, no, no. Oh, oh, yeah. Yes, that way. That's yes, the this way. way. This is the proper way? This is the proper way. A little bit of coconut milk. Here, a little dash. OMFG, how could he ever do that? He's a madman for pouring it in such a way. My goodness. Anyway, we did it, and now it's in here. And now we'll see what it tastes like all together after I swirl it around. We can't see what's in the glass because the coconut, the, the Irish cream looks like it's congealing, which is unfortunate. It's a little bit red. Uh, I don't know. Give your drink a name. I don't have a name for this one. I'm going to call it despair because it's separating in there Ugh. it smells disgusting but we're to taste it anyway bloody semen introducing bloody semen Ugh. see see the the, the, um, the irish cream has it's not curdled but it's solid and it's not mixing very well um so that's a texture thing there it tastes mostly like grenadine and a little bit of whiskey. You can taste the cream in there. Eh. It could use some workshopping. It's definitely not something for the faint of heart. I am not the faint of heart, which is why I tried it, but I'm not stupid, so I'm not going to continue with it. Now make it taste nice. Now I don't know how I can do. I don't know how I can make it taste nice. I'm out of Irish cream, so I don't know how I can make it taste nice. I mean, if I wanted to make it now, like make it taste nice now, consumption. I gotta eat the strawberry. It keeps kind of going in my mouth. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so I ate the strawberry. That's one consumption. Hmm. Then I drank that one because that one tastes nice and I like it. You know what grows on you? It's really not that bad. Not that bad. There's not a lot in there. So I feel like if somebody were to drop this right in front of you and said, this is your choice, you either take it or you're done. You can go, you can go. It bloody semen grows on you. It kinda does. It's growing on me. It's getting it's getting in all those nasty places. I keep smelling it because I feel like I'm not tasting what I'm smelling. And there's also there's also gunk all over the glass. You you can tell that's all just yeah. anyway. I'm not good. I'm gonna do it again.
I do taste the grenadine, though. That's the weird part. I taste the grenadine, and I taste the whiskey. And it's really not a bad combination. It's just the texture makes it all, like, eh. My mouth is, like, as Anna described before, like, my mouth is salivating out of, out of like, confusion, I guess? Like, fight or flight? Like, this shouldn't be in my body? I'm gonna put this over in the, um, consumption area. There we go. Let's get that. There we go. Right behind the red potion. I push myself back and use my wall. Oh! I did it. I did that. All right, well, now we're gonna try something um, completely different and potentially uh, more tasty, potentially not as tasty. I'm not sure. I'm actually, so I, I rem uh, Eric as well, Dark Techie, also posted in chat. I believe it was two ounces of coffee liqueur, one ounce of whiskey, I think, and orange bitters on top. And I'm not gonna do that, and this is, and this is why. Um, the coffee liqueur that I would use in that is something that I don't really have a lot of right now, and that seems something that actually seems like a really, really enjoyable drink. Um, it sounds, it sounds very pleasant, and I feel like it'd be good. Got any absinthe? I got absinthe, absolutely. Absolutely, I got that. But I recognize that I think that is a very, very good drink recommendation there. It sounds really nice, the, uh, the coffee liqueur, the whiskey, and the, the orange bitters. Or, uh, very, very, uh, a, a bunch of other type of, of, types of bitters that I have as well. I have plenty of other types of bitters. I got, like, sassafras bitters, I got cocoa bitters, I got grapefruit bitters, I got Pichaud's bitters, I got the orange bitters, I got the Angostura bitters. There's black currant and charred cedar bitters, which I have. I used that, uh, the other day. It smells like a cinnamon, like, like, cereal bar. It smells awesome. And we got another recommendation. One ounce of light rum, one ounce of dark rum, one ounce of banana liqueur, one ounce of blackberry brandy. I don't have any blackberry brandy, unfortunately. The type that I would have is a brand called Genifka, and I, I don't have any Genifka, unfortunately, right now, so I wouldn't be able to do that. Brandy. We do oh, not have blackberry not brandy. brandy. We have we have black raspberry liqueur, not yeah, black not like. uh, blackberry. Uh, although I do have blackberries in the fridge, though, for another recipe of ours, including with orange juice, and sour mix, and one dash of grenadine. So that seems to be uh, potentially a... Once I finally got my Genifka, that's a recommendation for another time, it seems. I'm going to move back to the cocktail book, geeky cocktail book. Uh, for something else. I have these jalapenos sitting here, and I really, really want to use it. So I'm gonna try... I, I need to find which one in here uses the jalapenos. So I gotta find that for a moment. I don't know which one it was, but it's bound to not be very pleasant. Um, it's not this one. It's not Romulan Ale. It's not... <laughs> it's not Spice Beer. Is it Spice Beer? It's not Spice Beer. <laughs> Excuse me. Spice beer looks like a good one, though. Let's see. What else have we got in here? What else? What else? I'm trying to find the jalapeno one. Where's the jalapeno one? Jala jalapeno. Three-toed sloth does not use jalapeno. It uses Kahlua and stuff like that. It's not the one I'm looking for. Where is that? That's the koozie. We already made the koozie. Where's the Dirty Wastelander uses whiskey and Coca-Cola? That's a... That's a mocktail. That's what I got the blackberries and blueberries for. It's for a mocktail. That's the Dirty Wastelander. Awesome. You actually bought those? I did, I did. We have frozen with them. Mm. We have frozen blackberries and stuff? Huh. Interesting. We should. Where's my jalapeno thing? Is it this one? No, it's not that one. So this must be up in the very beginning. I'm, just, I'm trying to figure out where this thing is. Jeez. Vodka, sake, orange juice, and dark rum. Lovely tastes. Hmm. So vodka, liquor. Sake, liquor. Orange juice, sounds nice. Dark rum. I gotta say, where's the chaser in that? It's the orange juice. I'm not a big fan of orange juice, to be honest. Unless it's, like, freshly squeezed. And I actually have no uh, freshly squeezed orange juice for any of my recipes because this book does not mention orange juice, like, at all. Which is interesting. Not from what I've been able to found, find for the things. Ha! Huh. Read a DM. I've been DM'd. I've been DM'd on the discords. Upon request, you'd like to rename the drink from Bloody Semen to Virgin's First Time. You know what? You can call it what you'd like to. It's your creation. We'll let you have that one. What's my DM? What could my DM possibly be? Where's my DM? There's no DM in there. No DM in there. You lied to me. You lied to me. In my... There's no DMs there. How do you do that? It doesn't go to you. What's that? Oh. Oh, that's a DM to the other guy. Oh, I thought it was to me. I got confused. Ah, silly, silly me. Ah, uh, where is... Ah, there it is. The, sulf the Sulfuron Slammer. I found the drink that calls for jalapenos. It doesn't actually use the jalapenos. Instead, it uses it as a garnish, which I'm going to eat, and I'm going to make my mouth on fire because that's the kind of shit that we do around here. That's a horrible idea. It's a wonderful idea because I thought of it. So I'm going to go with the Sul Sulfuron Slammer, which is from... It's a reference to the game Warcraft. I played a little bit of Warcraft 
once upon a time. I was a young boy in elementary school, and all of a sudden we got a CD in the mail, and the CD was for this game called Warcraft. And I was like, oh, mom, I wanna play this game that came in the mail. She's like, yeah, go for it. And so I put the CD into my computer. I had full access to Warcraft. It was a wonderful, well, it was a really cool game. It was one of my favorite MMORPGs of all time at the time. And I remember it differently now because I, it was like the, the wonder of my childhoodness. And I really, I've played other MMORPGs since then. And they don't really stick on me very much. I did play this one MMORPG for a while called uh, Soul Worker, which was pretty cool. We lost all our data on it. It got rebooted. I haven't really played it much recently, just because like you know, I usually play it with I usually play it with Anna. She said she'd like to play. She'd like to play, but um, I would usually play it with her and a couple other friends of ours, and we really haven't had the time to put it together right there. But um, ah, interesting. What is this quote we got going on here? Known as one of the most potent drinks out there, the zombie not only has a high alcohol content, it has an even higher sugar content, making it even more dangerous. Pineapple juice, orange juice, apricot brandy. I don't have apricot brandy. I don't have anything flavored apricot, unfortunately. Um, the, the light rum, dark rum, lime juice are all blended together while Bacardi 151 floats up on top. And if you take 151 Bacardi and you put it up on top, work after real-time strategy? World of Warcraft is an MMO. Oh, need to know. It's World of Warcraft. It's that one. I was shortening it. I didn't realize there were two separate games. Thank you for the swift correction. But so I played World of Warcraft and I liked it. And then seven days later, my computer was completely wiped because it was infected with a Trojan virus that deleted all of my files, compromised my whole network system. And that's why you don't take random USB drives, CDs or floppy disks from the mail and put them into your computer. So I learned my lesson back then. I lost all of my files. I was a very young boy. I did not have a lot of files at the time, but I was heartbroken nonetheless. It was very unfortunate to be perfectly honest. It was sad. It was very sad. But anyway, we're going to make the Sulfuron Spl Slammer from World of Warcraft. That is all. Oh my goodness there. I've got another cocktail in there too. Uh, I couldn't read the first part, but it says made with gin, Cointreau, Lillet Blanc. I don't have Lillet Blanc, unfortunately. I don't have Cointreau either. However, Cointreau can be exchanged with other orange liqueurs, and, but I, I don't want to do triple sec. That'd be terrible. Uh, and then you add absinthe in there too with some lemon. The cocktail is dangerous because of the absinthe qualities that sometimes provoke violence in drinkers or make them black out. What is up with people thinking that like absinthe causes like terrible things? So does all alcohol. I think what's making you black out and making you violent is the fact that you drank a ton, a ton of alcohol. Duh. El Presidente, there's so many recipes being thrown in chat. But I'm gonna stick back to the book this time. We'll do another request type thing another time. I really want to do some more from this geeky cocktail book. But by all means, if any of this stuff kind of gets glossed over and whatnot, throw it in the Discord channel. They throw it in the Discord chat. There's a drinks channel on there, and I get to go through all of them. So it's great. Ah, the El Presidente 2 I've actually heard of before. That's definitely in one of my other cocktail books. But we're gonna go for the Silver on Slammer. Blizzard's World of Warcraft- <laughs> Blizzard's a hot topic right now. <laughs> Blizzard's World of Warcraft is the most played MMORPG of all time. I would know. I spent most of my free time- I as in like Cassandra Reader, not me myself. I spent most of my free time in Azeroth from 2006 to 2007. There are many alcoholic consumables and wow, so many. I wanted to choose drinks that had something special going like the Silphiron Slammer. The item description says it is an extremely potent flaming alcoholic beverage. It'll knock your socks off and then set your feet on fire. Like most alcohols in World of Warcraft, this one can cause blurred vision and cockiness, but it'll also literally set you on fire. Spicy, sweet, and the color of sulfur. This drink is... <laughs> what was I saying? I'm drunk, apparently. That's what, according to the book, at least. And so that's what we're going to make. It is a cocktail that I am going to set on fire, and I'm going to make a swift adjustment to it. I wanted to find um, chili liqueur that goes into this. Uh, I don't have chili liqueur on me, so in place of that, I am actually going to use a little bit of chili foil in this drink because I want that spiciness, and so I want to feel what it's all about. Um, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> Anna Reddo, pineapple juice. Face for this? Anna, drink this one. Want to know if you should try it? Thank you. Thank you. You're awesome, dear. All recommendations can be officially found on the drink tab of the Discord. Woo! Thank you for facilitating that, dear. I'm yeah, trying. Right now. Well, actually, I'm really just. It's fine. I like cocktail spam or just tail spam or just, you know, mm, well. Anyway, Sulfur on Slammer uses, I need to shake this all in a cocktail shaker with ice cubes. I need ice cubes and I also need chili powder if you wouldn't mind. Chili, chili, chili um, chili oil. I'm using the chili oil. The garlic chili oil? Do we have any other chili oil? Garlic chili oil. I guess it's getting garlic in it too. Cause that's all we got. That's, um. It sounds concerning, right? It's, I'm, I'm concerned for my own safety. Nah, just kidding. It'll be just we fine. We really only have garlic chili oil because That's fine. Garlic. I won't be using a lot of it. So we have plenty, plenty more for kale chips and potato chips and anything else we have heart can possibly do. What's up? Your garlic, your kale chips have rosemary on them. 
Oh, cool. The kale chips that are currently in them have uh, chips, uh, to rosemary on it. That sounds awesome. Thank you for putting ice in the glass for me, dearest. It's so wonderful. I don't have to step from behind my bar. I have a lovely help around. Usually she's too busy doing work in that I room over there, but she's doing work over here. And, uh, well, I always appreciate it. Thank you so much, dear. Okie dokie. Do I want kale chips now? Are they done? Yeah, they're done. Wow, put some kale chips in there. We got a nice crunch. Crunch. Let me get a crunch there. I love the way kale chips taste. Listen to this crunch. Okay. No salt. No salt at all? No salt. It's still good tasting. I still like them. It's still very good. Usually we make the kale chips with a bunch of salt on it and oil. Put them in the oven. Bake them till hell breaks loose. Uh, this time it was just oil. Uh, rosemary oil, I think, right? Garlic rosemary? Uh, no, just rosemary. Oh, just rosemary. Just rosemary oil. Lovely. Rosemary. Want to send you some? You want to try that? Oh, uh, absolutely. Yo, go anywhere. Get kale. Uh, rip the leaves off of it. Rub them in some oil. Salt and whatever, and just throw them in your oven. Uh, I don't know what temperature. What temperature, dear? Uh, 375? Here, wait, I'll just write the... Oh, okay. And it's going to write the recipe in chat, so go for it. The Sulfur on Slammer starts itself off with two fluid ounces of a gold tequila. My gold tequila choice of the evening will be Casadores. Um, it's it's as gold as I could possibly get it. Tequila Reposado. Hecho in Mexico. I'll put that in the glass. Two ounces. It's a tequila one. Because tequila burns. And, uh, I mean, in addition, actually, they, they probably use, uh, she probably used the tequila, the reposado, because, or actually, maybe it would have been better with mezcal. If I'm correct in saying, I don't know much about tequila, but if, I, if I'm correct in saying, um, it's either reposado tequila or mezcal that, uh, I need two ounces of, two ounces of that, that, um, they take the hearts of the blue agave plant and they, like, roast them and keep them underground and stuff like that. And I've always, it sounds awesome. I love the way that smoked things taste. I have some smoked tea that I've been very into. It's called Lapsin Suchong and a Russian caravan tea, which I'm a huge fan of. I love that tea very much. It's got a smoky flavor to it. I didn't really understand smokiness until um, I tried my first like PT whiskey, uh, Lagavulin that a friend bought uh, for us while we were all hanging out. It was the most expensive liquor that I've ever had. We walked into the liquor store before heading down south for a vacation of ours, and he walked into the store and just like, my dad's got money, so I'm gonna treat you all. And surely just to show us how, metaphorically speaking, how blessed he was physically, he grabbed the 250 bottle of whiskey and bought it for us, and it's it's still down there. I could always have more if I wanted to when I go visit my buddy. But uh, it was good. It tastes, if you don't know what peat is, peat's like, they take the bog earth and like burn it and use it for fertilization purposes like 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 um like plant fertilization and it's 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 smoky it's very very smoky and it's very astringent it's smoky and it tastes kind of like it tastes and smells like varnish like like uh like a uh, varnish for like wood varnish it's very interesting tasting two fluid ounces of gold tequila i had casadores um one fluid ounce of ancho rays chili liqueur i have never tried ancho rays chili liqueur i could not find it at the store the next time I go back to Jersey, I'm probably going to check for it there because Jersey, for some reason, has all the good shit and Pennsylvania's got nothing. And that's because of the distribution system. Supposedly, I think the government of Pennsylvania has control over the distribution of alcohol in this state. And that's very confusing. And it doesn't really give you a lot of really good options, but you do what you should get. Or you go over to Delaware and Delaware's got everything and no sale tax, sales tax either. So that's how we do it around here. Um, but so I'm going to add, instead of a fluid ounce of Ancho Reyes, I don't know exactly how chili forward it is, so I'm just going to guess that it's quite a bit chili forward. So what I'm going to do is instead of that, I'm going to take basically a dash of this uh, chili oil in here. And if I find that it's not spicy enough, then I'll add some more later on. But I'll do just a little splash of that. <laughs> Delaware is tax evader's heaven. I believe it. Not that I know much about tax evasion. I'm a good little taxpayer, I promise, Mr. Government. All right, that's enough chili oil in there. I'm going to lick it. I'll lick it off the glass. Just kidding. It's spicy. It's spicy in the back. Like, it's not spicy in the tongue. It's spicy in the back of the throat. And there's a kale chips recipe that I just threw in there. Oh. Come visit when you come up here. <clears throat> sake. Oh my god. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Wow, that hit late. That chili oil. Wow, that hit very late. Actually, I'm gonna go for the coconut milk because that'll probably dull the spice faster than the milk, uh, the water can. Wow, that hit very unexpectedly. That is going to be a fun one to drink. In addition to the replacement for Ancho Reyes chili liqueur, I'm going to use um, half an ounce of amaretto. Amaretto I got down here somewhere. Uh, classic Di Sirono. I'm a 
rather I come from a rather Italian family, and my Italian family has never had any amaretto except for Di Sirono. Not sure why. I guess it's just how it is. So I got Di Sirono. Always got Di Sirono. I didn't have Di Sirono for a while, actually, because uh, I ran out. But alas, I put half an ounce in there. Half an ounce in my cocktail shaker. Ah. Law would totally come down and visit but sometime, but college, yeah, I get that. It's tough to kind of pull yourself away from stuff like that. I mean, like, you know, I'm always down for weekends, of course. I'll come up and visit you. I think uh, you're you're up north somewhere. It's a, it's a long drive. Honestly, I got a, I got a friend at least, um, or Anna's, um, Anna's got a friend who is also my friend, but roomed with Anna named Nikki who lives up in Connecticut. And uh, of course, if I went up there, I would go to Connecticut to visit her, I would go to Vermont to visit my boss and my brother, and then we'd head all the way up to Maine to get everybody else along the way. There's at least one other person who lives there as well in that northern area, but I, it might be Massachusetts, but I don't know where. Uh, anyway, Di Sirono is so nice. It's exquisite. I need two fluid ounces of pineapple juice. It's coming back, but where are you? There you are. You're on the floor. Two full ounces of pineapple juice. Pineapple juice? Pineapple juice and spicy. Doesn't feel like a combination that I want, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. This will be interesting. I feel like the pineapple's just going to, um, accentuate the spicy, the spicy this. I don't know if Serono has a nutty taste. It does. It has an awesome one. I, um, down south, they have this, uh, cookie place. Uh, it's, it's called Bird's Cookies or something. Bird spelled with a Y instead of an I. And they sell this almond shortbread cookie that literally tastes like they cooked it with amaretto in it, and it is absolutely divine. Here, Anna's actually gonna come over and show the bag to everybody. Or, we're gonna show the bag. This is Bird's Cookies. This place has awesome almond shortbread cookies, among other things as well. They also got like a scotch oatmeal, they've got a Georgia peach flavor thing. It's absolutely delicious. And I would personally recommend the almond shortbread because it tastes so much like amaretto. I remember I was in the store, they gave out free samples all the time. And I was like, I love this one. I think I like this one the best. And they're like, oh, why is that? I was like, because it smells like amaretto and I love amaretto. So they're like, yeah, it does, it does. The next thing that's gonna go um, in my glass is two to three dashes of Angostura bitters. And I've got those back here. Angostura bitters, I'm gonna do so whatever. Oh, super amazing, I love that. A do three. I can see the oils in there separating, it's great. Three dashes of my Angostura bitters in there. I'm uh, kind of running low on that, so I've got, I've got more of it up there, in case I run out. Amaretto is a good, good thing. And then, that's it. We had tequila, chili equivalent, amaretto, pineapple, and angostura. And then, um, I have, there's a special thing that I'm gonna do for that as well. Ah, Jake's gonna go get uh, drink amaretto, uh, disarono, but have have fall to mix it with. I mean, honestly, in my opinion, you don't really need to mix amaretto with anything. Uh, although it is kind of sweet. My recommendation, if you have like, if you have like water, sparkling water, or like fizzy water, just you could do something with that. I think it would taste absolutely wonderful. You could just shake it. You could also shake it too. Honestly, the people kind of, I am a part of the, I am a part of the crowd who says shaking a drink versus stirring it actually makes a difference in the taste. No matter what you do, like if you shake something up, you add air bubbles to it. When you add air bubbles to it, you add a little bit more or oxygen to it. You add a little bit more carbon dioxide. I mean, think about it this way: your Coca Cola or your soda pop is basically the water or like soda that has air put into it and it tastes different flat than it does not flat in my opinion i'm sure everybody's uh everybody's a little bit different either i are gonna hate this but disarono and coffee is nice disarono and coffee sounds awesome that's what my mother does literally all the time that's when i first learned about disarono and cocktails my mom put it would she would buy get her coffee at the at the, at the restaurant and then get like amaretto on the side and she'd mix her own things with it. my mother was a uh, um a um a uh, mixologist before me or a bartender. I would call myself more a mixologist. I've never worked in the bar, but she actually worked at a bar. Maybe I'll work at a bar one day. I don't really know yet. It's kind of up in the air. It's a, it's a diverse guess right now. And now I'm going to shake this and then I am going to do something crazy with it afterwards. Set it on fire. Maybe. Shake a shake a. Oh, that sealed. That's not making a very satisfying uh, sound, to be honest. There we go. That sounds good. What do I put it in here? I'm gonna put this in my. What do I want to put in it? I'm gonna put it in one of my not super caring about it glass because sometimes cold plus fire equals breaking breaking of glass. I don't really want to do that. You have to you have to be really careful with this stuff, dude. Imagine walking into a bar and seeing Karen with all my properly plaid party hats. Yeah, I'd be confused too. I'd probably walk out, to be honest. 
I'm not sure if that's my kind of uh, adventure. Oh, well, this is nice and cloudy. Probably from the, uh, what else went in there? Oh, the pineapple juice, I guess, right? Pineapple juice? Amaretto, too. Mm, yum, 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 yum. Yes, so this is what we're gonna do. Um, I am going to need as little light in here as possible. I may need some assistance with that, if you wouldn't mind, dearest. So what I'm gonna do now is I have made the sulfur on Slammer, and now we're gonna do the final garnish. The final garnish being, you're gonna set the shit on fire by floating some 151 rum on top of it. So you may notice, all, all of them, if possible, you may notice that the lights are going to dim a little bit because I'm gonna shit, uh, set shit on fire. But first, before all the lights go off, um, I will turn off uh, all the ones over here. Uh, Anna's gonna help me facilitate that. We'll turn off all the lights, and I'm gonna float uh, high proof rum on top of it. Specifically, I've got Bacardi 151 around here somewhere. There you are. Oh, Gosling's. Gosling's 151. Yep, all lights off if we can. There's only one more light over there. There is a little wire plugged into it. You can see right below the martini glass, uh, next to the pen, there's a little switch there. It's the, it's the button. There's a glowy button on there. So yes, that is as low as possible. Honestly, that'll probably be okay. That'll be okay. I think it'll be very visible in this light. So, uh, I'm gonna take my... 151 rum goslings and i'm going to carefully float it on top of this drink and although it's a little hard to see i've got my bar spoon here i'm gonna put it on top of this and i'm gonna very very carefully pour the 151 on top of the bar spoon which is making things fizz it's actually kind of cool it's fizzing all right It's really cool, actually. So the 151 is actually eating away at the fizz in the drink, and I, I wish I would have known that ahead of time because that would have been really awesome to catch on camera. That's really cool. Turn the light on for a second. That's really cool looking. You can't really tell, though. It's kind of like... It's kind of it's kind of going away. So, whoa, that's really bright. I'm going to have to adjust that later. But the fizz is being eaten away by the 151. Anyway, okay, okay. Lights off again. I can see the float on top. And I set, set shit on fire. Let's go. Oh, you turned it off and on again. Silly, silly. It's okay. And then click the button. And I have a propane torch back here just for the occasion. So that's what we're going to do. And now, don't try this at home. Unless you know what you're doing. Uh, I've done this multiple times before. I'm not a seasoned professional, but I know what I'm doing. That is my glass. It's on fire. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, you can see that. That's on fire, all right. Blue fire! Fire! I'm not going to pick it up. I'm also not going to drink it while it's on fire. Eventually, it will burn away all the alcohol, but honestly, I don't want shit all over the floor, so. Let me blow it up. Ta-da! I did it. Do it again. Do it again. There's still more in there. There's plenty of alcohol in there. It's great. All right. And it's actually simmer. It's actually simmering probably because of that chili oil. The chili oil is actually giving it a red effect, too. That's really cool looking. That's very, very cool. It's actually, it's actually bubbling with the chili oil, which is incredible. And now that it's been extinguished, now we can try it. It's cool, though. Cool to begin with, though. Liking that. Awesome, awesome. I also need to adjust my light over here. Okay, that got way too bright. Let me adjust that. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Ah. There we go, there we go, there we go. All right, let's go to my light effects app so I can drew that down. Anna tries this, too. Absolutely, she gets to try this. She wants to. Let's turn that down a little bit. There we go. Now that's not blinding my face anymore. That's perfect. I like that. Sounds Gucci then. I'm gonna put my chili oil back on the ground. Anna, would you like to try this? Uh, sure. Let me just finish this one. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna mix the rest of this uh 151 into there. So uh, it was cool though, because I want the full experience. The le the the oil is probably sitting on top as well, which is why it was kind of spickling and sparkling and stuff like that, and kind of going whizza. So I want to get that all associated in there, so we can see what it sounds like. By the way, I was not stirring it properly, but there's no ice in the glass, so it doesn't really matter, to be honest. Let's see how that tastes. We're gonna let her try it first. Why? Because I know it tastes bad. What do you mean, you know it tastes it bad? It also smells wonderful in here! I don't smell anything. Oh, no, I smell something. Yeah, you smell it over here, right? Go ahead, take a sip. Go for it. How do you know it tastes bad? Because mm, I tried it. On the bar spoon? I don't think it tastes very good. Shut the... Yeah. It smells like chili. It kind of smells like caramel. Oh my god, it's hot. It's hot? Well, yeah. You gotta be careful. Oh, uh, you know what? You want a, you want a straw? Oh, we have... Yeah, because the yeah, uh, glass gold, is completely yeah. hot. Here's a golden straw. I forgot about that. Fire make things hot. What is it? What do you taste like? Ooh. 
whatever the main uh, alcohol is and chili. That's what it tastes like. Uh, that was tequila. It was tequila. You got it. It's the tequila drink again. We got it. I don't it. like tequila. Neither do I, for the most part. But so it, it tastes like taste. tequila and chili. Like so tequila. if I liked tequila, it'd be fine. If not, like it just it tastes like. It's very hot on top and very cool on the bottom. So I'm gonna it's let that gonna let that sit. I am not gonna take that over to the display area because if the glass does break, that's just asking for way not, too many issues. That's just not that's, that's issues. I'm gonna try it too. Go for it. Thanks for trying, it, dear. Yeah, if you like chili, it's fine. You like chili and you like tequila, then I guess it's all right. Let's give that a shot. The um, Sulfuron Slammer, uh, using two ounces of golden tequila. I used Casadores, a one fluid ounce of Ancho Reyes. I substituted for chili oil, half a fluid ounce of Amaretto. I used Di Sirono, two fluid ounces of pineapple juice. I used Dole's, I guess. Uh, two to three dashes of, dashes of Angostura bitters. I used Angostura. And then two to three ice cubes. I used my own. Yeah, it's like, so, I taste the tequila, I taste the chili oil. The chili oil is very, uh, it's very, um, it's prominent. Consumption. It's very prominent in there. Um, it's very, very chili-esque, so I definitely put enough in there. There's no need to add any more chili oil to that. In addition, it tastes like pineapple. I really get a lot of pineapple coming from this. And, um, that mixes actually very, very well with the tequila in there. I can't really tell uh the piece of part the tequila but i just happen to know it's in there um i for one as well might be getting a bit of a burn from the 151 rum that i put in there uh oh yeah uh, an additional ingredient if you want to set it on fire i use 151 rum i used gosling's black and so it was really really cool looking it's uh it's okay tasting it's really not really my cup of tea um because there's just not it's it's not really very it, it's very one note in my opinion it's like, oh, you know what, no, 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 no. I, I take that back completely, actually. There is a sweetness. I taste the sweetness. That's probably coming from the pineapple juice and the amaretto, possibly, too. I forgot there was amaretto in here. Uh, the spice is... You know what? I'm gonna actually... I'm gonna say that I like this. I do like this because it's it's complex. It's great. I keep saying Angostura, so you'll throw out the weirdest drink that, with, will drink that you drink on the regular, more than awesome. One egg white, three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice, one and a half ounces of Angostura bitters, and one ounce of simple syrup. That sounds lovely. I've, I've heard of that before. What is that called? Is that the Trinidad Sour, perhaps? I may know that drink because I've seen at least one time where you use Angostura, Angostura Sour. Okay, Angostura Sour. Trinidad Sour is similar, but it's got something different. I, I, I can't remember. That's probably got rum in it, too. I realize now that I think about it. Probably Trinidad rum. But uh, Trinidad has Orjat. By the way, do you think... Because I don't really know my shelf. Do you think it's Orjat? Or Orjo. I say Orjo because that's the way I heard it the first time. However, I don't really know. I don't know what the proper way is. And it also has Ryan in it as well. But that sounds that sounds really good. That doesn't sound weird at all, honestly. Or or I think Orjot. All right, I'll take it. I've got at least one person in my life who says one and one person in my life who says another. So I guess it's just whatever I'm feeling at the time. I think Orjo sounds very, well, almost French a little bit. Orjo, it's very like, uh, hmm, how you say, lovely. Or shot kind of sounds like, ah, or shot, put some or shot in your drink. I don't know. I guess it depends on how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling a little, or, or zat, or zat, or I'm, I'm getting ja, ja, like a ja, or zat, or zat. Hey, I don't know about that. Anyway, honestly, this is wonderfully complex. I enjoy this. And maybe it's because it was modified. That's why. But I, I still want to find my Ancho Reyes chili liqueur because there's at least another drink in, in this book. That calls for that specifically. Oh, and I almost completely forgot. We're supposed to garnish this with some jalapeno slices. You almost forgot the I jalapeno. almost forgot the jalapenos. I almost forgot. How could I do it? <laughs> More than also ruined the countertops in the latest apartment because he spilled some Trinidad sour on them. Eesh. Ouch. And they were staying five ever. I, um, let's see. What have I recently stained my floor with? Um, there's something white down there. It wasn't the coconut milk. It wasn't the coconut milk. I don't remember what it was, but it got on the floor. I don't remember what it was. I'm pretty sure it was the coconut milk. Was it the coconut milk? No, it was there already. Oh, that was um when I did the pinata. Oh, and I made some paper mache. She was doing some paper mache and stay on the floor. I'm gonna take a uh, jalapeno and I'm just gonna cut it into some slices and I'm gonna eat at least one of them. There's one slice. You're gonna eat a jalapeno. Jalapeno. There's another one. Honestly, I'm glad I have 
jalapenos. I, I wish um, I got... Actually, I'm really happy that we have consumption. I'm really happy. Um, I'm really happy that um, there's, a, there's a farmer's market that uh, goes on uh, over near the penitentiary up here. And we went there the other day and I got these jalapenos there uh, at the um, at the, the farmer's market. And it was lovely. And I, I really, really like it. And they're good uh, jalapenos too. Another consumption, my goodness. Cameron, you're gonna have fun. There's a lot of drinks in the drink chat. There's a lot of drinks in the chat. Sweet. I gotta add them all to my collection later. Oh, uh, somebody else did something up there, but it's gone completely away. Uh, it's all gone now. I cannot see it Where no more. Where did you that's put fine. the virgins first time? Where did I put the virgins first time? Oh, that's over in the, the display thing up, up there. It's uh, right next to the red potion, uh, the thing in the glass um, here. That's where it is. It's uh, it's the one all the way on the left. It's the one all the way on the left. At the, I, I have some, uh, I have some key combinations. I have some key combinations for OBS to work properly, and apparently Control S doesn't really work with a, a web page. It's unfortunate. Looks disgusting, as expected. <laughs> Naturally, sounds terrible. I'm gonna fill myself up on water over here, and uh, and then I'll garnish with my uh, jalapenos. Jalalalalalalapenos. Can I say that? That sounds disrespectful. Meatball girl says she'll transfer the drinks from our Google Doc to the chat too. Oh, please, by all means. I know, I know uh, the Meatball girls who I chat a lot of cocktail stuff with. I've also got one other friend who I'm uh, constantly talking uh, chat, uh, talking stuff with. Dalukare pops out every once in a while and comes by, and that's where I got my lovely. Uh, that's the, the, I was actually she who uh, gifted me this Old Forester rye whiskey because we were watching Dune and we watched Dune. We thought about the spice needing to flow, and rye whiskey has a bit of a spice to it, so it's great. It's mostly brainstorming on the dock. That's totally fine. Brainstorming is exactly how new cocktails come to life. It's 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 kind of cool to think that uh, we kind of got a chat there. That is where ideas get to blossom. Oh, uh, seed of the jalapeno, jalapeno just flew its way onto my couch. So uh, there's that. Uh, I hope nobody sits on that because that would be a rude awakening for everybody. What did you do on the couch? There's a jalapeno seed on the couch. Sorry about that. And what am I supposed to garnish this with? It says suggested garnish effect jalapeno peppers. Like, what am I supposed to do with them? Put them on the side? Hey, you know what? let's do that. Let's put them on the side. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut into these that way, a little slit, just so I can put them on the side of my glass, which is probably very hot, so that's fine. There's a just the jelly I'm gonna cut through. I'm gonna cut through the um, the fleshy part, so that there's as much uh, wall on either side, so the jalapenos don't uh, disappear. Uh, you can also bloody marry it and just cut a little. Si <laughs> Cut a little slit in the whole jalapeno and have it sitting tall and proud on the glass itself. I love that idea. Have a, I've never, I've always wanted to go to uh, a Bloody Mary place that garnishes their Bloody Marys literally out of control. I've heard stories of entire onions on top of Bloody Marys or, or, or Gibson's. I think Gibson's is usually what that happens or cocktail onions, but like entire cheeseburgers on top of Bloody Marys. It just sounds so great. Or sliders, exactly. Like they're cheeseburgers. It's great. And this is our, this is our, um, this is our Sumer so sulfur sulfuron sulfuron slammer, and I'm gonna even keep I'm gonna keep uh, a bit of the um, the actual jalapeno tip on it too, if I can. So I'm gonna cut through that just a little bit, just enough that I can put it on like this. If I can, I should not be touching my eyes at all. I will die. It will be sad. And that's my. Uh, this is actually looks really really good. Speaking of Dune, did I know that uh, RTS's MOBA, uh, so real-time strategies, multiplayer online battle arenas, and massive multiplayer onlines all branch back to the first movie of it? Really? I, I believe it. I watched the first movie. It's great. I need to watch the second one as well. So I'm going to put this one. I'm really proud of the way this one got garnished. So I'm going to put this on display over there. So let's go for it. The Sulfur on Slammer looking, looking like an absolute snack there. Um, I don't need the straw in there anymore. Ugh, my... It's like, it's ugh in a good way. Ugh in a, in a complex way. I like have to tiptoe around all of my things over here because there's a lot of shit on the floor. It's your fault. It's totally my fault. You're absolutely right. Okay, also, the floor good. the floor seems wet, honestly. Oh! Ooh. Here I go, here I go, here I go, here I go. Ah. Let's move. Let's move the, uh, oh, this is not really, um, not really, uh, sparking anymore. Cool looking, huh? I like it. I like it. 
really careful with that. I would not want that on the edge. Jump to the side, I've got them stacked in the back. Let's put this guy on the screen. Right over here. Yes. I'd also like to, uh, uh, if anybody has recommendations for how like the lighting could be better over here, like I'd appreciate it. I'm always trying to figure out new things. I feel like one of the things that I wanted to accomplish this time during the cocktail stream was I really didn't have a convenient way of displaying the cocktails after they were done. Because some of them, like, I, I want to be able to remember what's on there and have, like, you know, nice thumbnail for later, you know? Go down there and grab a chopstick. And then, boop, come back over here and uh, click on click on my buttons. Ah, and I would love Weatherspoon's cocktail in the UK. What's in it? How strong does the alcohol come through? I'm sure it probably does, but we shall see. We shall see indeed. Actually, I've been putting a lot of, like, my, my used stuff in this bin over here. So I'm going to throw, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup as well, just so that the next time I go over there, it'll be easy. Anna, you mentioned somewhere in the book, you saw something that used a mint branch or a mint, mint leaves as a garnish. Do you remember which one that was? Yeah, absolutely. I want to see that because I have my, I have a little mint branch. I have a, I have my plants over there on the other windowsill and uh, I've got uh, Piermo, the parsley. I've got Menthol Man, the mint plant. And I also have um, Bob, the barley and dropped. And, and drought, sorry. And that's got mint leaves, pure maple syrup, uh, fresh lemon juice, drop of an almond extract, and chilled, lightly brewed green tea. Would you mind putting some tea on? Green tea specifically, if that's okay. Am I making it in the microwave or on the water? No, panel, you're gonna or? get hot water from the Keurig and put it in a cup, because I forgot that this was a thing and I would have brewed it ahead of time, but I didn't. Uh, the people who com play Command and Conquer, uh, let's see, Conquer's the first product was Dune RTS, which is basically just a more primitive version of the first game. More than awesome says one of the first adventure strategy story games that you, know, you played was which the 1992 Dune game. Uh, which one's green tea? The one that says green? There's a box of green tea next to the Keurig. It's underneath the black tea. We'll, we'll just use that one. Uh, and absolutely could not beat it for that original uh, RTS game. Honestly, I need to play, play, play more stuff like that. I'd love to try that. I didn't realize it was so like uh, influential to all the other ones. So maybe that's something I'll do a one-off thing of sometime if somebody reminds me down the line. That'd be pretty cool. I'm going to take my cutting board and put, take this and put this back over here. I'm so happy I got to use those jalapenos. I want to use this mint too. Tea? What's that? No, no, no. There's a big box underneath the, the oh, box. Yeah, the, the, big, the big one. Big one. I got a whole thing of that stuff over there. Backups. And a whole, whole shing back there. Oh, it's great. Water. We're also, uh, want you to add water, that's okay. There was also something over here, how long? Oh, okay, that was never answered. Ah, man. So what was that? It was the 1992 Dune RTS? That sounds pretty cool. The next cocktail that I'm gonna make here is actually not a cocktail at all. It's a mocktail, and it's called Ent Drought. Ent, uh, as, as in the creatures from the Lord of the Rings, and which is this drink is inspired by. Um, Ent Drought, Drought. Uh, this beverage makes its first appearance in the second book of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, The Two Towers. As fans will know, the Ents were ancient tree people of Middle-earth dwelling in Fangorn Forest. Merry and Pippin uh, spend a lot of time in the, fa in the Fangorn Forest after escaping Saruman's clutches, and there they make friends with Treebeard, the eldest of the Ents. During their time in Treebeard's house, Merry and Pippin are given the drink of the Ents. The, en the, the drought gives the hobbits the feeling of being refreshed from the tips of their toes up to the ends of the hairs on their heads and makes Merry and Pippin grow quite a few inches taller than an average hobbit size. The flavor of the drink is supposed to be light as the drink is described as being like water but has a taste that reminds the hobbits of the smell of wood from a distance carried by a cool breeze or something like that. For this, uh, Cassandra used plant-based ingredients with bright earthy leafy flavors and sweetened the drink with tree sap, maple syrup, making this invigorating beverage so quick and simple you'll be done Long before Treebird can say, and drop. There's something else in there too. What's going on? It's all about Keurigs. Hey, you can play the first Doom every now and again. I think you can always play it on newer, newer Keurigs. Nice. People are always hacking it into stuff. I love the um, It Runs Dune subreddit. Um, that one always gives me a laugh, especially seeing like the Dune running on like the big refrigerators. We got like, they do loads, loads of different, oh, the, I believe you've got an answer to your question, Anna, for the, um, uh, the Weatherspoon. Was it the Weatherspoon cocktail? Yeah. I think it was. Weatherspoon. Don't release their recipe. They don't usually release their recipes, but they're close to these. Purple Rain, fill a jug three quarters full with ice and add 50 milliliters of cherry sours. I think 50 milliliters is about an ounce and a half for us. Um, ooh, where was that? Where was it? Purple Rain, uh, ice, and add cherry sours. Uh, 50 milliliters of blue curacao, pour enough lemonade in to cover the ice cubes and then give it a mix and serve. Ultraviolet recipes, fill your jug three quarters with full of ice, add uh, 100 mLs of Parma Violet Gin. I think we've got our, our Violet Gin around here is, uh, I believe, Empress Gin that comes in a very purple color. Uh, the J.J. Whitley 
That one is probably the most widely available, topped with two cans of Monster Ultra, the one with the white can, mix and serve. Uh, remember Colin harassing the, harassing the crap out of a local game store in the early 90s just to get the cheat codes, my god. Back in the days of like, I remember having like cheat code books. It's great. It's great. Oh, uh, Doom, not Doom. Eh, I think of Doom anyway. And there's a couple other cocktails in there too, but I gotta get back to the, the bottom of the chat. Also like four bottles of Empress. Yo, I, I need more. I, I've never actually used Empress in a cocktail, but like, I love the physics that goes on there. There, you can make the Empress Gin current colors with pH indicators. It looks so cool. I've always wanted to do that. But Empress Gin is a little on the—it's a little on the spencier side, and I don't really have the budget for that right now. I grab the ingredients that I know I'll need, and if one of my cocktails specifically called for something like that, I totally would. I think the tea is probably almost done being made, so I am going to go go get them with this little thing. In a serving glass, I'm gonna muddle the mint leaves in the maple syrup using a muddler or a wooden spoon, add lemon juice, almond extract to the muddled mint, pour the green tea into a serving glass, and stir to com com do combined. Sounds lovely. What I'm actually gonna do is when that tea comes out, I'm gonna put that in my shaker, I'm gonna mix it with ice to chill it down a bit because it's supposed to be chilled and it's hot right now, so we're just gonna make it chilled as well. Uh, drunk, uh, more than awesome has drunk a lot of Empress and a lot of Gin Mare. I have not had either of them, unfortunately, but I'm sure that uh, I've seen Empress Gin at the stores over here. I've never seen uh, Gin Mare, unfortunately. But I'm gonna go with this Ent Draft and I'll prepare my ingredients in my glass as swiftly and carefully as I possibly can. So I need my serving glass. There's one hanging over here by my microphone. And then I'm gonna grab. Gin Mare is super basil heavy, really. Ah, oh, man, I was actually, I, I tried to wonder to myself what kind of cocktails would use basil in them because I have, I got the basil plant over there as well and I want to find more recipes that use like a basil, I've never had a reason to make a basil syrup. I've made a mint syrup before, it's in the fridge, lovely, it goes great in coffee, but I've never had the need to make like a basil syrup because I don't know any recipes that use it, but I would love to. Basil Gimlet is a classic cocktail, sounds wonderful. North Carolina also has governmental control states, so you gotta travel to get it. Yeah, that sounds fun yeah i got I, I luckily my parents live in new jersey so go back there jake also mentioned smirnoff vodka cranberry juice lemonade and lime pretty basic yeah yeah yeah. that's uh, basically uh vodka cranberry yeah. uh with a little bit of extra citrus to it that sounds lovely uh i, I like vodka cranberries they're very tasty very tasty so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take 10 mint leaves uh in my little basket before you might have noticed a mint sprig which i pulled off of my plant about two minutes actually during the just starting part of the stream so i'm gonna take that and i'm gonna take 10 leaves off. Honestly, I'm not going to wind up using the rest of these leaves, so I'm just going to take all the leaves off of it and muddle in my glass. It'll make it a very, very minty type of thing. Do you want your muddler bag? Oh, I have my muddler, actually. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the tea. It should be done, but I left the tea bag in. No, that's okay. Keep the tea bag in there, and by the time that I actually get to uh, shaking it up and doing good things with it, it'll probably be just fine. I'm going to throw all those in there. Yeah, but Anna very much likes sweet drinks. Uh, anytime we would usually go out for um, like uh, parties and or stuff like, like sweet, that. Weak sweet and weak. You can't tell where the alcohol is because we didn't want you to find it. That's basically it. Yeah. That sounds weird. Actually, I take that sounds really weird. I take that back. No, it sounds accurate. Sounds accurate. Well, that's it. I, I bet about half this. It's, this is a pretty uh, heap and mint sprig. Sorry, uh, menthol man. Didn't mean to. To, to, to kill you like that. You know, you know we got this thing. <laughs> it's gonna die eventually. <laughs> I'll put that in there. And I'm gonna muddle together. I'm just gonna muddle my mint leaves in there. Personally, in my opinion, I love the way that mint smells when you smack it, when you express it. And it, well, basically all I do is I take the mint leaf and I just, I smack it real good. And it smells just lovely. It smells so good. I love the way that that smells. That's why I got my mint planted originally. Um, in that glass, I will also add a fluid, uh, a single fluid ounce of pure maple syrup. I don't have maple syrup actually over here. Oh. There's maple syrup in the fridge, right? Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. That. That's okay. No, no problem. Thank you though. Thank you so much, dear. Uh, we did the same smack of the basil leaf on top of the basic basil gimlet. Nice. I actually, I just recently repotted all of my plants over there, and it's interesting because I, I, I repotted. I used to pot with um this this coconut husk uh, soil called Quar, C-O-I-R, and now, and I ran out of it, I couldn't find it anywhere, so now I decided to put some miracle Grow in it, and ever since I put miracle Grow in that thing over there, my basil leaves are like half the size of my hand, they're like this big, and I'm like, dude, Bob, what are you doing? You must really be enjoying all that stuff. And anyway, I will take a uh, half an ounce of maple syrup, which will go in there, or, I'm sorry, full ounce, full ounce of maple syrup. Now, anytime you serve something like this with something really, really syrupy like this, I, I mostly worry with honey, because honey is really, really, really viscous, usually a lot more viscous than I found maple syrup to be. 
And so you'll find that it's a little hard to keep all the ingredients mixed in the cocktail glass because it's incredibly viscous, it separates, and you really don't get it as a part of the drink. So anytime that I use honey in a cocktail, you just kind of take the honey, mix it with equal parts water, kind of heat that up a little bit, and then cool it back down, and you've basically got honey syrup. It's just watered down honey, and it pours a lot uh, nicer than the others. I also need my muddler. I should have muddled before I did anything else, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm gonna take my thing, I'm muddle it with my muddler. This particular muddler was advertised, I was walking through the store and they advertised a garlic beater or whatever. And I was like, that's it's a muddler. A garlic mincer. It's a garlic mincer. They're like, what do I buy a garlic mincer? And this is literally a muddler. Like, no, it's not. It's a garlic mincer. Like it's a muddler. So don't even at me. And basically to muddle, we just take our little muddler and just like squish things up like as much as we possibly can. I'm not trying to do it off the table because my table is very, very wobbly. It's not very stable over here. Ooh. It smells lovely. I feel like I should put more in this. Actually, I'm gonna stand that upright. <laughs> it actually stays, that's great. I'll add more mint in there. I want it nice and minty. I think that sounds lovely. Uh, but I think that's wonderful, wonderful. And Disney Queen, AKA the one across the room. Ooh, okay, every, oh, things almost fell, but I caught it. <laughs> I almost broke things. Was commenting about really don't like in the gin. Can't really taste it. Eh, it me, gin, gins can be hidden a little bit. It's not as neutral as vodka, obviously. But you know, Meepo Girl's asking, what kind of sake do you like, Anna? Anna, what kind of sake do you like? I know we both like, we love plum sake. I know, that's a kind plum, of a personal plums, favorite. It's not plum sake. It's technically plum wine, yeah. It's plum wine that we like. We like plum wine, but plum sometimes they call it plum sake. Is uh, I think we've had uh, we've had plum sake before. Uh, we got it from Disney World, and I've seen it in many different shops. So now I've got muddled mints in here. It smells. Oh, it smells so good in there. Oh, you can see the juniper notes getting in the way, really standing out. If you don't like it, it's weird, you know. Every single time, basically, when I first started mixing cocktails, people would always say things like, "Oh, you know, depending on the co the qualities of the drink." you're gonna find it expressing certain flavors and certain notes. And I love that about, that's one of the things that I really, really love about mixology is the fact that sometimes if you're really looking in the right place, you can find all the subtle notes in there. I've never had juniper before, not really. So I don't technically know what it tastes like. Like if you were to tell me gin tastes like juniper, I'd say, yeah, because gin tastes like gin to me and I don't know anything else that I've ever ha had that tastes the way that gin does. So it's probably the juniper. So uh, what I try to do is I try to seek out these things that I don't know the flavors of, like those base spirits. And then I try to taste them and try to figure out like, like add to my flavor library, like like what things actually taste like. And it's great. I, I've always loved to do that. What do we got here as well? Basically just, ooh, so it was more of their uh, looking through chat again. Sake is just rice wine. So, you know, somewhere in the back of the cabinet, we've got some homemade limoncello. Ooh. I always wanted to make some limoncello. I got a recipe somewhere for limoncello somewhere. It's basically just Everclear lemons and sugar. I've got Everclear specifically for infusion purposes. I haven't actually used the Everclear for anything yet, but I plan to. Ah, oh, Live Duck says hi. Hi, Live Duck, you're back. Nice. Drink a crap ton of gin and we'll tell you, tell you, tell me, tell that, that I've yet had licorice gin or cucumber gin or whatever gin. That's cool. I like, I like, I like to have the gins that are supposedly more juniper forward because I just don't exactly know what juniper tastes like yet, but eventually I'll figure it out. Once upon a time, somebody told me that this something tastes like cardamom and then I found cardamom in the store and I got it, I put it on my tongue and I was like, oh, that's what cardamom tastes like. Oh, I've learned my lesson. There's like what, three different types of sake we've tried that are different prices? Three different types of sake. We've had uh, different different types of uh, sake before. Um, I can't remember which which, but I, I know, know I Junmai the is the one over here. I, I used to know the names and I completely forgot them, but I think it determines like the Jinmai. quality of the, that's a Junmai as well. So, so is this one. So it wasn't one. Jinmai. There's Junmai, there's Gekai Khan, and so, Soju, Soju as well, or Soju. I think Soju is plum that wine. It's That's plum right, uh, sake, okay, I'm pretty so sure. Okay, so it's the other one. I don't know. It's one of the other two then that I like. More was it the, the tiny container? Did you like that one? That's the, the that's the Gekai Khan. Yeah, so that's my G favorite uh, Gekai Khan, Geki Khan, I think. I can't find it though. Yeah. Juniper is uh, kind of similar to pine. I definitely, I can definitely say that the gin, at least the gins that I've got are very pine-y. So I suppose that's probably the juniper that I'm tasting there, which is pretty cool. And it probably won't like the gin drinks basically because they kind of taste like a Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah. And the juniperiness to it as well. And there was another cocktail thrown in chat as well. Also, I just noticed my, um, my drink over here has separated, so I need to stir that up. The separation has occurred probably because of that coconut juice in there, coconut oil, whatever. One part melon liqueur, one part gold rum. One part orange juice, sounds lovely. I personally love anything with melon liqueur in it. Midori is a wonderfully sinful uh, libation. 
sounds nice. Uh, so I need, um, in addition for the ant drought that we got here, I need to add uh, a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice, a uh, muddle the mint leaves and the maple syrup using a muddler or a wooden spoon. I add the lemon juice and the almond extract, just a drop of almond extract. So let's take, I was at one teaspoon of fresh lemon juice. I wonder if there's any left in this thing. I still have that lemon from before. I don't know how much is left for uh, the purposes of lemon juicing, lemon in the juicing. Well, let's see. I'm gonna try to, uh, that's kind of a piece of a lemon. So I'm gonna scoop that in there. I'm gonna get my other lemon out. Remember, I cut a whole lemon before. There's still more juices. And as from personal recommendation, I think I'm actually gonna try to do this on the side of the table and hopefully not make a mess. We'll see if I make a mess over here. I do sometimes. I do, I do. Let's see if I can just shoot, shoot some juice out of this. Yeah! Looks pretty well. I feel like I'm gonna completely break this table, though, if I keep doing shit like this. Eh. Alright, that's a teaspoon! Oh, it's the teaspoon's kinda getting on the floor, but there it goes, there it goes, no! There we go. Right in there. Nice! Very, very good, then. That's all in there. And then I'll throw my... Squee squeezy, juicy, juicy. Oh, and I gotta clean the floor too because I got lemon juice on the floor. <laughs> Excuse me while I go downstairs for a moment. I'm like cleaning up from down here. Clean up the floor, clean up the everything. Can't wait to clean this tomorrow morning. That's okay. I don't got any place to be except for three. Actually, we gotta get out of here early because we got. I'm visiting some family tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. It's great. Dude, it's been hours. It's only been like three hours. How am I still hyper? I. I'd say it probably spawns back in the days of my youth. Back in, uh, you know, let me grab a cocktail for this. I think it comes back from the days of my youth, to be honest. Back in middle school, it wasn't a very fun time for me. I was very bullied when I was younger. And back then, I was bullied for being small. I was bullied for being thin. I was bullied for a variety of different reasons. And among all things, I was bullied for being hyper. So you know what happened to me when somebody decided to bully me? One, I grew a backbone. Two, I started developing my personality and wit and decided to get even more hyper because if somebody's gonna get pissed off at me for being hyper in my own personality, then they can go fuck themselves. And so that was my motto since middle school. And since then, I like to think that everybody in this world deserves a little bit of smiles, a little bit of laughs sometimes. And if I can be that hyper to kind of have somebody take home at the end of the day, like, yo, I just saw this weirdo on the street. It was really, he was smiling. Why was he? Why was he being so hyper all of a sudden? Why, why hyper all the time? I don't know. It's probably ingrained in my brain somewhere as like a, like a, uh, from childhood trauma, I suppose. But it works out in my favor, I suppose. I enjoy myself. I think it's fun. And from what I can tell, people enjoy it. So that's, okay. that's why I, I keep it up. We have people across the pond. Is it weird when people just smile at strangers on the street? Is that like a thing that doesn't happen anywhere besides the United States? Yeah, I guess people across the pond, that's the question. Can you? Is, is it weird to look at other people and smile? Because like, I give everyone direct <laughs> eye contact and smile at everyone on the street. I like to smile at people, it seems right. I need to add a drop of almond extract to this. But uh, yeah, it seems like, seems like I'm kind of enjoying life. Well, you know, among other things, we've all got our problems. We've all got our thoughts on lives. And uh, every once in a while, I come on stream. For the most part, I usually play video games because I can't always set this cocktail thing up. I have a very limited space in my apartment, so this is like a special thing every once in a while. But I'm constantly talking about my thoughts on life and stuff like that. Because, like, I, I don't know. It's kind of it, it's kind of feels nice to be able to, like, video blog like that. Oh, this is, there is a contain there is a thing on this almond extract, and I need to remove it. Eee, it's still closed. Whoops. I never unwrapped my almond extract. Whoopsie. Uh, it does happen a lot in public places in the U.S. as well. I mean, I smile at people, you know, we smile at people. Actually, I try to avoid contact at all possible times. Just because, like, I don't want somebody to, like... Le like, the last time I made significant eye contact with somebody on the street, they told me to give them $50, and I said no, and then walked into the IHOP, and they walked away. That was the last time someone I made prolonged eye contact with a stranger on the street, and it was very uncomfortable for everybody involved. It was great. It was wonderful. Uh, but yeah, although uh, more than often, is the kind of person who will travel for work and sit at the bar in a restaurant and chat the crap out of a stranger. I, I have a little bit of, I, I it, it may not seem like it, but I have a bit of social anxiety to be honest. It's not like diagnosed or anything. It's just like I, I, I would not walk out to a location because I feel I might not be able to make conversation or I have no interest in the people around there. And I would call that social anxiety, not in a clinical way. But so I don't usually go out to my my thought is like, I don't usually go out to the bars because like I can just pick my cocktails at home. But uh. But F that, so his theory gets it, right? No, but like, you know, I, 
I think the bar is fine. I, 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 don't, I don't usually go to the bar unless it's like a social type of event, or, or there's a particular location that I know has something that I want, like a cocktail recipe that I really, really gotta try. And there are a couple, like, at least from what I see in the cocktail world, there are some bars that, like, invented cocktails, and I want to be able to go to those places and see what it's all about and see, like, where the magic happens, because it just sounds like it feels touristy to me. It's like when you're like, oh, I want to go to the beer factory because I want to I want to know where my favorite beers are, or I want to go see, like, uh, the, where Swarovski crystals were first started over in whatever country it is. I've been there before. It was, it was pretty cool. They got some pretty cool stuff over there. Wait, when are you going to take me? When am I going to take you overseas? Yeah. I don't know. Damn. It'd be great. Also been to a beer factory. I've never actually been to a beer factory, but I've always wanted to. Actually, actually, no, just kidding. Just kidding. What am I talking about? I have been to a beer factory. By the way, I'm adding basically an eighth of a teaspoon of almond extract in there. It smells like almonds. Who knew? Like potently almond. Um, but yeah, actually right here in Philadelphia, we have, um, we have the Yards Brewery and I've been there. I've been there before, um, at my previous position, one of our, um, one of our meetings, uh, that was what we went, that was where we went afterwards. And it was a lovely time. We took a whole, um, tour of the facility and it was lovely. Also too, like I took back in, back in college, I took a, uh, a, a class on cocktails or I'm sorry, not cocktails. I took a class on beer and I took a class on wine and my professor at the time consumption, it would, it would tell me, it would always tell me, like, anytime, anywhere you go, try to get a taste of the land. Try to see what the terroirs are about, all about. If there's a winery in a place that you're going to, or there's local, be uh, like a local microbrewery or something like that, give it a shot. You never know what kind of things you might, uh, what things you might find, what flavors you might get. And uh, it kind of broadens your horizon. I personally love that, that motto. And pretty much wherever I go, I try to get something local from the area. So I like that. Oh, we're doing side leg lifts again. Well, this is unfortunate. I have all these bottles around, but uh, let's do the hard side first on the couch, and hopefully I don't get my feet in my burrito. Uh, let's do that. Um, I also need to add, I added my almond extract and chilled, lightly brewed green tea. Well, it's not lightly brewed anymore because it's a bit of tea bag in there, and I've been talking for God knows how long about the same fucking thing over and over again, but alas, whatever. I'm gonna finish my side leg lifts over here, and then I'm gonna move to the other side. And then um, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this thing cold. This is still very hot right now. So like, ah, there's a bottle on the ground. It's making progress. Problems for me. Gee whiz. Gee whiz. Rick Morty. Geez. I need one of my cocktail shakers again. It's 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 unfortunate. Like the uh, I have ten different exercises that I could possibly do. It gets picked randomly, and it's it's unfortunate. Oh jeez. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm gonna take one of my cocktail shakers. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have it cleaned out a little bit because I don't really want that getting all nasty and grummy, and I need some ice in it as well. Dears, would you mind doing me a hot favor? What am I doing? Uh, wash out the shaker on add three ice cubes to it. I want to get this. I want to get this tea nice and cool before I put it in the rest of the drink, right. and then mix it all around. It says I'm supposed to add the lemon juice and the almond extract to the muddled mint, and then pour the green tea into a serving glass and stir to combine. So I would need a stir as well. And for that, I'm gonna grab another uh, straw. Excuse me. I actually bought these straws the other day at Target because I realized I have no straws that are not disposable in this apartment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, we just grab them. Well, actually, yeah. no, you do, because they're in my glasses. Oh, we do? Oh, I guess we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They stay in my glasses. Here, put it on ice. Put what on ice? Tea. Put it on ice. Oh, yeah, yeah, look at that. I can, I, put it on a, I can put it on an ice pack. That's, yeah. It's now on ice. Tea on ice. Cameron on ice with an X. Crack the X one. Cocktails on ice. Working that body on ice. Totally not alcoholism. On ice. Karen, next cocktail stream, you should try and ideally find only things that I would like. Oh, that's gonna be the golden next cocktail stream? Try to find things that you like? Well, you just got a shit ton in your drinks, drinks yeah, channel yeah. that sound like actually decent for me. Really? Oh, that's perfect. We could have a whole episode on that. That'd be great. With an X on ice. Cocktails, mixology on ice. Why on ice? Because it's uh, sometimes they taste better cold. You know? You never really know. I never really know. Uh, let's do it like that. That's great. By the way, the little um, the little X bar you see, it's bar with an X. Kind of how like, this is the Cameron with an X. It's just like, yeah. it's the, the X isn't pronounced. I assure you. If you're trying to be like Zabar, Zabar with a that with angst, we've got angst around here. I got angst. <laughs> yeah, we all got a little bit of angst to be honest. <laughs> I was having a little bit of a breakdown earlier this morning, but it's okay. It's okay. I recovered. I recovered. I had my I had my meeting. I had my first like uh, official support meeting today that I had to run myself, and I felt like an absolute blivering moron. I can talk about that. <laughs> I felt like an idiot, but I, I think we got some things taken care of. I'm better. It's weird. You think I'm better behind the screen as opposed to being on the camera, but I feel much more comfortable here than I do in the support meeting room. 
Weesh. Anyway, we got my shaker, which has been cleaned out. And there should be a little bit of ice in it. Yeah, maybe. Is there ice in there? Oh, I didn't do the ice. Oh, yeah, we need some ice in there. Thanks so much, dear. I appreciate it. Right now. Ah. Ang's, Ang, Ang, Anza with an X. So Anna's name gets the X put right in front of it, so it's Zana. Or if you pronounce the X, which, why would you? Sounds like Xanax, which is... It does kind of sound like Xanax, right? It's kind of uh, funny. Like Kingdom Hearts. All right, so, uh, oh, no, 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 you're thinking of um, Zemnos. Zemnos from Kingdom Hearts. So now I'm supposed to use chilled green tea, lightly brewed. It's heavily brewed. There's still a tea bag in there, but I am going to put this in my. Why can't my shaker. name look like that? Why can't your name look like what? I like how Jake did it. What do you mean? Ah, it's so cool. My name should look like that. Well, I didn't. I was wasn't able to put the entire tea in there, but I really don't need the entire tea in there. So, all right, you can put your name like that. That's fine. You want to be Anna with an X too? It's cool. I like it. Ah, oh, damn. She called Jake by her first name. Yeah, we all we're familiar around here. All right, so now um. Anytime, anytime that you shake something that's warm without the ice, basically inside of your shaker, there's a little bit of a vor like a vo void that happens in there, pressure-wise, that'll keep it shut. But so, um, yeah, this is warm hot tea, so it's not, I don't know if the, uh, the actual seal will be made. But we're gonna try it. I'm gonna shake it around with my ice and see, and hopefully this doesn't pop open. Because if it would, that's hot tea everywhere. Or I mean, it's slightly, it's slightly chilled hot tea. It's like lukewarm at this point, I guess. Yeah, we stream, but we stream buddies. Yeah, Anna and I are stream buddies. Or, or, or Jake and Disney Queen are stream buddies. She better know your name. Oh, more than awesome! Thank you so much for gifting a tear to the inspirational and super awesome uh, Mr. Paul P. Tracy. Mr. Paul Tracy, the inspiration himself. Truly an inspiring man. Read his story. I love boss oh, man, Mr. Paul. Mr. 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 Boss himself. And for uh, you know all like that stuff, we uh, we put party hats on. So I'm gonna. I lost my wait. Where my other. Shoulder. Oh, my party hat seemed to have shifted position, so I'm gonna put another one on my on the um, <laughs> my you thing. Have a hoard on your back. I don't hold on my. I have a hoard on my back. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, I like smiles. Smiles are good. And I put this all the way down. I got this on my shoulder over here. Time to sneak my hand through here to put yet another party hat as I don upon my body to celebrate more VIPs to the party. It's a thing that we do around here. It's great. As every AI character said to Skyrim, come here often. Anytime, Mr. Ball's man, Mr. Paul Mr. Paul Tracy. Love that. Okay, cool. So I have my chilled green tea now, which is great. And I should be able to, I'm gonna pour this into my glass and finally complete the entry. How long have I been on this drink in particular? Jeez. Crazy. Let's go. No. There's no E. I can't spell. Anna's basically dyslexic, so don't worry about it. I haven't gotten diagnosed yet. Okie dokie. This is my end route. Finally. I think I finally did it. I did it, everyone. I made a cocktail. Finally. Anyway. So I'm going to take my... I'm going to take my... Not this ice pack. I'm going to put this ice pack over here. Um, and I'm going to mix this up until well mixed because there's maple syrup in there. There's almond extract in there. There's lemon juice in there. This is, by the way, not a cocktail. This is a mocktail. There's no alcohol on this at all. So uh, you can make me consume this all you want to. It's great. Tracy with an E is spelling for first names only. <laughs> by Ismer, if your steel is strong, I, I can. Oh, by by Ismer, if your steel is strong, I can forge it. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, I like Skyrim. I don't. I played a shit ton of Skyrim when when I got it on the Xbox. Then I bought all the DLC for it. Played the shit out of it. It was great. I love that. Anyway, so now this is our end draft. A mocktail, mocktail for the time. The the three hours in, and it smells like tea and mint Mo mostly tea because all those mint leaves have kind of floated the way to the top of the glass um i really wish i had more camera angles over here i really wish like one day when i get another camera for myself my envision is that there will be another camera angle that i can switch to that'll like, have a view from like right over here so you can, you can actually see like messing around and garnishing with the glass and stuff like that but i only have two cameras and actually the one that you see up there that's anna's i stole it from her so well, that's no fine. that one's mine and then you stole mine. Oh, so it's actually technically that one's mine, but then I gave it to Anna. Then I stay whole, stole, stole hers because it's better than the other one because it actually sucks. It's I learn things. I learn things every once in a while. It's I great. Like the that tea just needs a little bit of wedge of jalapeno. What? No, no. Wait, I have to taste it before you do that. What does it taste like? All right, no jalapeno for that one though. What does it taste like? I don't know. Probably minty and tea. I minty. Like it. You like it? Mm-hmm. Well, it's a mocktail, so there's no alcohol in it, so why would you not like it? It's almost like fruity but minty. 
bites the jalapeno. I did it already. Just, just like. Don't do that. Much. Not again. Not again. Straight up bites it. Potentially. I did that earlier. I nom like nom nom. What'd you do? Just add mint to like a regular tea? So the ent drop, drop is um, it's mint leaves all muddled up inside of maple syrup. Consumption. I'll consume that. Or is that supposed to be for the jalapeno? <laughs> you can. It does say you can option out for something else. Ah, uh, it's the jalapeno. It's the jalapeno. Yeah, I guess. Uh, oh, I guess we're taking a bite of this thing again. It's okay. This? It's okay. I have this to make me happy. Oh, there's another consumption. Potentially also for the jalapeno. I told myself I'd do it. it. This is not the first time I've eaten a jalapeno before. I've done this. Yeah, my family calls them camera Oh, is this quad? Can you actually watch this one if I'm going to eat the whole thing whole? Thank you, thank you. The jalapeno, the jalapeno. Yes, yes, the jalapeno. I get it. Why are you screaming about that? Gee whiz, my friend. Cameron, car Cameron carrots. Cameron peppers are actually what we get in our uh, Chinese food. Or that's what her parents call them. Yeah, he bit into it once, made the weirdest face, and then my family laughed. So that's our Chinese food peppers. Why is it spicy? I don't. I, that's a TikTok thing. I don't know why. Okay. Do you want like a snack or something? Because you're probably gonna get trashed right now. No, I'm doing all right. You ate not even a quarter of the burrito. I tasted a little bit of the burrito. Oh my god. I'll make garlic bread. Because <clears throat> I want garlic bread anyways. <laughs> Spicy. Very spicy. That was the two bites of the jalapeno. I'm not going any further with that. Not today. I will proudly say that, that is enough jalapeno for the day. Oh. Waste my like that? Consumption. It's for the it's for the thing here. I almost threw up there, so I don't want to do that on camera. So we're not gonna do that again. Oh, Jake heard Cameron carrots when Anna first said it. Oh, hilarious. Oh my god, it's a one of these drinks uses heavy cream, and the heavy cream will probably help out, honestly. You want to do heavy oh, cream? No, I don't want heavy cream. I don't want to drink heavy cream. I don't want to... That's the thing. For my body, when my body experiences the spice, my, my nose gets runny, my eyes get watery, my mouth starts uncontrollably salivating. It's disgusting. Ugh. My body, at least. My body is dis my body is a destructive, a destru disgusting thing, and it's wonderful. Anyway, this is my ent drop, uh, and that was made. The ent drought is a mocktail, not a cocktail, made with ten mint leaves muddled up together in pure maple syrup, one fluid ounce, a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice, a drop of almond extract, or about an eighth of a teaspoon, and then you add to the top some chilled, lightly gre lightly brewed green tea, and I think it's absolutely wonderful. Jalapenos aren't that bad. No, they're really not that. Bad. These ones are like really potent like we i can use them from a farmer's market. we did get them from a farmer's market i honestly like i don't think i love to like candy these that'd be great they're good on subs and pizzas oh absolutely i love a bit of spice with like everything ah mr p tracy says personally think that cameron's extremely unique and genuine personality and character is just perfect for streaming you just blow up and become ninja I want to be ninja. See, so, so if I ever, if I ever become ninja, I have to dye my hair a disgusting shade of blue, so I can just be like, I learned from the best, sir. That's exactly what I want to be, just like you. That, or I'm copying um, somebody else I know who has blue hair right now, um, who I'm not sure if wants to be revealed. But so, whatever. I, I love your hair, by the way. You know, if if you you know who I'm talking about, and I love his hair. His hair looks awesome. <laughs> not in that sense, Cameron. Oh, okay, fine. Fuck ninja. I don't want to be ninja. I'm just stupid. Ninjas are cool. Awesome. No, 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 not ninja. It's just ninja. Gets <laughs> gets banned from his signature game for hacking. Eee, so unfortunate. That's okay. Um. All right, so we're about, we're about three hours into this thing. Oh my god, the last time I looked at the clock, it was like an hour. I've just been having a whale of a time here. I wanna do another. What time is it actually? It is now a wonderful ten o'clock Eastern Standard Time over here. So, uh, we should go with another one next. I don't know. I, uh, honestly, I picked a couple of these cocktails because they seemed interesting. I picked a couple of these other ones because I thought I, I would be able to vamp about the game that they're talking about. And we're doing pretty well so far. I'm gonna put this over in the display area. This was... Actually, you know what? Well, this one will stay around here, too. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Oh, but show, show, uh, show Mr. Paul Tracy the disgusting drink that we made earlier. Yeah, look at this. Look at this shit. It's over there. Here, I'll touch it. I'll point it out when we get over there. Um, this was, uh, this was... 
Jake's uh, brainchild over here. Jake's brainchild is a. Uh, uh, it's been called. It's been known by many names. One of those names being uh, bloody semen, uh, virgin's first time. Uh, these jokes are a little on the nose, but you know, uh, that's that's this thing. It's disgusting. You can tell it's disgusting because it looks that way. I'm kind of running out of space on here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy because I worry about it the most off, but in its place the Entra has its mint leaves and whatnot. You know what I'm going to do, actually? This is what I'll do as well. I am going to take the rest of the branch of the mint and use that on top. I'm going to, like, kind of snake it around a little bit. Make it look pretty. Show them the smile. The tea one looks really good. Honestly, I kind of like... I don't really know how to do this, like, artsy. I'm going to do it like that. It kind of looks like it's got vines on it. Maybe like a little, little twist off the side, perhaps. I mean, you can't really twist these things. Yeah, mint, mint branches don't really want to twist. They don't twist very well. I'm good with it. I like it. I think it's beautiful. That's so. Um, let's see. That was uh, Koozie, uh, whatever the hell that was before. Uh, this was the Sulfuron Slammer. This was the Ent Drop, and then the one that I just took off was Red Potion. And uh, well, it's lovely, lovely, lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. The uh, the personal recommendation creation was the only one that wasn't in that book of ours, uh, because we were just feeling a little spicy. A little, we were feeling, feeling a little spicy there, so we decided to chew up something a little bit different, a little bit different. Get my mask uh, to control my computer from here. Yeah, great. Although the blood seems to have stopped, well, that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> Nasty. Uh, it doesn't really taste that good. Honestly, I think the fa my favorite drink for the night has been so far the Sulfuron Slammer, just because of how complex it was. It was an incredibly complex experience. Like, it wasn't really my kind of drink, like, flavor-wise, but uh, there, was, there was sweetness, there was spiciness to it. Uh, honestly, the jalapeno pepper on there as a garnish looks just amazing. So it's, it's, hitting, it's hitting all the right categories, and I just, I absolutely love that. Um, I'm gonna take my red potion and put this probably in the back table behind me so I can make more space for other things. What should we go with next? Any particular game recommendations? Oh, I should def do a stream making cocktails suggested for Diana. Yeah, I think we should do that next time. That sounds fun. It's a good idea. You can do that or you can do like a stream suggested by like all the drinks from your... From your Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I hope to be able to do is like, so technically all, all the drinks that have been thrown in chat right now, I think um, Anna has <gasps> thrown a lot of them. The owner of the drink. <clears throat> and, and even did that too. So, oh, cool. Yeah, like, honestly, uh, so I think what we should wind up doing sometime is we'll take all those, like, things that were suggested by people around here and just do a whole stream based off of, like, like what we got and what people came up with. It's, that, it seems really cool to me. It seems really awesome. Oh, Meatball Girl's like, we should do the Samurai Rock, short and sweet, literally, actually. Yeah, let's do that. It's, uh, it's lime juice and uh, sake. Uh, I don't know if it's equal parts, but we're going to try it in equal parts because it just makes sense. And I think I'm just going to make that as... A, a shot, I guess, maybe, or maybe two shots of each. I don't really know. Let's see. Why did you do two shots? I don't know. Are you gonna use that sake? Oh, I thought I have you sake had... over here. Oh, you have sake? I got sake. Well, Wait, but what? What sake? This one's already open. Well, how about you do both, and we'll try one of. Okie okay, dokie. We're gonna try one of each. We're gonna try two different samurai rocks. One using um, Junmai Sake. Uh, it says on this bottle, this Junmai is rich and solid with hints of fruit and light acidity in the finish. Served chilled, room temperature, or warm with grilled meats, nutty, nutty cheese, barbecue, or hearty Japanese food. Uh, Japanese Sake, product of Japan, Joto Junmai. So that's this one. Uh, and this one over here is Soto, Soto Sake. Uh, which is also a premium Junmai uh, sake as well. This one doesn't say premium, but it's also Junmai. So they're both Junmai. So technically the same type of sake, but this one here um, prides itself. Uh, it doesn't have any particular combinations. So, uh, and we've got little sake glasses here too. <laughs> Jay, I'm 999% sure that I'm a Disney princess. Yeah, actually it's 999.9%. .9%. There's a point in there that you probably can't see very well. Here, what's this? Princess. I'm a Disney princess. Oh my god, I just noticed that's backwards. Is it backwards? Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's right. You can read that properly. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a Disney princess. I love Probably. it. Do you see all these party hats? Okay, I'm the Disney princess because Anna's the Disney queen, if you hadn't noticed by the, the game handle or the, the, the username in chat. Disney Quan. Disney, Disney Quan. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to fill these sake things up 
with uh, half sake and half lime juice. And then we're gonna we're gonna give them a shot. We're gonna give them a try. Uh, so I'm gonna go with the Johto on this side and Soto on this side. Actually, Johto I believe is a region in Japan, yeah. right? Johto means highest. Oh, okay, hold on. In this case, this is not Johto like J O H T O. It is Johto as in J O J O T O. And according to this bottle, means highest quality in Japanese. Since 2005, we have aimed for the highest quality in everything that we do. So technically. This one says premium junmai. This is Johto junmai. So does premium equivalent to the same thing as Johto in, tra in translation? I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. I don't know. I'd like to have my Japanese researchers in chat figure that out, if that's okay. I'm going to go on left, Johto. I'm just going to kind of pour that up in my sake glass until I think it's about halfway. There we go. That's about halfway. I like that. Dom Toretto. I don't know who that is, unfortunately. Is that an actor? I can I can Google it. Let's Google it. Dom Toretto. Or uh, or Tom Tom. Do, to, I don't know, man. Dominic Toretto. Oh, yo, he's the Fast and the Furious. Yeah, he's the Fast the Fast and Furious guy. I've never watched the Fast and Furious movie. Honestly, I haven't. There's like nine. Unfortunately, yeah. There's a there's a lot of them. I haven't gotten around to it yet. I will one day. But that'd be, that'd be wonderful. I've always, I think a new one just came out, right? Maybe. Yep. Best that Meep Girl, Girl could find is that it's a war, it's a ward of Osaka, Japan's second largest city. What, Soto or, I guess Soto, right? Because we kind of know what Johto is already. And I'll pour this one as well, the Soto on the other side. This is kind of full, so. I'd like to comment right off the bat that this Johto over here is a little green. Uh, compared to the Soto that's coming out of here. The Johto one. Okay, okay. So, it, it, they, they do come out slightly different colors. And uh, I actually put a little bit more in here than I did over there. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to correct that on the other side. Consumption! I'll get that in a second. I'm going to correct this. Take a sip of my thing over here, which is probably nice and separated. Hmm. I don't remember what was in that. That was okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot what the drink this was. What drink was that? Oh, that was the... um. Sake bomb? Uh, it was a sake bomb thing. What was it? What was it called? What was it called? Samarian, Samarian Sunset. It was the Samarian Sunset. That was another drink that we covered so far. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight. Oh, damn. We got a lot of these, right? Right? One. No. I, I overcounted. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then this is number seven. Nice. Nice. Johto. It was called 90% Grenadine. What was it called 90% Grenadine? I'm confused. I, I, I forgot the... Uh, I, I, I'm missing the context on that. Oh, we awesome. added, like, a lot of grenadine. Oh, we added a bunch of grenadine to it! Yes, yes, that was it. Yeah, it's the Sumerian sunset with a shit ton of grenadine in it. It tastes just fine. It's okay. I don't, that, sweet things are okay. Uh, it's, sweet it's things are right. great. Sweet things are great! I also, sweet things are great! They are great. They're wonderful. And now I'm gonna squeeze some lime juice into this. Lime is a lot easier to squeeze than anything else. So, uh, let's, let's, let's do that. I'm gonna grab that and cut it up. Uh, my cutting board's down here. It's honestly the least exciting part, so I'm gonna cut it down there. There we go. Lime has been cut. Well, sort of. It's kind of cut. Well, I guess it was a little more interesting than I did cut it for. Let's do it. I gotta rip it apart. I gotta rip it apart. Don't do it on screen, Cameron. Get it on screen so everybody can see the failure. All right. I'm gonna throw that in there. It's it's lime. It's lime. Lime. I'm squeezing it up. Squeezing it up! All right, that's gonna need another lime. Juggle the lime, bartender! I don't know how to juggle, unfortunately. And I don't, let's see, I got lemons over here. I got more lemons, I got lime. Oh, I got three limes in here! Let's try it, let's try it. I really don't know how to juggle. I can do two at a time, right? Like, it's like a, it's like a, I, I just don't have the, I just don't have the hand-eye coordination to do two at once, unfortunately, or three at once. I can do two at once, though. I'm very proficient at two at once. Oh, there, here it goes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. Well, there it goes. That's that's one. That's I, I have one now. It's it's one. And now there's none. So, well, whatever. Anyway. I'm a little overconfident. Oftentimes. Oftentimes a little overconfident. I need more lime juice in there. It's also great. As I squeeze this thing, I can see, like, the essence of the lime coming off. Oh, I guess that's going to be an entire lime's juice in there, isn't it? Right up to the surface. Alrighty, then. And then um, a little bit more over here. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the limes. 
these lines. And I need one more, apparently. Um, and they're all over the floor. So here's one. Um, conveniently placed right by my foot. So let's go for it. I like it. Let's go some more. Another line. Why is this? Why does this thing not? Oh, okay. What? I was wondering why this knife of mine really wasn't cutting very well, and uh, the the tip of the very tip of the knife is not serrated. So I kept trying to cut through the flesh of a fruit um, without serratedness for the most part. It's unfortunate. And now I fill that up with the uh, with the lemon juice. This has been. Samurai, Samurai Rock? I think Samurai Rocks, maybe? I think it was, that was what this one was called? Probably. I believe so. Potentially. And it is equal part. we're mixing it. Uh, equal parts lime juice, freshly squeezed, and sake with two different types. Uh, Samurai Rock, that was the one, Samurai Rock. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, uh, because I used this knife to cut the lime, I'm going to use it to mix this a little bit together. Do it a little bit of mixer, just to get everything all nice together. It probably mixed on its own, uh, because the alcohol was on the bottom, and when the alcohol is on the bottom, alcohol is rather light, comes to the top, floats, mixes with the lime juice. It's a bit of a physics thing. So yeah, that's that. Anna, would you like to try Samurai Rock? Yeah, I'll hear this. Yeah! Awesome. So I think, if you would like, you may try... Let me move this to the side so you have more area to... Oh, you really filled them up. What's that? Holy that was completely... Shit. Yeah, it's filled, filled what up. The sake glasses? Why is it wet over here? Why is it wet over here? Oh, well, I guess I'll clean that up later. Actually, I'll put my... Which one's which? This um, one's the cold the one? one? The one in front. They're, well, they're all cold. I mean, I guess one was cold. chilled. One was cold. One was non-chilled. They're both kind of... Because eh, I think I like them better chilled. Okay, well, oftentimes I've been told that sake um, tastes different depending on whether it's warm or cold. It's so. more alcoholic when it's warm, from what I've yeah. noticed. Okay. So we've got Anna with the Soto, me with the Johto. Hers is cold, mine's warm. I like that. I like that too. That's that's nice. I wonder if it tastes any different than the other one. It's limey and it's sake. I like that one better. I think it's because it's chilled. I like that. I like the other one better actually. Cool. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Perfect. Cheers. Cheers. Sake, everybody. Consumption. Nobody requested it this time. I just wanted to do it because it, it tastes encourage good. them. Never hit off the consumption anymore. It's just a lot of work to be able to click everything off, you know? Oh my god, I'll go take care of it. That's crazy. Hot and cold. Adorable. Adorable! Party hat, no party hat. Adorable. Man and woman. Adorable. Man. Woman. Yeah. Or maybe the opposite way around, depending on how we're feeling. Who really knows, honestly, at this point? We're all we're all happy here. We're all just being ourselves, I suppose. So that was the Samurai Rock. And honestly, that's, that's so lovely. I, I, can, I am not surprised that that is, like, a common thing to consume. Uh, over there, according according to uh, Meatball Girl's pen pal, who I believe goes and lives in Japan. So that was really really cool. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Of course, I wanted to make sure that we got to it. So I'm happy that you popped on to be able to uh, let us know because I do like doing this type of stuff. I like it. I like it. I like it. God no. That? But yeah, it's not popular. In, it's not popular in Nihon for no reason. I think you should have a sip of bloody semen. Mm, I don't want to though. <laughs> it's all the way over there. Like I said, it's just, it's just too far away. I can't. I can't reach that far, even if I take a step. Like, now I'm gonna wind up falling over. Never mind. You can see my you can see my fingers over there. Look at that. My fingers, my finger, finger, fingers. Simple and yum. It's it's lovely. I I like how simple it is. I feel like if we add like a cranberry oh. or like a strawberry based thing Oy. on top of it, it would be really. Cranberry or strawberry, you said, also Maybe on top of it as well. I would love to see like how this does with a little bit of sweetness to it, honestly. Yeah. Like even even the touch of like simple syrup might add another dimension to it. Not a lot, not a lot, just enough. Because currently it's it's no sweeter than a lime is, and I think lime itself has a bit of sweetness to it. You don't really get too much of it uh, unless you um, you don't really get too much of it unless you can get past the sourness somehow. But um, you know. I like it. I think it's it's very very tasty. Uh, now I don't remember which one was which. This is the this is the cold one. It was very cold. And this one is lukewarm. So that's lovely. I, I really like that. Samurai Rock. Great recommendation. I love that. Simple and easy. The hardest part I think is remembering the name. I guess. So let's see. About three and a half hours in here. Um, I've made an absolute mess over here. The boys are downstairs motorcycling around and running through red lights because they have no respect for the authorities. 
but neither do the rest of us, I guess, right? I mean, <laughs> half the police coming straight from the underground, or so to speak. I don't see what else we got in here. What else we haven't gone over yet? Maybe some more games that we have yet to um, experience the wonder from. That's uh, great. This has been going pretty smoothly so far, and half that is because uh, y'all are keeping things going over here. And for that, I wholeheartedly appreciate it. It's a lot more. It's I can you know it's it's something that I can do without anybody hanging around and saying anything. But like it's a lot more fun when we got people around to share it with. So so thank you all for that. I really appreciate it. Let's see what else is in this book then. Um, I'm in the mocktail section, um, and there's another one in here that I wanted to try. It's another mocktail. Um, and I don't know if I have all of it. Let me see. Uh, cinnamon, ginger, peel, pinch of black. Um. Oh, no, no, I really can't do that. Okay. I wanted to make something called Milk of the Poppy, but it requires, like, slightly warmed milk. I don't really have that. Uh, I don't really have access to my stove right now, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna nix on that. That'll, I'll prepare ahead of time if we do that in the future. That one's from Game of Thrones, apparently. Ugh. Oh god, Meatball Girls added some vodka to your OJ. The alcohol hit your belly like a rock. And then added a little too much, potentially. There's plenty of stuff in here. Anna, you might be interested in the fact that they've got blue milk. Oh, they got a blue milk recipe in here. They have blue milk in there? Yeah, they got a blue milk in there! Yeah! How yeah, close yeah, yeah, yeah. is it to the Disney recipe? Um, so this one uses goat's milk. Other milks can be substituted. Avocado, blueberry syrup, and vanilla ice cream, and blue food coloring. So none of this stuff in there is actually blue. Oh, so it's not like Disney's at all. But it uses avocado. I don't think we have any avocados right now, no, so I wouldn't don't. be able to do that, unfortunately. What else have we got in here? Uh, I'm gonna go to my tagged pages. Uh, the Dirty Wastelander, I think I want to do. That is also a mocktail, and that's because- Oh, that's not a mocktail, just kidding, that says whiskey. Hmm. That's not a mocktail at all. I want to do the Dirty Wastelander next, which is a Fallout reference. Uh, I think, at the very least, I did say, or we did say that we wanted to do a drink from Fallout or like that. I'm not sure. Anna, when you throw out the announcement, what games did you mention? I know oh, you mentioned I Fallout. Fallout. I basically did anything you flagged. Anything I flagged? Thrones, okay. Fallout, World of Warcraft. Nice. Nice, nice. Like, I think Zelda, which was both potion. Naturally. Yeah, well, technically Zelda, that's not, it's just health potion in general. So like, eh, oh, I'm pretty sure at least one there of them are, something about Zelda. There are specifically, uh, there's definitely a Zelda one in here somewhere, like specifically. Which one is that? It's probably, uh, um, oh, I know exactly which one that is, though. That's the, um, uh, Romani, Romani Milk or something like that. It's, um, it's based off of a place in the game called, I think, Romani Ranch. And you, they got cows there. They got cows. So, uh, cows make milk. And milk, milk do funny things. So, we're sunset. Where is it? I, I, I know it's in here somewhere, but where is it? This red potion and then, oh, well, I don't see it actually for some reason. No. It's in there somewhere. It definitely is in there somewhere. But I want to do the Dirty Wastelander next. Uh, it's based off of Fallout, the game, game series, or whatever. Uh, they also got Nuka Cola in here as well. They've got Atomic Cocktail in here. They got a couple of things in here that are uh, Fallout based. I, for one, have not ever. I played Fallout New Vegas when it came out, uh, or not when it came out, uh, but on the um, Xbox 360. I played a little bit of it. I really never got that far into it. It just, at the time, really wasn't my type of game. And then, flash forward years later, and then Fallout uh, 76 came out, or whatever it was. Fallout 4, no, Fallout 4 came out, and I think I bought it immediately, because I was like, I cannot wait to play this game, and then I realized my computer couldn't handle it. My computer can handle it now. Now that I've got a GPU in that thing, I can play Fallout 4 if I wanted to. I never played Fallout 76. I heard way too many bad things about that, and I just never decided to go into it, but, you know... Um, I, I like, I like stuff like that. And I've got a friend, a friend of a friend of mine, who's also an acquaintance of mine, but not as close to the friend that is the friend of mine originally, also is a huge, huge Fallout guy. I think he's cosplaying as the, uh, the Wastelander, like, all of the time. And, uh, he's swell. I think he printed himself, I think he 3D printed himself some, uh, like, Fallout armor, which is just, like, kick ass. I wish I could do something like that. I just need more time to print things. Uh, oftentimes, I don't print things all the time just because it's a little noisy. The walls are thin in this place, and Anna does her schoolwork, and it's a little annoying. I'll admit it. That thing, that printer when it's going, is annoying. I think my first Sea of Thieves th stream had the printer going on in the background. You can pretty much hear it the entire time. It was very, very annoying. Meatball Girl is saying that maybe we should just share one of the Star Trek pins while in the Star Trek Star Wars section just to piss off the fanboys and stuff like that. Dude, I mean, that or somebody will be like, did you know you're doing it wrong? And you'd be like, actually, I know I'm doing it wrong, and I did it on purpose, just to piss off people like you. Make your statement. I like that. But I'm gonna go with the, we're gonna do the Dirty Wastelander, and I think, I think we'll do this one, 
and then one more after that and i think that's what we're gonna call it for the night it's been a lot this has been a long cocktail stream so far but it's been very fun and entertaining as well so it's been really cool uh obviously i gotta save things for next time i can't just go through the entire book this time mostly because i can't i don't have all the ingredients in it for example we're, I, I think of the recipes that i knew that we were missing we were missing i think blackberry brandy uh Genovka is my brand of choice there um, and apricot brandy as well. I don't know of any apricot brandies off the top of my head. I don't know any brands like that, but I'm sure if I went to the liquor store, probably back in Jersey, let's see, that's north, that's south, uh, Jersey, that way. That's where Jersey is. That's north, that's south. You can tell. I can, I'm, a, I'm in the north area of Philadelphia, so I know which way is which, sort of, kind of. What are you pointing at? What is that over there? Over that direction. Over that direction? Over that direction? Go. Well, Anna says over that direction, so it's not like y'all can uh, confirm that or not. But I'll do the Dirty Wastelander, and then maybe one more after that, depending on how active things still are. The Dirty Wastelander is inspired by Fallout. Fallout is such an immersive game that it's easy to lose yourself exploring. There's so much freedom, and you can do big, important things like save people, or you can just wander around scavenging for bottle caps and bug meat. Since the setting is in Adam is an atom punk wasteland, most of the food is processed, irradiated, and frankly, not very appetizing. Luckily for us, the cooking system got a very nice revamp in the fourth installment, and there were slightly more appealing recipes for consumables introduced. One of these is the Dirty Wastelander, a cocktail consisting of met mutt fruit, nuka cola, and whiskey. The mutt fruit has the appearance of a blackberry blueberry hybrid, both of which pair excellently with whiskey and cola. And so I'm gonna need my blackberries and my blueberries and my simple syrup from the fridge. And I think I've got everything else over here. And actually, one of my chilled Coca-Colas. There's a couple of things to grab from there. Uh, Jake says it's clear paint, a lacquer, or clear coat. Completely random. Nice. Completely random clear paints. I like that. Dirty Wastelander. Yeah, this is my simple syrup. It's stored in a Stolithnia bottle. Because uh, that's what I got on me. So that's what I go with. I got my blueberries. I've got my blackberry. I'm going to muddle those up. Give me great. What's that? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I need a chilled Coca-Cola as well. No, chilled. I don't have chilled ones over here. These are these are the room temperature ones. In a serving vessel, multiple blackberries, blueberries, simple syrup, and lemon juice you using don't a muddler. Have a chilled one. There's definitely a chilled one back there. No, because you pulled them out because those are the ones from the fridge. Did I really? Yeah. yeah, well. They're not very chilled anymore, but I got my Coca-Cola, so I'm gonna use that back there. Consumption, which one do I wanna do? I'm gonna go after the uh, samurai rug actually. Mmm, tasty. Loving that. Loving that. See, isn't it exciting to be able to use the consumption thing for things that have consequences? Only when given my choice, of course. Dirty waste later. Oh, we're consuming again! It'll be water this time. Another one! I just need the water! I have too many points at this point. You do have too many points. I need to come up with, like, good channel point killers so that we don't just waste them all on consumptions. Consumptions, they're not wasted, of course. But, uh, I say waste just because, like, it's spammy. It's very spammy. Isn't that about wasting? It's not wasting anything. Well, you want to keep on going? Oh, I won't be able to make my dirty wastelander. If we keep on doing stuff like this. It comes and goes. It comes and goes in phases. You know, I'll keep doing this. I just take sips anyway of pretty much anything that I got. Except for the water. I'll go full ham on the water. Oh, excuse me. Lovely, 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 wobbly, wobbly, lovely, blah, 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 blah. Alright, cool. Dirty wastelander. Uh, am I putting this in a shaking glass, or... Uh, add ice cubes to the glass, put the whiskey into something, into the serving vessel, top of cola, and give a drink stir. Oh, so this is stirred. This is made right in the glass. <laughs> the Dirty Wastelander. This one doesn't have a picture, unfortunately. I, I just remembered, I haven't really been putting the book up to the camera like I was previously. I apologize about that. Uh, make it, this one doesn't have a picture, so don't worry about it. Um, this one needs to be muddled in a glass. Uh, I need one, a glass that is worthy of the muddling. Uh, I'm gonna go with, I, I can use this. I can use this little, uh, I got this, like, wine glass without a stem over here and it's got a big old x on it uh the other one has an o on it it's supposed to be like a hugs and kisses type thing very cute like that but i took the one with the x because like it's the x that's kind of the, the thing we got going on here it's a fun fun thing so i'm gonna take my blackberries uh it says th five blackberries and eight blueberries we'll mix that with a teaspoon of simple syrup and a teaspoon of lemon juice so i need more lemons I need more lemon juice in there how many blueberries eight blueberries and then five blackberries so i'm going to take oops see you gotta be a stupid thing here we go Go in there. Go in there. Don't worry about it. Nothing broke, I promise. I'm gonna take five of these big old blackberries. One, two, three, four, five! Put that in there. Put my blackberries off to the side. 
Take my blueberries. I need five blueberries. I'm sorry, eight blueberries. That's how many it was. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wonderful. We're still at it, huh? Yeah, we're still at it. We got like one or two more drinks left. I think that's probably where I'll call it for the night. I, I'm a bit of a person who does things for long periods of time. I, I, uh, I oftentimes stream for long periods of time. I just kind of hyper-focus. I get really into what I'm doing. I kind of hyper-focus and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, it makes a lot of pro makes a lot of content. Content's really easy to make. Editing the content, that's the annoying part. Like having to edit through all this stuff is very, very annoying, but I don't do a lot of editing on this stuff. For stream stuff, it doesn't really get, I just kind of take out the breaks and there haven't been any breaks this time. So this is a very easy editing job. You just take out the beginning, you take out, or take out the beginning, you take out the end, and then there we go. It's great. I also need a teaspoon of my simple syrup in there, as well as a teaspoon of my lemon juice. I gotta take out my lemon over here that's just kind of been sitting there, um, scared of what comes next. I need my teaspoon as well. I got a teaspoon in there. Yeah, there we go. Get that all in there. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand, maybe. It's a, it's very, can okay, I just like, I can do this. I can do that with a teaspoon, just kind of hang, hanging on top of the glass, sweet. And then I squeeze. Note flower! Pfft, of course that was gonna happen. Pfft, of course, of course. <laughs> I, I weighted the spoon a little badly, so it fell all the way over. That's fine. You know, now I now I can do this though, because I can actually fit my hands around it. I told I said I was a small boy, small boy, small hands. There we go. That's one one teaspoon of the lemon juice, and one teaspoon of my simple syrup. Put my teaspoon here for a moment while I open this thing up. It's not squeak sticky. It's great. Smells fine to me. I'll go with it. I tasted this the other day. I thought I might need to make more simple syrup, but I made this a um, little bit ago. So it should be just fine. Put that and simple syrup in my glass. Is Anna still there? Well, we live together, so yeah. What? She's over there. She's doing more work. She comes on everyone. She's still been drinking things and whatnot. It's wonderful. She is the fiance after all. It's wonderful. I love it. And so I'm gonna put my simple syrup down. I'm gonna muddle all these guys together. Um, my muddler over here is actually covered in maple syrup. So I might need a little wash on that, uh, potentially. Or I can just like stick it in some water over here. Let her know to check her Discord DMs. Anna, check your Discord DMs. I'm oh, she's checking, she's checking. It's exciting. Uh, I need to wash this off. So I'm gonna take a little bit of water that I got left over here. I'm gonna put it into a, I got a little uh, shot glass down here. I'm just gonna bring back up again. Put some put some water in there. Yeah. And I'll kinda I'll wash off my muddler that way. We don't need to go to the sink for that. I'll just kinda like wash it like that. And then just kinda give it a wash. It just had some maple syrup over it. There was a, really wasn't much in there that needed to be cleaned. So it's all good. It's all good. Just gotta give that a rinse off. Nobody's drinking this stuff but me and Anna, so it's all good. I'm gonna muddle this all in my little glass over here. Uh, the simple syrup, we got simple syrup, and we've got uh, lemon juice in there. And I'm just going to crush everything else, uh, everything up as much as I possibly can. So, muddle, 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 muddle. Oh, this is looking nice and gooey, gooey, It's nice and squishy. I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. Very much so. Oh, kidoki, artichoke. That is coming out nice and juicy, too. This is perfect. I usually don't get to do a lot of, like, muddled drinks, so I, I like to be able to do so. I first heard of muddling in my cocktail classes. They were like, yeah, you muddle the orange peel. I was like, well, that seems weird. Why would you do that? Because like, it brings all the flavor out and expresses the flavor. It's like, that sounds awesome, actually. Uh, for the old fashions and stuff like that. I believe the old fashioned uses the, um, muddle up your orange peel and your sugar and your Angostura together. Ugh, yum, yum, yum. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, and the rest of that, is I am going to add ice cubes to the glass. I need some ice cubes. And if you wouldn't mind getting me some ice cubes, just oh, a couple in there. Cubes. Yeah, just in this glass over here. Consumption! What do we get to consume? I have to open up this Coke anyway, so we're gonna do that. Aw, oh, yeah. Get some water in me. Ooh, Coca-Cola. Ice cubes? Ice cubes, and then water as well. Thank you. Thank you. That looks interesting. Oh yeah. Okie dokie. And then I got the ice cubes in the glass. I pour whiskey into the serving vessels, top with cola, and give the drink a stir before serving. I need two to three fluid ounces of whiskey. Damn, that's a lot. Actually, so what I want to do with this one, let's see. I want to try to pick one of my whiskeys that I know is going to be complement the 
fruit pretty well. The only other whiskey that I, I used to have this Japanese whiskey, Suntory, that I feel like would have been really, really well here. But I don't, I don't have any more of that. So I think the closest that I'm gonna get to something that would might actually complement this is not the old granddad bourbon that I got down there. That's kind of peanutty. And I don't think, I don't really want, the, the nut and the berry don't really feel like that's something, a flavor that I wanna go with right now. And I don't wanna use the rye either. So actually, and I'm gonna bother you one more time. Yeah. If you can grab the black velvet Canadian whiskey up there, I feel like the the notes of the tr the, the notes of the maple tree. In my opinion, I think the Canadian whiskey actually kind of tastes a little bit like maple syrup. Like I'm not gonna lie, uh, maybe that's just my brain playing tricks on me. But I think that's gonna go super duper well with the berries in here. Uh, hey. Black velvet all the way in the back, uh, to the right. Oh. Yep, yep, that one, that one. Uh, the other stuff back there is like I don't know. I have other whiskeys back there too, but I have no idea what's in it. I threw a bunch of whiskeys into a sour mash bottle because I was trying to take them from my fraternity house and they've been sitting there and I don't usually use them unless I really don't care. So I've got black velvet um, Canadian whiskey. I like it. It's cheap, but it's good, I think. I need two to three ounces of that. So I'm gonna go with it. Two to three ounces. I'm gonna go with two. We don't really need a lot of that. And I'll top off mostly with cola. So that uh, if I do less on the whiskey, more on the cola, then Anna might actually like it. So put that in there. Awesome. Close that up. Dude, you can see how many bottles I got all down here. I, I, I've still got so many more bottles up there. I have, let's see how many bottles I got over here. One, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, uh, 28 bottles of stuff back here. And there's even more up there. Like it's, there's there's more up there. I got plenty. I got plenty of stuff like that. I pride myself on my collection. I like the fact that I have all this stuff. People are like, do you have a problem? I'm like, no, I have a hobby. That's what I have. And then I'm gonna top this off with Coca Cola. As much as I possibly can. Don't bubble over. Please don't bubble over. That actually doesn't look too bad. Honestly. Honestly, though, not too bad at all. I actually almost did the entire. That, that's almost the entire Coke can. Almost, almost the entire Coke can in there. This is the Dirty Wastelander, and I personally think that this would go garnished well with a nice metallic looking straw. So there's that, I'm gonna mix that around a little bit to make sure everybody intermingles, gets to know each other. And I think that's, I think that's what we got. And that's our Dirty Wastelander. I like it, I think I do, potentially. The Dirty Wastelander with Muddled blackberries, muddled blueberries, simple syrup, lemon juice, whiskey, and Coca-Cola. Uh, chilled preferably, but it wasn't chilled. It, four hours later, it was not chilled after the fact, so that's what we're going with. Not bad at all. And I think it's, it, it's mostly, it's mostly cola. I'd say it's mostly that cola flavor, but... Also, it's hard to drink through the straw, to be perfectly honest there. I'm actually gonna ditch the straw. It's it kind of it's blocked up by all the, the the berry particles in there. Yeah, it's mostly it's mostly cola. Honestly, I think it tastes mostly like Coca Cola, but there's kind of that undertone of the whiskey in there. Kind of on the back of my, I think on the back of my tongue, I'm tasting a different sweetness. It's not the Coca Cola. I want to say that's the blackberry, or the blueberry. I can't really piece them apart. But that's that's not too bad at all. I don't think I get any of that lemon juice in there or that simple syrup that's out of there. That's probably just to give the 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 muddling of the blackberries and the blueberries just kind of a place to exist, is what I what I'm guessing that's for. But I think this is lovely. It's a it's a it's a hefty one. It's it's just got a lot of particles and it's difficult to drink. I feel like this would be better with like actually do they have um there's got a tip. I was wondering if they had a tip on here and how to drink this thing. They do have a tip. To muddle the berries, gently press them against the bottom of the glass with your muddler or wooden spoon while twisting your wrist for 10 to 15 seconds. Do this until most of the berry's flesh is crushed and you have released some juice. But there's no recommendation on how the hell to drink this thing. So I guess we just have to use our mouths as what the, the world above has given us. Actually, you know what? You know what? I do taste the blackberries. I just bit into a, bla a blackberry and I was like, wow, I already have that flavor in there. Cool. And so I, I really like that. That's lovely. I think the blackberry and the Coca-Cola go really, really well together. The whiskey, honestly, I feel like the whiskey's lost. The whiskey kind of gets lost, to be honest. Uh, but I, I guess that's why they say two to three ounces, depending on how much Coca-Cola you fill up with it. So I guess you could probably add a little more whiskey in there. And honestly, I'm curious. 
Time to find out how much whiskey tastes. Oh, okay, yo, go for it. Before you touch whiskey, whiskey tea. Before I add more whiskey, uh, Anna's gonna try it herself. Oh, why not? Yeah. This looks horrifying. It's just got a lot of berry juices in it. Berry, berry parts, like mangled up berry. Mangle, 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 berry, berry, berry. What do you think? I don't get a lot of whiskey, to be honest. Tastes like a berry Coca-Cola. Berry Coca-Cola, right? Yeah. yeah berry like Coca-Cola. Yeah. 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 I'm good with that. Yeah, me too. I'm totally cool with that. Then again, what's the point of adding, like, the whiskey then? <laughs> <laughs> what's the point of adding the whiskey, you ask? I feel like there's a whole, there's a whole, uh, um, there's a whole, uh, school of thought on that question. Nice. Sounds nice. Yeah, I, I really like this. Honestly, I remember, I like the fruity Coca-Colas that they came out with. I really like the uh, the orange cream Coca-Cola. I think that tastes awesome. I've always been a fan of Cherry Coke. I've always been a fan of Vanilla Coke as well. Um, they came out, this is not really berry related, but they came out with like a Coca-Cola coffee and it's disgusting. It literally just tastes like they put coffee flavoring into Coca-Cola and that's exactly what it is. It's terrible. Garlic. Vanilla Coke is great. I have garlic bread now. Be careful, it's hot. Where, where did garlic bread come from? Where did you make garlic bread? When did this happen? This just finished. Just, you cool. haven't eaten any dinner. I ate the dinner. Parts of it, I'm doing just fine. I haven't really been drinking a lot of the cocktails. Just kind of like sure. sip ever sip ever sip. Oh, they stopped selling vanilla Coca-Cola with sugar in the UK? Oh, why? Is it because of like the um, the laws of like what type of products you can put in there? Damn, that is really hot. All right. That's hot garlic bread. That's not something I can drink. I'm gonna try this now with the extra ounce of whiskey added to it. It kind of just smells like garlic bread over here now. <laughs> it's great. Okay, okay. I can taste the I can take the taste the whiskey in there now. Now I think it actually benefits a bit more. If you're gonna use an entire Coke can, you should definitely use the full three ounces of the whiskey in there because I think it melds together a lot better than if you kind of skimp on it. It was mostly Coca-Cola before, add another ounce of whiskey in there for a grand total of three ounces of whiskey, and I think it tastes just great. I, I really like this. Uh, I feel like this could use a garnish too, but I don't really know, they don't really have a garnish um, recommendation. Uh, I could put some blueberries on it, but I don't really know how to, to put blackberry on the rim. Let's try blackberries on the rim. Let's just slice a blackberry. Let's do that. Let's do that. A little, little blackberry. Gonna cut on through that a little bit. As far as I can, and then uh, boop. There we go. Little blackberry. Oh, there's a little piece of the blackberry just kind of hanging on there. That's our woo. Oh, my garlic bread is sticking to the table. I'm gonna put this on top of. I don't know. I guess I'll put this on top of my water because it's the best place that I can think to store it for now. And that's our um, that's our dirty wastelander with X on it. I'm gonna put this over by the uh, presentation area, and I think. I'm gonna leave ourselves time for one more drink as we go through this, and I'll kind of steamroll on through that. Uh, all right, let's let's put this back on the display over there. It is getting a little crowded, so uh, that's kind of why I have to bring myself to a stopping point because eventually I have to bottle up uh, all of these cocktails so that I can drink them later, over time, and not all at once. Because why would we want to do that? It's not like it's not like we're trying to get wasted over here. If it happens, it happens. But yes, I will take this over here. Uh, I particularly, I'm gonna take this guy out of here and put in place a little guy over here. There we go. Nobody will notice the lack thereof, the nasty, nasty cocktail. Nobody's gonna know. I didn't see it happen. Oops, sorry, I whacked my microphone. In case that sounded weird, I apologize. I'll put that back there. Wonderful. Back to the screen. I'm gonna do one more cocktail this evening because it's getting a little late. My eyes are getting tired. I didn't eat a lot of food today. I didn't drink. I, I drank last night. My also, my phone is telling me my bedtime starts soon at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What else have we got in here? Let's try. Literally anything else. What else have I not made yet? Have I gotten through all the drinks that I um that are marked? I did the Dirty Wastelander. Um, I'm not gonna do Milk of the Poppy because I'm actually missing things for Milk of the Poppy. We did the koozie. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I see another drink in here. I see we did the Sumerian Sunset, we did Red Potion, and we did the Sulfuron Slammer. There's actually one more drink in here that's marked. I can't believe I got through all these. 
Except for the one in the back with the milk of the poppy, because I needed warm milk for that and I didn't read that the first time. I'm so happy I was able to get through all these. Um, the last one that we're gonna do is the three-toed sloth, inspired by, I think, a show called Cocktail. I've never heard of a show called Cocktail, but I guess it exists. Let's see about the three-toed sloth. It was hard to pick one of the crazy made-up drinks peppered in with the real-life cocktails in Tom Cruise's Last Barman Poem. Uh, Last Barman Poet Poem. There are many to choose from. The death spasm, the dingling. Honestly, I think we're all the we're all the scandalized lady in the audience, incredulously asking, dingling, but punning is my specialty. So I went with the three-toed sloth. This cocktail uses slow gin. Get it? Slow, cause slow. Sloths are slow. With layers approximately the same colors as those of a three-toed sloth, and topped with three coffee beans to act as the twos. For this, I'm gonna need a fluid ounce of slow gin, cognac, creme de cacao. Kahlua and bitters. I actually have not a single one of those ingredients down here with me. Nice. And the chocolate bitters. And the heavy cream. Yep, this is if there's absolutely I, I gotta go to I gotta go get all those ingredients. Unless Anna would like to help me one last time. Okie dokie. Chocolate bitters. You're in the right area for that. I need slow gin, which is the big red thing next to where the gin was. Which one? Oh that one. It should have the little barrel on it, the uh or maybe I don't know. Slow gin is where? Slow gin is two, side two. Uh, after the fernet, after the gin, it's the big red one. Yep, thick red one. It's not really big. No, it's big. Yeah, it's big. Um, in addition, this one calls for cognac. I don't have cognac, so I'm just gonna use regular brandy in place of it. I have that over here already, actually. I, I lied. I don't technically have cognac. I also need Kahlua, which is behind the Mr. Black, and I need heavy cream as well. I think you grabbed all of them except for Mr. Black. Thank you, thank Mr. you, thank Black? you. I thought you wanted Kahlua. Oh, Kahlua, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, behind the Mr. Black. That's yeah, where that's, that's where it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow gin, cognac, uh, and I need creme de cacao as well, which is right next to the Mr. Black. Yep, awesome, thank you. Why do you have Kahlua instead of whiskey? Because it calls for Kahlua specifically. Oh. Yes. Heavy cream or coconut cream, but I got heavy cream, and then I need three coffee beans. Those. In the coffee bean containers. I got coffee over there. Just uh, that's for the garnish. Alrighty then. So this will be the three toed sloth, the final cocktail of the evening. Thank you all for even getting this far. If you're still here, congrats. You made it to the end. Almost. Almost kind of. Three toed sloth. I need my cocktail shaker. And I have one more shaker that is left untainted, and it is the weirdest looking one. Uh, it's a it's a little margarita shaker from Joe's Crab Shack. It's very flamboyant looking and very exciting. And it makes a terrible seal. This thing actually sucks, but you know what? I got it, so we're using it. I'm gonna bring all these guys to the ground. I'm gonna bring all these guys to the ground so I have more space to work with up here. Move that forward. Gold Schlager. Schlager. Things become a little bit of a mess up here, but at least we've got our garlic bread. Mmm, garlic bread. garlic bread. Tastes well, awesome. And I can have some ice in here too. Ice? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Ice? Ice? Yeah. Consumption! I'm gonna go with the rest of this Coca-Cola. Nice. Good Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola and garlic. Uh, it's, it's, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. Get a little bit of ice in there. We haven't run out of ice yet, have we? No, we haven't. Yes! I tried to prepare all the ice cubes ahead of time. I don't have an ice cube maker. It doesn't work. There's no water connected to my refrigerator, so. Well, I don't exactly want Philly tap. Yeah. So. It's true, it's true. I don't really want Philly tap ice. I'd rather it be filtered first. In my cocktail shaker, I will combine gin, cognac, I'm just gonna use brandy because that's what I got, uh, creme de cacao, Kahlua, bitters, and ice cubes all together. So one ounce of the slow gin. I have a personal vendetta against Joaquin slow gin. I hate this stuff. I really don't like it. I need to get some real slow gin. This stuff feels just so fake and red and disgusting. But um, it's what I got, so that's what we're going with. I got slow gin, I'm gonna use it. I need one fluid ounce of that in my cocktail shaker. These are, I can't wait to clean all this stuff tomorrow. Uh, one ounce, one ounce in the shaker. It's very, very red. I don't know what color this is gonna wind up turning. I also need one ounce of cognac. Uh, I'm gonna use brandy in place of that. Where are you down here? There you are. I've got E and J brandy. It tastes like brandy. I don't really know how to describe brandy. I haven't given brandy enough love in my life. I will eventually. That's why I have a lot of brandy. Technically, the one brandy that I've used the most of is uh, something called Applejack. Uh, Laird's Applejack specifically, and it's it's brandy. It's brandy, but it's kind of its own. It's kind of its own thing. Like Applejack has its own like 
process and recipe. I don't really know much about the, uh, um, I don't really know much about the process there, but I know it's, it's something special on its own. And there's another equivalent too. There's another like brandy out there equivalent that's not cognac. It's not technically brandy. It's something completely on its own. Um, the, the Applejack is very good though. For future advice, you'll need lots of ice if you do recipes I recommend for Anna to try. Yeah, I mean, I got plenty. I got a big ice maker. I don't have the ice maker. The ice maker doesn't work. But I have a big box in there that holds ice. I got a big ice tray. And I'm constantly, I have one ice maker. And I am constantly filling it up, emptying it, filling it up, emptying it, filling it up, and emptying it. But I do this like day after day after day. Every time I go into the freezer, I make sure that the ice that's in the tray gets removed and then refilled. So I eventually wind up um, refilling all the ice in there. But yeah, everything requires ice. Uh, for the most part, I think I usually do ice for every single drink. What I need is like a little cooler, like an ice cooler that I can keep like right over here and just throw all the ice in there so I don't have to go over there. I can keep all my chilled ingredients in there, but I don't have a cooler. I got to get one of those. My next ingredient is going to be one ounce of creme de cacao, which is basically chocolate, excuse me, chocolate flavor. I've, no, I've never actually been able to use. I've never actually used my uh, creme de cacao. Actually, I might have used it once. It looks like there's maybe a shot missing from there, but um, yeah. Apparently, I found out the other day that cocoa is not the same as keiko. I actually found that out in my um, little aperitif book, or, or not aperitif, uh, digestive book, my uh, Amaro book, whatever. The uh, nightcap that shows uh, different cocktails for what you would try to... Uh, the nightcap meaning more like a cocktail to end a conversation, a cocktail to end the day, a cocktail for to end or whatever. That's kind of... Like, that's the nightcap, supposedly. The book goes through it and whatnot. Uh, maybe I'll have an episode on that one. That sounds like fun. I, there's a lot of ingredients in that one specifically that I do not have because they're rather unique spirits that don't really have any sort of equivalent. For example, Campari or Fernet Branca. There's not really a stand-in for those, to what I understand. Uh, I think there is actually a stand-in for Fernet Branca. There is at least one other, like, menthol amaro out there that is mentioned in the book because I was reading it sometime a couple weeks ago, and they did mention that specifically. Um, in addition, I need a fluid ounce of Kahlua. I don't really like Kahlua, so I'm happy to get rid of it, honestly. I, there's actually not much in here, so hopefully we can finish off the bottle. Maybe? You have a big one. I do have a big one, but that's Mudslide Kahlua. That's not original Kahlua. It's slightly different. Yeah, there's still some Kahlua left in there. That's coffee e coffee e coffee dee 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 In addition to that, I will need two dashes of chocolate bitters. And, uh, they say... Combine gin, cognac, creme de keiko, kalua, and bitters, and ice cubes. Uh, I need my bitters. Where'd my bitters go? There you go, right there. It says two dashes. Uh, this thing is a little pipette. So I'm just gonna scoop it all up, and I'm gonna do uh, one squirt, two squirt. So those are all the squirts. Two, two squirts. Two squirts of my cocoa bitters. They smell so cocoa-y. It is just, it's lovely. I love the way that it smells. I also have sassafras bitters as well, and they kind of smell like Coca-Cola. They go really well in a nice uh, old fashioned in my opinion. Uh, in addition, now we put it in the cocktail shaker, pour the contents of the cocktail shaker into a serving glass after I'm done. And then you pour one third of the heavy cream out of the carton and set it aside. You can pour it back in later. Vigorously shake the heavy cream carton for about 30 seconds. Hold a spoon upside down over the drink Point it slightly downward, sometimes I'm down and slowly pour the cream on top of it and top with coffee beans, creating a second layer. Oh, I have to whip the cream? I wish I knew about that ahead of time. Guess I'm whipping some cream. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, but I'm gonna shake this first. And then pour it in my cocktail shaker. And actually, I'm gonna use I wanna use that glass over there. But um, it's a little big, and it's a little far away, and I can't reach it. It's behind my camera, unfortunately. So I may need assistance on that one. Uh, that one. It's the it's the big martini glass. Do you want I like the froggy? Well, oh, actually, we can do the froggy. Yeah, I like the froggy idea. It's also a martini glass. This is this is a martini glass. It's it's big and beefy, and it holds like two drinks. Um, so we're gonna use the froggy glass instead, which holds one. I'm pretty sure it still holds about two. It holds one. Oh, I could have actually reached for that. It was uh, in an accessible location. Cool. And I'm gonna shake this up because uh, it needs to be, I guess. It's, what a satisfying sound that makes. That actually did create a seal. I'm actually very happy with that. That gets poured in. It looks kind of red. Whoa, it looks very red, actually. It was extremely red. Interesting. I feel like it was supposed to come out more red. Oh, you know what? It's because the slow gin that I used was a blood red color. It's disgusting. I really hate Joaquin's. I don't know. I, I got it because I wanted to know what it was like, and I opted for the cheap option. I regret that completely. And now I need my whipping cream. 
on or my heavy cream so i'm gonna whip it into shape whips in one to two minutes so um i guess we're gonna whip this for a little bit ah uh, that's i need some of it out of the container i need a little bit of it out of the container so i need have space in the carton that's they said for a third of it out of here and then you know oh it's not even opened yeah i bought this at the store the other day yeah nice throw that in there i'll pour some of that out into the spare snifter glass that i've got this is very thick wow um, you want to come out of there? Man, when they said heavy cream, they meant it. This is not moving. This ain't coming out at all. Wow, um, that's actually not coming out. Huh, what about poke it with a knife? Yep, that is, it's cream all right. Um, I have a feeling this was already whipped when I bought it. It's okay. Yeah, that is not liquid at all. Hello? Anybody? Is it? Can anything come out? Oh, there we go. There we go. It's. It, there was a whipped layer on top. That was really interesting. I had to poke through it. That was interesting. Interesting. Pre-whipped cream. There we go. Get out, get out of there. I'll poke a couple of layers in there. There we go. There we go. Now I need to whip it a little bit. There we go. That's a little disgusting. I'll admit that. I'm going to put that off the side. Knife goes down there. This goes back over here. Now I'm going to try to whip this just a little bit. Whip it into shape. Just see what I can do with it. So, uh, yeah, let's go. I don't know exactly how long I need to do this, but I'm just going to shake it for until I find that I've shaken it enough. I thought it was off for a second, like if it was going to go everywhere. Like, that'd be disgusting. That'd be just exactly what happened with the coconut milk. Or with the coconut water. Was coconut water? Was it coconut water that I bought or coconut milk? I don't really know. I don't remember. There's definitely some coconut milk in there, despite the fact that it might just be the other one. Like, lumpy. Yo, very lumpy. Ooh, I'm gonna keep on shaking this. I don't usually shake this much, so, like, I'm a little, I'm a little tired. It's a little late. I should shake it like this. There we go. I'm not exactly sure how long I need to shake this for, but I'm gonna shake it, shake it, shake it, till I just can't shake it no more. At least that's the intent. Let me try that. Come on! Come on, go for it. All right, I'm done with that, so that's what I'm gonna do. And now on the back of my bar spoon, I'm gonna pour this cream onto the top to create a layering effect. Or at least that's what we're gonna try to do. I have one more bar spoon over there that has been untainted, so I'm gonna take that one. Untainted bar spoon. Let's go on top. Hopefully I can float. Whoop, okay, well, it didn't actually go on the side of my bar spoon like I wanted it to. Come on, float. Yeah, it's totally working. This cocktail glass is very top-heavy. It really wants to pour itself over, to be honest. All right. We got a nice cream layer on top of that. That's actually not too bad looking. That's cool. I've always liked layering effects. That was something I got to practice in my little bartending classes. Layering, because they had a, they didn't actually have a lot of like they don't they didn't have a lot of real ingredients there it was all like colored things just so that you got the color right um and so we really didn't have the opportunity to most of the time but sometimes sometimes someone would bring in their own collection and then we're gonna garnish this with like three coffee beans so one on top and then a little two on the side that's how that looks let me try to put that up to the camera so we can see exactly what i'm talking about there there we go i've always loved the way that looked always loved the way that the coffee beans looked up on top and that's uh, the Three Toads Law, which was created using slow gin, cognac, I use brandy, creme de caco, Kahlua, chocolate bitters, some ice cubes, heavy cream on top, and some coffee beans for topping up on the top of that. I'm gonna guess this is probably gonna be like a little, uh, like cha cherry -y almost? Like cherry, cherry chocolate, maybe? Let's try it. Yeah, that was all just heavy cream that I got there. That, that first sip was all heavy cream. There we go. There was the rest of it. Yeah. That's actually very pleasant. It's very pleasant. Like, in my opinion, the slow gin has a rather potent flavor to it. Uh, the slow gin itself. So, the fact there was only, only an ounce of that in there with a bunch of other like chocolatey coffee -y stuff worked out incredibly well. But I really, really like this one. This is very tasty. I, I would definitely recommend that. Uh, and the way that it looks with the cream on top is like, it's a very visible layer. I think 
if I were to use slow gin that wasn't Joaquin's, which is very syrupy, it's it's kind of the cheap stuff, then I probably would have gotten the correct color. The color is supposed to be a brown, but this is like, this is a red color. Um, can't really see it too well in this current lighting, but you can put it up against that. It's a very, it's a very, very red from the side. So like, I don't know, I, I think it looks pretty cool. It looks more sci-fi-y than what this is supposed to be. This is inspired by Cocktail, which I think is a show, perhaps? Or maybe it's just a poem, I'm not so sure. Um, I think I think it might have been a show, or maybe it was a movie. And so, uh, I don't know, this looks a lot more sci-fi than that. Honestly, if I rebrand it, like, if you rebrand this to something that's a little more, um, like, geek nerd, I guess, I feel like it'd be better. But it's, it's lovely. I really like it. as it kind of falls down the side of the glass as I try to drink it because of how thick it is. Well, that's pretty much all I've got for the evening, ladies, gentlemen, and those who fall in between or um, beyond those two descriptors. This this guy will not stay up. This guy's really top heavy. Well, this guy does not want to stay. I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put the jigger behind it to uh, hold it upwards so it doesn't fall over. That glass does not like to stay upwards. But that's all I've got for this evening. I know we've had a couple of new friends to pop in this whole time around. Uh, I like to do this cocktail stuff every once in a while. It's been a while since the last one, but I'm trying to do a couple more like um, just chatting stuff type stuff going forward because honestly, it's fun to just chat around and speak my mind. I wind up doing so anyway while playing video games, so might as well just do it with a drink in our hand or literally whatever else we're doing. I think the last time I did something like that, I was eating like shrimp rolls that I got back from uh, one of my, uh, a barbecue that I was at my grandfather's house. It was a great time. It was really, really enjoyable. And we just did whatever. It's fun to hang out like that. Uh, but that's it. Thank you all so much. It was a really, really fun time that I got to do this. And uh, I'm gonna wind up bottling up all this other stuff for a, a quick thing. We went over various different types of drinks today. Uh, the drinks we went over included uh, many things that I can't really recall right now because I just don't remember. But they're all marked in this book and they're all in the recording. After the fact, uh, if you're still sticking around and listening, we'll have, I'm gonna have all of the cocktail recipes here thrown in the post in our Discord chat, or in our Discord chat. There's a channel on there for drinks and cocktails and other things like that. Uh, there's been a lot of things that have been posted there apparently. And so I'll post all these recipes there either by the end of the night, it's kind of late. I might do it tomorrow while, while everything's, well, we'll see. I'm not exactly sure yet. I'll also post it all on Twitter as well. I want to throw in a, a blurb on there with everything down below. Um, and then I'll put it in my, uh, the YouTube video description as well for anybody who finds it later on. It's nice that they get to live, the, the videos get to live out in the eternity, in the vast void of the internet, somewhere on a YouTube channel somewhere, where somebody, just somebody, might find it one day and be like, wow, I never heard of that cocktail before. That sounds really good. I'm gonna buy that book. And then we've all helped each other out because there's a view there, which is good. And then uh, Cassandra Reader gets another person to buy her book. I like that. I like this. It was a wonderful recommendation and it was great. So with that, without further ado, thanks all so much for coming to uh, the bar with an X is what we're calling it around here. That's what you try to do. I had a really, really great time and I hope you did as well. So I hope to everybody out there that you have a wonderful rest of your evening, if it is evening for you as well. If not, if maybe it's the morning over there, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your morning. Maybe it's the afternoon. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your afternoon or evening or morning or dawn or twilight or literally whatever time it is over there. It's a lovely 11-ish o'clock Eastern Standard Time over here. So uh, it's nighttime for me. So, so long to everybody. It has been a great old time. I forgot to go to my ending screen. This is my ending screen. I've never done it from this position before. I almost completely forgot. This was fun. I really enjoyed this. It was really, really good. I don't know when the next cocktail stream will be, but uh, I'll schedule that at some point. And uh, some of you may be aware of it. If you're looking in the right place, you'll see. There's a there's a, the about thing down there and the schedule and whatnot, and also stuff in the Discord as well if you want to join. No pressure. I'm not your parents. I can't tell you what to do. But, uh, you know. What I can tell you to do, because I mean it, is to have a wonderful rest of whatever it is you're, that you've got. So, uh, cheers to everybody. Cheers, with whatever you've got, if you got a drink in your hand. Do you want to send them to a Valhalla stream? What's that? Is there a Valhalla stream going there on? There is one person currently playing Valhalla. It's kind of in the same realm. Yeah, you know what? Let's raid a Valhalla stream. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Zane Dace. I like it. Valhalla time. Zane. Zane Dace. There we go. Playing Valhalla with 17 people right now to continue the cocktailness and the geekiness. I love Valhalla, by the way. It's wonderful. So let's go get him. The raid done beginning, and the stream ends over here. So, so long to everybody. It's been great. Peace out, y'all.